Welcome back to Riptide 2024 at the beautiful Kalahari Resort in Sandusky, Ohio. My name is Nell, aka Nell Fire, and I am joined today by Brave. Brave, would you like to reintroduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. My tag's Brave. Hello, everyone. We are actually, this is going to be our last set mm -hmm. to get back on schedule. We are going to, <laughs> yeah, sad face. We are going to do this second set. It is Wave C, round three. Mm -hmm. We have got an exciting set. I know one of the teams, Meow Meow Meow, <gasps> not to be confused with, with Meow okay. Catface or Meow 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 Meow. Yeah, so there is a pickup team called Meow 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 Meow. Um, and then there's also a team which we are watching today called Meow Meow Meow. Not to be confused. They're, they're <laughs> Don't get them confused. <laughs> Do not get them confused. <laughs> we'll be very upset with you. <laughs> and so I'm actually quite excited to see Meow 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 play, um, honestly, because um, in their additional info, they said Meow. And I think that's, that's kind of cool. You know, it's kind of a controversial thing to say, but I'm very glad that they said it. <laughs> <laughs> I love cats. <laughs> Do you have any cats? I do have a cat. Really? Yes, her name is Delilah. Oh my goodness. See, my cat is named Peter and he's stinky. <laughs> <laughs> That's all is he that sounds like an orange cat name. <gasps> he is! Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, so I have an orange oh cat gosh. named Pete and um he's fat and I'm and I like him. That's, would, yeah. that's wonderful. So I like mine as well. Here. She's also getting a little bit chunkier. Oh my goodness. My, my Flush. fluffy cat, Delilah. She's just a baby. I like how girl cats can have the most beautiful, like, fancy names ever. And the boy cats are like, this is dump <laughs> truck. <laughs> this is my little poo poo boy dump <laughs> truck. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm curious to see what if Meow Meow Meow's claws are going to come out and if they are going to win this round. Um, Looks like we are going, we may possibly see S Blast, we may see a pencil, we may see Wiper, and we may see Gold Knot or Custom Reddit. I mean, credit. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Hadit fan. I don't know why I'm having such trouble with this weapon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for game one, we have Clam Blitz on Museum. Yeah. Clam Blitz on Museum will be our game one. I'm excited because I love Clam Blitz. That is my shtick. Uh, do you have any like certain clam locations that you really like on this map? No, not for this map. They all just kind of spawn in mid oh, or flat. Okay. Yeah, no. Oh, okay, cool. There's no spicy you, clam spawns here. Do you prefer to take the left block or do you prefer to go up the ramp? Uh, the ramp is definitely stronger. You need to be able to take that spinner, be able to take that plat for a really long sustained push. The only time you ever really take block as a push option on this map is when you are like sneakily trying to get behind them and they're all already pushed up into mid mm -hmm. and you're just trying to get like a, a power clam jump as soon as possible to stop them from scoring their own understood you know as somebody that is incredibly clumsy and obvious i always get surprised whenever i'm holding a power clam and i try going up their block and i'm like how did they know i was there <laughs> how did they know almost as if i have a gigantic glowing light on me <laughs> But yeah, as you can see, um, Meow 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 and Sea Cucumber are preparing. They're getting everything set up, getting their lands in, in play. And I really love all of the colors on the side of Meow Meow Meow. I love their outfits. I'm very much a fashion person. And I love seeing all of the people express themselves through their fashion today. So I don't know. I just, I just love in-person events so much. I love the camaraderie and I love all of it. So yeah. Yeah, it's really great to put names to faces here at mm -hmm. Riptide, really meeting people and getting to talk to them more like face to face. There's a lot of communication that gets lost over text, but even over VC, there can be some loss of communication. And so it's really, really great to have like full, full communication here in person. Oh, absolutely. And you know, you get to see if you're if your teammate likes pickles or not, or if you go to the if you go to the, like the store. <laughs> so I think that's really cool. And I completely lost my train of thought, but yeah gaming i like splatoon as well that, that's kinda <laughs> as you can see it's been a kind of a long day here at riptide we have been gaming i've been i personally have been up since 7 a.m trying to game it up and it is now and you still have your pool after this yes and i still have my pool after this at around 6 p.m we gotta do gotta gotta grind you know the splatoon grind set mm. never stops you gotta you gotta get those squids you gotta get those squids you know but then again it's like oh I, I want to be here. I really love being here. I love playing the game, and I love meeting all of these people. And like you said, you know, putting names to faces. Oh, I remember where my train was going. 
the train of thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I noticed that a lot of people have little drawings of their inklings and octolings just kind of pinned to their shirts right yes. next to their name tag. And it's yes. so cute because I know a lot of people have different unique characters that you may recognize them by. Yeah, I've already received two stickers, one from Avril and one from Fufu, and they're they're great, great souvenirs. I'm that's great art. Very, very fun to just look at the stickers. Oh my goodness, I see a, I see a little thingy. I like we, the thingy. Yes, yes. It's a beautiful thingy. Everyone say hi to the thingy. We do have a plush. And we also have Lil Buddy far oh, in the back. Heck yeah, Lil Buddy in the back. That's my boy. That's my boy. Which hairstyle do you keep your little buddy at? I have not played story in so long. I have no idea. That is the most humiliating thing you've ever said. No, I'm kidding. I give mine the Liberty Spikes, which is the mohawk with spikes. Yeah. I just, I don't even remember all the options, honestly. We have more sticker showcase, pin, a pin showcase. We are showing off everything, everything, absolutely everything. This is the perfect time for you to show off all of your little friends and all of your little sports. Goomy. And we see a Goomy! Goomy! He's so cute. You know, when I first saw him, I thought the green cheeks were his eyes, and I was like, yeah, he's cute. And then I realized that those weren't his eyes, and then I got a little disappointed. I like, I, I've always noticed the, the dot eyes. I like the, I like the face. I like the cheek. He's so it's cute. Nice. He's goomy. He's just goomy. There's, there's a lot of yelling going on. Hopefully we're getting ready for game one. But, you know, during lands, some things can cause issues. I mean, we encountered a team earlier that just kept DCing, unfortunately, which is something that shouldn't really happen at lands. But, you know, if the hard, like the hardware isn't connected properly, it's just going to get really difficult to, for the TOs to fix everything up. So there will always be hiccups. And a lot of people haven't gone to a land before. So it's a great opportunity. I recommend it if you've never been. Yeah, I recommend it as well. We, on my team, even have one member who has never been to a LAN before and very, very thankful that he was able to come out and be on our team here. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm really yeah. glad you were able to meet them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know one of my teammates is like, I've never been to a LAN and I don't foresee myself ever being able to. And I'm like, don't think that way. You can go to a LAN too eventually. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. It's just, it's basically just a convention for your shared hobby, and it's incredibly fun. Even if you're not participating or you're just a spectator, it's so much fun to have the energy. And yeah, it's, it's really just a gift. I love being able to meet people, and I'm such a people person, so I'm just a yapper. That's why I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> on this commentary vlog, on this round three of Wave C, we may be getting into the match soon ish, but we have. Lamblitz Museum, kind of want to circle back on to talking about Absolutely. this map mode. Mm -hmm. You asked me if I should push ramp or block and my opinions on that, but how do you feel about the mid spinner block and how that like really impacts fights in mid? So I love the mid spinner block, especially if I'm on pencil or if I'm on heavy edit. I think it is an incredibly powerful position, but you do have to be wary because being out in the open like that is... Um, very not good for splatlings um, because you're basically just a sitting duck while you're charging. But if you outrange people, it's... Sorry, I'm just distracted by somebody yapping on the camera. <laughs> we are very excited here, Sea Cucumber and Meow Meow Meow, to be on stream. So, so many smiling faces out there. And of course, got to tweet out to the homies that you are on stream yes. come look at me if my mom is watching i want her to know that i love you and i hope you're proud of me <laughs> and i hope that everyone else's loved ones here are watching and they are proud of them too my mom raised a little gamer mine too <laughs> i Whoa. don't know what they're showing it's not even like it's not e it's too bright on the camera but trust me if you're watching the vod just know that i appreciate whatever you showed me we appreciate the energy here at Kalahari, and Absolutely. we all appreciate the Funny Squid game. Yeah, as you can see, it looks like a TO is trying to fix the setup. It, like I said before, if there's any hardware issues at, at a LAN, it will you know, kind of stall the matches pretty quickly. But thankfully, we have very, very, very cool TOs that are able to just jump in whenever they're needed and seem, seemingly you know, fix everything up in a breeze. So... Hopefully we'll be able to get into this game soon. Right now, it looks like everybody's just kind of relaxing, getting into the moment. Um, I don't see much like practicing or aim drilling. I think both um, of these teams are just kind of ready to go whenever. It looks like they're just troubleshooting right now. 
Yep, there are so many semi moving parts to all these setups. You've, of course, got the monitor, all of the wires connecting, all the switch, and the audio mixers as well can be a huge issue as well. You can have no audio. That can be there. There's so many potential, potential issues at these lands. Yeah, I mean, my favorite thing that happens is when the game audio is incredibly quiet and then the uh, my teammates are incredibly loud, or if one teammate is incredibly loud and the other ones are incredibly quiet. Um, but yeah, hopefully we're able to get this hardware issue solved soon. Um, that way everybody can get where they need to be and the bracket won't be slowed down at all. Sea Cucumber just, just wants to play. They, they, they just want to smile and send hearts at the camera and play the squids. <laughs> Meanwhile, Meow 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 would probably like to meow, I would, I would guess. No, 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 no. I don't think so. I'll, I'll ask them. Should I go ask them? <laughs> I think they like cats. Do you think they like cats? They might like cats. Their profile picture is a cat, superimposed on a cat. I really like that profile picture. The team, it looks like the team is just a pickup for this land, but I mean, it seems like a few of them are long-term friends, as they noted here in their bio. Um, they also are quite happy that their Riptide seed is 69th. <laughs> Wow, that is nice. <laughs> that is nice. They're showing each other memes. I'm glad that the sportsmanship is still good. And, you know, spirits are being kept up despite, you know, the, the round being delayed a little bit just due to technical LAN issues. It seems like everybody's just happy to be here and, you know, able to play with each other. Meow? Meow. 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 So we got Clam's Museum. Do you think a cat would know what to do with a clam? Hmm. I think that the cat would bat the clam off the table. Like, and so there are some <laughs> clam spawns on plat. The cat would spawn in, use the spawn, just kind of walk up, look at this pillow thing, maybe try to scratch it, maybe pop it, see the clam, see there's a ledge, and bat it off. That is so true, but then the clam could collateral into another clam, making two clams, and then they bat a more until they make a power clam. And obviously, cats are kind of, at least my cats in particular, this one time they accidentally got caught in a bag, and so they were running away, but the bag was chasing them because they were caught in the bag. So I can imagine that the cat is going to be so freaking scared that the, b that the ball is chasing them. And so yes, the clams yeah. are going to follow you <laughs> around. Pick up those clams; they will follow you. I love taking drip picks with seven clams all behind me in a little hexagon. I shape. like how they how they wiggle. Fun. They wiggle. They're so yep. cute. I mean, only here can you find somebody say that that the Splatoon clams are cute. It looks like Sea Cucumber is mewing. Strangely, the meow team meow 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 was not mewing. I think that a cat would be very, very surprised and taken aback by when seven clams become eight and suddenly transform into this large football so scared. that's bigger than them. I think they would be frightened. They might dash so away. Scary. But then the ball would be chasing them. It would just be a terrible situation. You know, I think we're having fantastic commentary right now. This is really what we've trained for. This is what we've spent years grinding for. Yeah, all those years in college were worth it. <laughs> I, like I said before, I wasn't able to play Splatoon 2 in college just because the Wi-Fi was so bad. So now that I am a, an employed adult, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can play Splatoon as much as I want. And <laughs> now that is what I do. Nice. Very, very solid. I, too, do a lot of Splatoon gaming with my beloved team, Magnolia. And as well, just do pick up Center Q. It's all, it's all such a great time. I just got back into the competitive community maybe like six months ago. Oh, really? Yep. I've seen you around Sendo Q a lot. Yeah. I've I, noticed that you're just kind of like grinding that out. Yeah, I've done way too many, way too many sets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're kind of exploring your horizons. I know a lot of folks, me included, when I first started out, I was afraid of playing Sendo Q just because of new people. But yeah. I think that it'll teach you a lot about your gameplay, just kind of doing pickups and playing with different folks, you know? Like I said before, I'm on a new team now and I've learned so much just by being in a different environment than you're not used to. So it's all about the people you're with. Everybody here knows something different about the game and you'll learn something new. Yeah, all it takes is some questions, some probing, and also 
a lot of people, of course, on established teams aren't necessarily wanting to do send a queue with anyone else other than their teams, which is understandable, but it is a great website and resource to find a team. It is actually how I found mine, and it just it sparks so many team building, like just sparks so many finding friends. It's a, it's a great website. Absolutely. So it looked like they were force resetting that person's switch, unfortunately. It seems like there's a lot of technical issues going on here, which is quite unfortunate, especially at this point in the day when they're almost done with their they're almost done with their round. I think this is round three, am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Be. So I'm pretty sure they just want to be done with their block as much as possible. Just get get this done and over with. But go to the walk park before some family feud. Oh, absolutely. I want to go to the water park so badly, but the Lazy River is closed for 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 um, for repairs. But you know what? We'll just have to go next year. Yeah, that is very tragic, though we do have those extra hours due to that. Absolutely. I am quite excited to spend time with everybody. And, you know, last year when we were waiting in line for the for the water park, not the water park, for one of the water slides, I made friends with some Smash players, and I figured out what their equivalent to, to divs are. And I'm like, wow, that's so cool. And so I was like, oh, so that's like divs. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> was it PR? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know much about... about um, Super Smash Brothers, but I do know that I just button smash and hope for the best. I don't know the combos. When I, whenever yeah. I play, this is not a flex, by the way. This is embarrassing for me. Um, and the Smash Ball is out. I don't know how to how to break it or activate it. Wait, what do you mean? The Smash Ball, you know, like the glowing. Yeah, one? yeah, the glowing. I don't ball. know how to like get it. Like how to hit it? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> As you can see, there is a Smash veteran here talking to a Smash newbie, and I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes, and and then when I have it, then I come equipped with my ultimate. Yes, that's what that's called, right? Um, yeah, I don't know how to turn it on. Okay, well, you press the B button. So, <laughs> or rather, the special. Oh, whoa, we have some whoa, cheering. Whoa, it looks like it's fixed. We no may way. have an eighth in the PB. Where is your fourth? Where is your They're fourth? Here. Yay! We have They're just gotten word here. that it looks like they are able to start playing, and we can stop yapping about how bad I am at video games. <laughs> Smashy <laughs> Bros. Smash Brothers. Yeah. Uh, Back to Splatoon gaming. Thank God, something <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know a lot about the squids. And you can talk a lot, a lot about. You know, there's so much to talk about with Splatoon. You have eight players here. They all have their own stories, their own competitive journeys, their own teams, their own weapon choices, and of course, so much roles and flexibility with this game gives their like limitless possibilities to talk about here. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at Sea Cucumber, you know, the team with all of the technical issues, and it looks like they've known each other for only a couple of months, but they met through one member, and this will be their very first time formally playing with one another. So that's quite exciting. This is a great opportunity to, you know, meet new people and all of that stuff. I personally don't know anybody from this team, but I am very, very excited to see them play and see what they're going to bring to the table. Yeah, it's a really, really great place to meet people just all of the Splatoon lands. The community is so very, so, so very welcoming. And I have pretty much played with, like, new teammates every single land I've been to. There's always been at least one new person that I've kind of played with, or and it's been great. It's mm -hmm. been very, very great to meet people. Absolutely. I mean, for example, on the shuttle here, I sat next to somebody, and I'm just full of stories, aren't I? I sat next to somebody, and it turns out they were somebody that's in our div and on a diff on a team that I know of. And so I'm like, oh, hey, we can yap. And so I yapped to them for about 45 minutes, and then, boom, you have a new friend. Nice. And then, yeah, then the shuttle ride's over, you're here. And then you're it's here, glorious. and then you wave at them awkwardly for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> I do love waving at people from afar that I have just recently met. <laughs> Humans are funny. I hear the ding. That is a ding. Are we able Red to play the game or play the game? Yes. All right. Riptide 2024. Pool C. Swiss round three. Let's see what these teams are bringing Ink to the brush. table. <gasps> Ink Clam brush. And a decab. Two wipers and a blaster. Let's see what they're able to bring to the table here. It looks like we have the early cooler on the side of Sea Cucumber. We got Zap just painting spawn, but that is going to be a trade from both teams in mid. 
Yep, two down on the side of Sea Cucumber. This is a great opportunity for Meow 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 to be able to take space. It looks like there's somebody on the plat just trying to make, to, you know, postpone their push as much as possible, but um, Meow 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 is, is very relentlessly trying to make something happen, but as you can see, there's someone still on their plat. They're throwing specials, but they are pretty separated. Let's see if there's any jumps to the bubble. It does not seem like it. They're I'm pretty sure they're going to opt. Oh, and that's a very, very rough bomb with the pencil that had about seven clams. So even though Meow 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 has enough paint on the floor, they're really going to have to rush to make something happen. And with three down on the side of Sea Cucumber, this is their opportunity to make a push. Yeah, they do not have the clam economy. They do finally get two balls, one of them being able to be scored. But they had just had taken advantage. They had been just killing Sea Cucumber over and over and over. But with the loss of clams, it took them quite a bit to be able to get to this first push. And only one ball. And it's going to spell the end of the push for Meow Meow Meow. Mm -hmm. So it looks like uh, Meow 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 was intending on getting the other, the other uh, power clam clam into the basket, but they just did not have the opportunity to do so. So now they must hold it for a little bit until they're able to make a counter push. As you can see, that should be happening right about now. It looks like they're using their specials just in an attempt to retake the space that they once had. But there is a ink brush flanking on the on their plat. And that is crazy to see on the side of CQ Cumber. Totally threw a wrench in their plans a little bit. They have to backtrack a lot just to regain the space. And this is CQ Cumber's opportunity to make a push. They have the clams. They just have to make a ball and get on their plat. Yeah, Meow 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 really all backed up onto the plat there and allowed, and then that bubble also going down in the bubble was not going to be super duper great, but it looks like Meow 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 is keeping up this defense, even with all the clam economy and all the advantage from Sea Cucumber. They do not quite get a score out yet. Mm -hmm. With the cooler down and the Booyah out, it looks like Meow 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 is trying to reclaim the mid here, but there are people sharking. There's everybody here. It looks like all of um, Sea Cucumber is just kind of trying to keep their space, trying to make a push happen. They're coolered up. I don't believe they have any specials, but they have the clam economy in order to make something happen. We're just kind of playing playing tag here, trying to see if somebody is able to get a pick, get a powerful pick, but nobody's willing to make the first step until now with two down on the side of Meow, three down on the side of Meow Meow Meow. This is Sea Cucumber's opportunity to make a push, and it looks like they are getting the ball in with points on the board. Yep, and with a whale and crab, they are going to get very strong. They have six clams here. We are going to see Dooley's get scoring all of them as well as jumping in a ball that is Ooh, going to make it in. That's the, the wipeout. Oh, but they were able to get the lead here, thankfully. But this gives um, Meow 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 an ample opportunity in order to take their plot. So Sea Cucumber is going to have to play very defensive if they want to keep this, this very strong lead that they have. They have the Booyah coming out, but it's going to get shredded by two people. Not quite going to die, though. And that is going to force a jump out. That is going to be another big push for Meow Meow Meow. Most are coming from spawn on the side of Sea Cucumber, and we will see if they are able to get the lead here. Meow 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 does not have the clam economy in order to get the lead, but it looks like they hopefully will stagger some clams, or they may just rush for the lead. They jump looks the pity like, in. Ooh, and they were able to get the lead here with just the pencil left alive with Cooler. I believe that the pencil jumped out in order to supply the Cooler to their teammates. But now Sea Cucumber has to get some points on the board. They have to get around, I believe, a power clam and another power clam. A power clam and a few in order to uh, get the, take the lead back with uh, just one minute left on the clock. Yeah, it's a lot of points that they need to get. They're going to need the picks in order to be able to take plat like so. We have an ink brush upsetting their plat, getting that pick on the skirmish or weapon. And we see some clams going around. They're, they make a ball. They make a ball very successfully and are also able to get that score. Oh, yeah. they may be able to get the lead here with the ink brush up on their spinner. The ink brush is wreaking havoc on Meow 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 right now. And it's beautiful to see because that's exactly what an ink brush wants to do. Their comp is mega annoying to deal with if I was on the side of Meow Meow Meow. Yeah, we've got the distraction plays. We've got the flanks. And they have retaken the lead, and now we're kind of in the exact same spot, but for Meow Meow Meow, where they have to get a ball and much, much more to be able to take this lead. And with not much time left and the wiper going down there, it is going to be very precarious for them to set up an advantage. Oh, with three down on the side of Meow Meow Meow, this is Sea Cucumber's opportunity to even further their push or just take back space. It looks like they're kind of just taking their time with it. They are taking their time with getting space. They they know that they're in the lead. They just have to play defensive. They have to let Meow 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 come to them first. And I think that is a great way of playing this map mode. Oh, and it looks like they're going to try and get in. The Booyah was maybe a little bit too early. The strikes are out. Meow 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 is trying to get in as much as possible, but can they do it? 
They do not have much time. And with the S-Blast going for a flank, gonna die to the Ink Brush. There is only one person under basket guarding it. <gasps> oh, they were almost able to get in with a jump, but no, it wasn't. It was just barely able to. As you can see, Meow 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 was saying that it hit on their side, but it just wasn't able to do it, even yeah. with the no mm -hmm. latency land. Yeah, they just ran out of time. They had two balls. They had the first ball almost penetrate the basket, and it did hit the basket, but the time just ran out right before the score counted. And with that jump in ball, that would have been lead as well, but they were just one one second or two too short. It's amazing to me that we just saw the person jump with the ball and we knew exactly what was happening. And then you hear it, but no, if they only they had about two more seconds, they would have been able to make something happen with a reverse push. But as you can see, these teams are very evenly balanced, even though we're only in pools. Yeah, this is this is a very, the, it was just so back and forth. Lead just transitioned so, so many times that game. We are seeing two very evenly matched teams. Absolutely. It's really entertaining to see um, two evenly matched teams like that, where you can never really be too comfortable with a push. I think that's the key takeaway to a good Clams game. You can never be too comfortable. You just have to always prepare for the next push, even if you're so sure that your lead is enough to make it happen. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So next is Tower Control Undertow Spillway. I know this map has a lot of haters, frankly, but I am kind of neutral towards it. I don't have many strong appealings towards Undertow. Me, I'm 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 the hater. <laughs> I don't like playing crab on this map, and so I I dislike it. I need to play 52 Gal Deco. Yeah, you have to change yes. change out your arsenal a little bit for this one. So with tower control, I personally really like this map mode, and it looks like we're actually getting into it pretty quickly. I heard them ready yep. up. Let's see if we see any changes to comps, if we're going to see that ink brush come back out with flank opportunities or not. And yep, the ink brush is returning. Absolutely. And there's not a lot of changes on the side of either team. They're going to roll with what they were given. Same comps. It looks like we have some potential one tricks in the lobby, but we have Meow 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 going to, of course, have that pencil much stronger, cooler option than Zap, than Sea Cucumber. We will see if they are able to dominate more so on this map. Mm -hmm. One is already down on the side of Sea Cucumber due to an unfortunate bomb. And, you know, the first, I will say that Undertow is a very stally map. Somebody has to make the first step in order to, to just make something happen. And that looks like it's going to be the ink brush getting two down on the side of Meow Meow Meow. So we are in a 2v2, and Meow 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 is being pushed. They do end up getting that decap to have two kills, and we have just, they are going to be able to take advantage here with specials being popped and space being taken. Absolutely. Meow 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 is feeling confident and safe as they ride the tower. They are they are very happy with this push that they are creating right now. And if you look, Sea Cucumber is already being backed up to their base, and they will have to rotate right in order to anticipate the tower. But three down on the side of Meow Meow Meow. This is Sea Cucumber's opportunity to get back in mid, get some paint on the ground, and hopefully take power positions in an effort for their push. Yep, the crab was great on the side of Sea Cucumber to end that push for Meow Meow Meow. We are seeing Sea Cucumber get to the first check with not much resistance at all, and this Ink Brush is going to just move around both of the wipers. Decaf just going right around their hitboxes and going and killing oh all of them. Oh my god, that is a beautiful Ink Brush play right there. I love seeing that type of gameplay. It's just the most annoying thing ever and it's beautiful and i love it and a lot of people don't know how to deal with it as you can see and you know sea cucumber is not letting up on this push they got a, they got control and they are not letting up they're getting through final check just barely let's see if they can break it and it looks like if if meow 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 can make something happen they should but i don't think they're able to and it's they're able to get the lead yep mm -hmm. that will be the knockout to sea cucumber for winning uh, the second match they are going to be up 2-0 now, and that was a much more dominant game. Of course, we did have Meow 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 get the first push, but Sea Cucumber answered back extremely strongly with a push that did not end. Mm -hmm. You know, I can 
easily, even though it's 2-0 right now, I can easily see this going to a game five just with the amount of pressure both teams are exerting. I can tell that they are very evenly matched and we just need to have eyes on the ink brush. I think that's really what needs to happen. <laughs> Whenever I'm playing with my team, it's always like, where is the ink brush? Where is the carbon? I need to know where they are immediately. Yeah, let's stop their movement, trap them, and go ahead and take care of them before mm -hmm. really trying to push forward is mm -hmm. always very ideal against those sort of weapons. Absolutely. You have to keep an eye on them, especially if they're flanking. And um, I believe the next map is Zone Tagglefish. This is a great opportunity for more flanks to occur unless they get pushed back to their base. Yeah, you've got both left and right rounds. Like, just both of those flanks are completely open for either team to go for. Mm -hmm. And they're just always there. The zone, it just will get you right straight through mid and let you be able to get behind them and start painting zone from a different angle. You know, I know that there's a brush player and I'm really curious to see if we're going to see ink brush nouveau for the stamp option. I kind of want to see it just because I'm thinking about zones cheese with uh, reef slider just kind of exploding on the zone and capping it as a final push. I've seen that a lot today already. Um, so maybe people can use hammer with it, but I don't know. They're they're rocking with that ink brush. That is fantastic work. And I love seeing people push that weapon. It's It's very enjoyable to see. Um, but yeah, so Zones Hagglefish, it's one of my favorites. I, uh, Zones Haggle, yeah. very, very staple in mm -hmm. the comp scene, especially mm -hmm. just with, we have a lot of Zones maps though. A lot of, yeah. a lot of viable Zones maps. Haggle has always stood as just one of them that keeps showing up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't mind it, frankly, but I know that a lot of people are sick of seeing Hagglefish. <laughs> Hagglefish Market. I am a personal fan of Haggle Tower. I think it's quite fun, frankly, but that's just my toxic taste as a backline main. So as you can see, as you can hear, they readied up, and I believe we're getting ready into our possible match point. We've got the same weapon selects from Sea Cucumber, and no change on the side of Meow 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 either. They are confident in their picks, and I am also confident in their picks, and I am excited to see how they are going to play. It looks like the Zap is just farming for Cooler as quickly as possible, and the Pencil is just trying to get to Snipe. They're both trying to make things happen. Let's see who's able to get the zone first. Got Meow Meow Meow's Wiper just trying to bait someone to try and drop, but no one is taking that bait, and no one is really paying attention to this Wiper. Not what you want from a Wiper until they get 2 v ones Absolutely not what you want from a Wiper. Very strong plays coming out from Sea Cucumber. Mm -hmm. Sea Cucumber is wasting no time getting in their space, putting paint on the ground, just absolutely being menaces. And there is a hammer. I was wrong about it being Ink Brush Nouveau, but there is a hammer just trying to get in to this map. And with they took two, they got two picks. They got three picks actually. And so with Sea Cucumber one up, this is Meow Meow Meow's opportunity to take the space that they needed. The three are going to collapse that bucket, meaning all are coming from spawn that have a potential to get locked out if they don't take back their plat. We do have a lot of ink already being put there by both of these Splatanas. Mm -hmm. It looks like Sea Cucumber is trying their best to get back in there, and they're able to do it. They have a pick. They just have to take care of that wiper, but it results in a trade. Uh, but Sea Cucumber now has the zone, and they just need a few more ticks left in order to get the lead swap here. It looks like they're saving their specials. Both sides are saving. Until now, they're trying to make a push happen as much as possible, trying to hold them back. It looks like nobody was able to push in with those strikes, but that was a good opportunity to push back Meow 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 and bait out their specials. Those strikes did a great job of forcing everyone into that bubble once he was popped, but two more specials is going to spell the end for Sea Cucumber. And Meow Meow Meow, a double from the S Blast coming out. Ooh. And it's going to get taken out by that Ink Brush. It is only the Ink Brush. Can they get all these Ooh, picks to be able to hold last, the zone? Brush's last stuff. They got a triple. That's crazy. That was amazing. That's all that Sea Cucumber needed in order to get the lead bag. I could tell you that I was not believing that they would be able to do it, but they did. Just the AOE power of Ink Brush. It's amazing to watch. Yeah, and we've got penalty gone. More points being scored for Sea Cucumber. And with a crab being out, forcing them away from this tent, it is going to be very, very huge. No hammer to counter that crab this time from the side of Meow Meow Meow. Mm -hmm. Ooh, 
Oh, I think they were trying to get the hammer out, but they weren't able to do it quick enough. And now it looks two down on the side of Sea Cucumber, three down on the side of Sea Cucumber. This is Meow Meow Meow's opportunity to get the lead switch, even if they're able to hold it. If they're able to paint the zone here, it looks like just the blaster is trying to paint zone, and they are struggling just a little bit as as um, Sea Cucumber is able to get back in quickly since they were juiced. Yeah, that was really showing the kind of weakness of their comp here. Only really Pencil was able to paint zone super, super great there, and it let the Sea Cucumbers get a lot more points than they really should have with only a zap up. But Rush going off once again, getting an assist and a kill. This whale is going to continue that offensive pressure, and they get zoned back. Sea Cucumber in a looking Ooh. like a very good spot. Oh, they dodged that, that that beautifully. And with three down on the side of Sea Cucumber, Meow Meow Meow's opportunity is only growing. They need to get the lead here, and they need to exert pressure. They need to get into their power positions and, you know, save their specials and make it so that Sea Cucumber is not able to get back in. It looks like we have almost a crab here. We have about 90, and we are going to see it get popped on this tent. But unfortunately, the bubble is going to take a lot of its attention, and we are not going to see a zone neutral or any picks off of that. Mm -hmm. And unless we get these strikes, it is looking pretty precarious. Oh, they were a able to—they were ball. able to zone flip. That was amazing. But uh, yeah, it was unfortunate to see that the crab was just being used on on the bubble, and the bubble was just eating its shots. But as you can see, they're both sides are using their specials. They're just kind of throwing everything at the wall right now, trying to see what sticks. Looks like Meow 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 is trying to make something happen. There's two down on the side of both both sides. They are pretty even, but you know, Meow 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 has a bubble that they're able to jump to. So hopefully, they'll be able to get back in quickly. It looks like they opted to jump to the pencil instead or just swim it out. And now that we have both Cooler and Hammer, we are ready to go in in this one last final attempt from Meow Meow to try and get picks to try and get zoned. We do get one from the Hammer. Can the Hammer get two? Not mm. quite. The Slosher does get to jump out in time. Mm hmm Looks like they're able to hold this push. They just can't get greedy with it, I don't think. I think they need to... Ooh, that was a great place for a suction bomb. I think that Meow 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 needs to not get greedy with their push. They need to, they need to be able to push and hold space, but do it with respect respect to the other team and make sure that, you know, no flanks are being forgotten. It's only a slosher and Dooley's up right now and both of them go down. Ooh. That is going to be very likely a lead here for Meow Meow Meow. All they have to do is get this zap not to neutralize the zone again. And they do. That is going to be a Oh, we lead. can hear cheering on the yeah. side of Meow Meow Meow. And it is beautiful to watch. I love the energy. As you can see, they're taking deep breaths. They're able to, to maybe make this a game. Well, they're obviously making it into a game four. Game five? Game four. Game four. Game four. On to Rainmaker, Robo Ramen. All right, sounds good. Sorry, sometimes I just get a little jumbled with all of the information overload that Splatoon provides. <laughs> no worries, but there yeah. is a lot going on on those screens. Even just there with that one suction bomb kill, we had both a blue and an orange suction bomb. I just narrowly mentioned, saw the orange suction bomb, but the blue one was really covering it up, and that's, that Strikes user was just ha walked right into it because it looked like their bomb, but it was actually both teams' bombs. Mm. And it, it's really easy to miss things like that when it's just a tiny little sliver on this very, very large and colorful screen. Absolutely, and that is what makes Splatoon beautiful, I think, because it is just so much information overload. You just have to be aware of everything at all times, aware of what the enemies are doing, aware of what you're doing, aware of what your teammates are doing. And, you know, it takes a lot of your brain power. And so, Rainmaker Ramen, what are you looking forward to seeing here? I, it's, this is not my favorite map mode, but... It's better than Clams Ramen, in my opinion. <gasps> you take it back. You, t you take that back. <laughs> I take it back. All right, awesome. <laughs> okay, so Rain Ramen. You don't really have strong opinions. It's just Clams Ramen. Yeah, Clams Ramen is goaded. Uh, Rainmaker Ramen, not a huge fan of Rainmaker on Robo Ramen, but we are going to see it here nonetheless. Once you break that check, if you are able to hold Snipe, it it's extremely, extremely precarious there because... You don't really have anywhere to go, anywhere to paint for special. And as the defending team there, you, you really just are in a pickle. Oh, for sure. I feel like defense on ramen is miserable, frankly, unless you unless there's just some lucky pick or there's some break in your defenses. You have to be incredibly coordinated in order to, to get back in there um, and make a push worthwhile, especially a reverse push. This map is a very snowball-y map, in my opinion. So let's see if we're going to see all of the one tricks do the same thing or if we're going to see any changes. And no changes on the side of Sea Cucumber and no changes on the side of Meow Meow Meow. So let's get into it. Game four. 
I want to see a Meow 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 victory so that we can see Clan Blitz Game 5, but that's just me. We've got opening Wiper already, already by the right checkpoint and kind of skirmishing and fighting already very, very early to get pop on the side of Sea Cucumber, though, and that's going to kind of force the Wiper back off there. Looks like the Wiper is taking a lot of, a lot of Sea Cucumber's attention, which is exactly what they want. They want that. They want the attention. They want the other team to be distracted. This gives them ample opportunity and time to get the cooler out, to get your specials out, and to get some points on the board, but I'm not sure if they're able to do that, but oh, with a huge pick on the side of, oh, I don't even know, if the huge pick, they were able to um, just barely make the check here. Decides to not go for breaking check. They've actually gone all down. Meow, meow, meow. <gasps> they were yes. able to get the check. Mm -hmm. Barely with the last player alive. s -Blast getting three there, but not able to get the fourth before the check breaks. And now we have an inkbrush on the side of Sea Cucumber going behind them. Mm -hmm. I just realized that Meow 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 is not pink this game. It is Sea Cucumber that is pink this game. <laughs> uh, once again, information overload and colors everywhere. And it looks like Allegra is absolutely just tearing it up with the ink brush. It is crazy to watch. And it's, oh my god, they're still going! This is like a six kill streak. And with the Raymaker getting that oh final god! one, it's a dunk. That was amazing to watch. That was just crazy. The brush definitely just... Walked forward there and diffed the Kudo, opponents. Uh, kudos to Allegro on Sea Cucumber, the brush man. Kudos to you because I think that it was, you know, people don't know how to react to, um, people really don't know how to react to a brush. You don't see them that often as fist bumps are everywhere. Everybody's cheering. Everybody's happy. And after all of their technical issues, I'm very happy that Sea Cucumber was able to take a win. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very, very exciting set. Glad to see these close. And of course, the GGs, the fist bumps, the handshakes. We love great sportsmanship here at that's, Riptide. That's what we love to see. Looks like everybody is happy with the outcome. Even though it was a difficult match, I think that it was pretty even overall. I, I would have loved to see more. I know you would have loved to see a I, Meow 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 win so that we could have gotten a Game 5 Clams Barnacle. But I would have been so happy. You would have been so happy. We can't all have nice things, unfortunately. But regardless, I am very thankful that we got to see an incredible set today. After yeah, it was great to be on commentary today <laughs> with you, know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it was great being on commentary with you, too. I was happy to yap with you for about, like, uh, I don't know, 20 mm. minutes about random stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the first set, just, yeah. I mean, I hope it's kind of like just uh, queuing into a conversation between friends, just yapping about random stuff and our cats. I... I will yap about my cat uh, all the time. I was going to say that your current team has a very beautiful name. Your current team name is a very Thank beautiful you. name. And your cat has a very beautiful name. And then I'm on a team called YouTube to MP4 Free Online Converter. And my cat is named Peter. Peter. Yep. Oh, the dichotomy of man is beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> we, we have two very different people here on commentary. <laughs> but look how well it has been working and meshing. We are going to pass it on to our next commentators, though, now mm -hmm. for wave D pools of Riptide. And so thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for more excitement. And I think we'll go on short break. Yep, absolutely. We'll see you next time.
All right. Uh, good, I think, evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back to Splatoon 3 at Riptide 2024. We are the new crew here. I am Boing with Damp Waffle. And uh, how are you feeling right now? I am feeling, I mean, first of all, I think everyone's a little exhausted from traveling. And then B, we've already played. A lot of people have yeah. played. <laughs> it's a lot of, uh, lands are a lot of work. But I mean, even if we're tired, we are excited. I mean, yeah, especially when you're coming on the day one hype. Like, you're exhausted from travel day. Uh, typically yesterday, but some troopers come in today. Uh, oh. But it's also just the adrenaline of seeing everyone and really wanting to do your best. So it's kind of the running on fumes day, and then you crash early. And mm -hmm. then Saturday is when you got to, you know, lock in or something. Or it's your, your party night. <laughs> it's my party night. We well, have bracket tomorrow. <laughs> it's fine. I, you know, every night's a party <laughs> night for me, personally. Okay, well... I'll be resting and drinking water uh, for tomorrow because, uh, like these other teams, we, we want to do well. Uh, we're still waiting to get word on who exactly uh, we're commentating right now, but I know we are with D. And it's, yeah, so it is Swiss Pools, which is an interesting format. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it, so. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> often play Swiss, I feel like. Uh, I mean... I feel like last time I did was back in like early low ink days. And it's the thing about Swiss is um, who you're going to play isn't set. It kind of just shifts around based on how you perform. So um, at least for us, I you know we were predicted to start off um, ours going 2-0 and we would have fought FT win after that. Uh, we actually lost our second match, so we did not fight FT win. So that's yeah. As you play, if you do better, you will fight a more yeah, difficult opponent. Yeah, it's definitely a heavy momentum mode, so you got to be ready. Like, if you have a really good first set, you got to keep bringing it. So it's an endurance test. Um, and I believe this is the first match of this group, uh, provided that the schedules are still the same. Yes. Um, so we're going to kind of see some fresh teams coming in. They've been waiting all day. Uh, also, there hasn't been a lot of opportunities to uh, find space to practice. And given that Splatoon is a 4v4 game, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of n nerves and everything as people get settled in because the setups were only open to friendlies basically this morning. So unless you're getting practice in the hotel room or something, uh, you're coming in a little cold, but everyone is. So it's yeah. it's just how it is. Yeah, if only, I mean, hey, if everyone just brings like uh, just routers, plugs in, that should be the norm really for lands at this point. I just, think playing just... Splatoon should... I think the game should come with a free networking class. That's true. Like, let's let's make sure everyone can run friendlies and potentially uh, just run like the internet itself. That I like, think don't reach A plus rank until you have your A plus certification. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Um, but I mean, we say that because practice is important. Um, it it's definitely uh, it, it it takes a second to adapt for some players. I know I struggle with it. Um, oh. All right, and we have that. <laughs> UTK Feeders versus Student Debt Gaming. I do <laughs> recognize a good selection of these players. Uh, I mean, I've seen Nido, Asterum, uh, Mizuno, and Kareki around. Uh, that was a lot of Purdue gamers, I believe. Yeah, everyone here is actually, um, they are staffed for the uh, CCA, the Collegiate Cephalopod Association, which makes sense with the name. Um, I mean, all college students know how, how little money we have, but... What we make, what we lack in money, we make up for in spirit and mm -hmm. gaming ability. We'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm just uh, cutting over to the information sheet to get any extra fun info from the ice. Do you see student debt gaming here? Uh, they've known each other for a long time. So yeah, most of them were in sub power up and inkling technology at Purdue ITAP, which our team, uh, as you don't know, both of us are members of Dembo IHOP, semi defunct still around forever because it's always like that. Uh, we're good friends of ITAP. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get more info in on UTK feeders. Yeah. Oh, uh, and I should also mention Nito is, I believe, uh, with the Grillers. Oh, OK. Thank you. Uh, uh, sorry about that. There they are. OK. So this is a team with, this is another collegiate team. Well, not to say that uh, Student Deck Gaming is an active collegiate team, but a former collegiate team. Uh, UTK Feeders is University of Tennessee. And they met through Hammer Bro. And this is, sounds like it's a pretty fresh seed. Uh, but they did play in CCA last semester, and they made Div 3 playoffs. So wow. I think what that tells me, making playoffs is always exciting, because no matter what division you're playing in, you have to 
learn how to win at your skill level. So yeah. I think that means that there's some good stuff going on for this team. So that's good news for them. Yeah, and Div3 CCA is kind of, um, I personally coach um, a few CCA teams, um, but that's kind of the Div where I feel like you start to see like, uh, I want to say like the low level of the comp community, that level is kind of where it starts to shine. Um, which, I mean, hey, UTK, if you guys want to get a higher seed this next CCA season, this is your chance. Like, these guys, they'll see proof that you guys deserve it if you can beat them. Oh, also another fun fact is that Hammer Bro for UTK Feeders is apparently ranked second in Tennessee for Smash Ultimate. Wow. Um, and not only that, it says that uh, Spect is an extremely talented artist. So I wonder if they're, if, they're, if they're doing commissions, you should look into that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but what I do like, uh, it, they're clearly getting some synergy, and so I'm excited to see how they perform on a greater stage beyond CCA. Uh, I also love to see CCA success stories, because to see teams stick around outside of CCA yes, is I, very heartwarming and wholesome. Because yeah. There's theoretically no reason for them to keep going, but I mean, to see people like they keep that drive to improve and keep going and yeah. expose themselves to a greater pool of opponents, it, it shows that the scene is really healthy. Definitely my uh, motivation to keep coaching uh, my collegiate teams is just seeing them bond, uh, seeing people make friends in school. I'm a person who has like struggled to make friends in school myself, but like gaming really brings people together, Splatoon especially being a team game. Um, like, the amount of communication required to play well, it makes you really good friends. And especially if you become good friends, you play better, it, it just, it all comes together and makes you just a better, more well-rounded person and player. And I love seeing CCA encourage that in people. Another thing is I'm looking forward to seeing some probably good, spirited competition and uh, chivalry between these teams. Because, I mean, just everyone that I recognize has a heart of gold, to my knowledge. Um, I so mean, I think some viewers would want to see them like tear each other apart. But hey, they can tear each other apart nicely. In the game, and then you handshake. Yes. Or fist bump. Or, well, I, I tend to punch people, but it kind of comes across as a fist bump. Yeah, it makes that little like squeaky toy noise. Yeah, like they block it with their fists, and I'm just like, ah. Harry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I mean, it gets all my, all my anger out, and they think I'm a good sport. I'm seeing some fun weapons, too. I know. I see two dually players over on UTK yeah. Feeders. Two separate dually players uh, on UTK Feeders. Yep, and Kaze, I believe we're going to say. So, And it looks like they have a pretty aggro comp overall. They do have some backlines in their pool. But, I mean, it um, looks like Splatlings and Stringer, which those aren't... Well, Stringer's a pretty typical backline, but Splatling specifically move around a lot. A lot of Splatling players get kind of aggro, so I'm excited yeah, to see I'm them Yeah, I'm guessing up. we're going to kind of see like a, a, a tied a tied style play because I see the duallys, especially if the Dapples come out or something, we're going to see a lot of high movement far away from the team and then like the tent, the potential tent, the potential squeezer, the Splatlings, they're going to like kind of progressively try to take ground while the duallys just kind of chip away at things. That's, you think, that's what you think we'll see the UTK feeders feed? I mean, that probably informed their name. I uh, would have to get... I, I, am, I love feeding. I am an Ink Crush <laughs> QR player. I love feeding, and it works in this game. How much it, uh, quick response should you run on your builds? You should run a minimum of one main, one sub. If you run any less, I'll find you. Um, well, no, you won't, because this will be responding. Oh, yeah, that's true. Never mind. Then, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I should keep up to date on Student Deck Gaming. What are they playing these days? Because I do have like a mental snapshot of ITAP, but I do understand that that's like Splatoon 2. Uh, so let me let me get up to date. We do see. Uh, I wish I knew. For uh, oh, that's the weapon. I wish I knew. Yeah. Oh, I still see Rust as a weapon and beacons. Oh, these are team progressions. Some of them are weapons. Okay, but. Uh, Nito was on the Grillers. Okay, that's another team. I knew team it. I, I knew it. <laughs> uh, it is fun to be around for a while because people just keep changing around and ending up on new teams. And you're like, I know you. Yeah. You're, you're in a different place than I remember, but that's okay. Um, Definitely. I mean, the cool thing about Sub Power Up was that they specifically formed out of, like, all the previous ITAP members because um, they just loved playing with each other so much. They... 
just because they didn't have school to keep them together in that way, they still wanted to keep going. So, I mean, their bond is going to take them far here, I think, right. too. We're seeing some thumbs up, so that means the gaming is probably just about to start. So we could start talking about Splat Zones on Mahi Mahi Resort. Uh, the interesting thing about Zones Mahi is... Zones in general is a very control-based mode, but Mahi is quite open with very specific bits of cover to fight around. So it's very, very stally around specific areas. I always tell people, like, you need to be prepared to just fight in one area forever before you push up. But that also means people get stuck fighting. So yeah, if you have a mobile weapon, you can run between them and... Especially with zones, it can be an exercise in digging your heels in because it takes so much to actually make the transition from protecting the zone to spawn camping, for lack of a word, better word. It's pretty much an instant transition from one to the other. There's not a lot of ground to take before you have to make a super risky jump and then you're under their spawn. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot of patience and coordination and really just not making a silly mistake. And also with how dynamic this map is, I mean, there are times where I personally will call out, let's wait till we have an actual map. Because as you know, the map starts out pretty small and limited, tough to fight. But once that water drops, you have a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, there's a lot of paint, which also I do hope we get to see. Because we know someone has Dappledoolies listed in their resume, do you think we'll see some Reef Slider cheese here? Uh, this is one of those maps, I believe, where a single Reef Slider can flip the zone on its own. It can, and I think we will. That's It's pretty effective here since, as we said, like sometimes you're just kind of cut back a little bit from getting into the zone, so Reef Slider Cheese lets you flip it without having to risk too much. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like we're going into... Oh! Splatoon 3 moment. Uh-oh. Oh. I love being on a local area network. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we will be restarting this game. That is not going to penalize uh, the team with a disconnect. I So... Watch everyone just chill and spawn for a bit, and we will get set back up. Or, okay, people are having fun. There we go. There. <laughs> also oh, that's a sub power up too. Yeah, Aster and Mizuna both have it. Let's go. We, we love a nod to your roots. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hopefully they get to reset here. I think Mahi Mahi Resort, um, if it weren't raining today, we could all go outside to the water park and pretend we were at Mahi Mahi Resort. That's true. For, for the folks at home, it is it is a stormy weekend here at Riptide, which unfortunate since this is, I believe, the first Riptide where the outdoor water park is open. Yeah, or is normally open. Um, yeah, <laughs> But yeah. there ain't. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. that. <laughs> uh, we, so we get to live vicariously here through, uh, through our Inklings and Octolings. Although, these poor kids do not get to go in the water. Don't... It, it's fun. Well, I have seen a lot of people fall in, especially on Mahi, since, you know, there's not a lot of guardrails, so if you screw up a squid roll, well... Oh, I'm not saying I don't go in the water at Mahi Mahi Resort. <laughs> You're just not supposed to. You're not, yeah. That, it certainly doesn't stop people. Let's see how this goes this time. All eight players off to a fantastic second start. Woohoo! And we are seeing Glugas, but no Dapple, so no Reef Slider coming out on either side. Uh, we have a Wiper, uh, Heavy Edit, so both teams have a cooler. Tactic Cooler, which brings even more chaos, rapid spawn, fast action to the game. We have some splashdowns, some uh, fun panic weapons, uh, Ultra Stamp from the Splatana Wiper on Student Debt Gaming. And as you can see, 15 seconds in, completely full on team fight already. Uh, we have a collapse two down on the side of student, three down on student deck gaming. UK, <laughs> UTK feeders taking the early lead. Now they have to figure out how much time they have to set up an aggressive position. You see the Glugos already getting up there. I think they're forced off. They uh, are forced off, but like they're, that's what Glugos are going to do. They're kind of cheap trying to draw attention, but uh, they need to live because they're not moving super fast. Yeah, well, they, hey, they already got three down Another and they're up. Oh, and a wipe completely on... Uh, from UTK Feeders onto Student Zed Gaming. So now that's the opportunity that UTK Feeders needed to take an even more aggressive position. They're still kind of staying close to the uh, to the zone. They don't want to give anything away for free. Uh, specials building up on Student Zed Gaming. Here they come, opening created, but uh, 
expect as the trade comes out. Mizuno on Enzap. They do flip the zone. Enzap goes down. This Glugos is fighting very hard to just take anything back. Uh, they go down. It is a complete reset of the neutral in favor of Student Deck Gaming. Now they really have to play cleanup crew and get ready to make defense of their own. Mm -hmm. Good thing. I mean, they have a lot of tools to help their defense, especially uh, Nova being able to spam those point sensors. Flanking on yep. this map is kind of effective, but yeah, you know where everyone is. It's not happening. There's pretty limited cover on this map, so point sensor can reveal a lot. But not if the Ultra Stamp is just clearing everything out. Uh, student Deck Gaming continuing the hold of Fun Camp. Almost a double collateral there. Oh, that was smart, though. They they watched the jump. They, they used that it. as bait. Student Deck. The z zone is flipped uh, back in favor of UTK feeders. But this is not an over team fight. I do think Student Deck's going to keep pushing in this. Uh, th this is still neutral. You see the Gluga still here fighting right. Generally speaking, the map is going to be fought on like a full one right side and a full left side. Which one down like on each side. Both. No one's over committing to a fight here. They're really trying to find a, a mistake to exploit. Trade again. UTK feeders with a slight player advantage. Uh, but Student Deck capt captures the zone, so playing objective pays off here. Oh wow! And they canceled the stamp. No, this is this is a lot. People are kind of throwing the whole kitchen sink at each other right now. Uh, <laughs> here comes this Trizuka. One player goes down to it. The bubble is going to kind of uh, negate that effect on the zone, however. Although the, the whale it cuts right through and looks like they're able to keep holding. Yeah. Oh, the fists. Okay. Nice surviving the triple splashdown and the ultra stamp comes back out. We just saw this not long ago, but it's back. Uh, Student Deck Gaming managing to control the zone despite going down multiple. Uh, it looks like UTK Peters is preparing their counter push right now, but uh, Student Deck Gaming is back up. So. Both teams uh, fighting over the zone once again. And that cooler comes out. They're ready to keep this hold, even if they have to trade for it. And looks like they're going to get it with three down. Okay, this is Student Debt Gaming's chance to take a really aggressive position now with that staggered wipe. Uh, they're just going to clean up mid, make sure there's no surprises from anyone, though. Uh, it looks like they're not going to go up on the other team's spawn. I understand the decision and respect it. Yeah. Special do, starting to come They out. do have some more supportive weapons. So they know they need to stay back and be ready to paint. But oh! That Booyah Bomb flips the zone. This is going to be very difficult to uh, cut through all this penalty with the dwindling time remaining. But anything can happen if overtime is triggered. Oh. oh! Special's coming out. Both teams are caving in on each other off of the zone. Three down in Student Deck Gaming, but only two down on UTK Beaters. The penalty is coming really low, so we're about to start seeing points count back down in favor of UTK feeders. Uh, somehow, Aster is fighting with this Nova, which is a very low accuracy weapon. This is impressive. Very successful fight from the Nova, just taking it low and slow and getting a few picks and contributing where possible. And now Student Debt is in control. Uh, UTK feeders, they do have a comfortable lead now with, when you consider the... Actually, you know what? There's only 10 seconds of penalty left. I'm, I'm taking that back. Oh, and Perry, go get that cooler, buddy. You gotta get that quick respawn. Wow, and they get another flip with a single Booyah Bomb. They're getting... Specials are dictating the pace of this match right now. Oh, Splashdown doesn't do much, though. It doesn't cap the zone. It does get a trade. Oh, okay. Uh, two very painty weapons still in play for Student Deck Gaming. They may be able to capture the zone. One goes down as I'm talking. Uh, players on the zone again. It looks like UTK Feeders has a bit more pressure on the zone, so it's really on student debt to take this zone back right now in five seconds. They do not accomplish it very ah. close, but that game does go to UTK feeders. This best of five is now 1-0. Yeah, props to UTK, UTK feeders uh, with living up to their name, and I don't mean that in a negative sense. They played aggressively and it worked. Um, the, I think what happened really was uh, Student Debt Gaming, their comp overall is more supportive, as I said earlier, which means if you're able to just rush it down and not let their paint actually, you know, continuously hit the ground, that means that they aren't going to hold control. Like, sometimes getting picks can be more effective in getting control than paint is. Yeah, it's absolutely true, especially, I mean, even if the Dullies were going down, they were managing to draw so much pressure off of the zone. Um, so when they get picks, it's more zone for them, and or rather just more paint for them. It was it was really interesting strategically. They I felt like they had very different approaches to this. Um, yeah, UTK feeders had some players just going everywhere all the time, and uh, we'll yeah. see. I think that map favors that playstyle. I'm really curious to see how 
Manta Maria is going to go with a lot less mo room to move. Yeah, well, it's less room to move, but honestly, more room to flank because there's the a lot more routes to choose from. Yeah, the flanks on this map can really, really disrupt your back line or uh, just completely overwhelm you by pincing you. Um, and if I'm remembering, did both teams have an Ultra Stamp or is it just the Wiper getting a ton of Ultra Stamps? Um, I think it was the Wiper getting a ton of Ultra Stamps. Okay, because that might be fun to see some stuff in uh, Rainmaker, Manta Maria. I don't know. I I'm kind of got Ultra Stamp on the brain because I've been learning the well string. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know what it's like. And, I mean, Ultra Stamp, as we know with the recent netcode improvements, has gotten better because now it actually blocks the shots. Who would have thought connectivity helps? And that means on land, a fully consistent Ultra Stamp. Provided hey. that you don't disconnect. Provided that you don't disconnect. On land. <laughs> Which, <laughs> hey, I, I can't even say not out of the realm of possibility. We are in that realm. We are very much in it. <laughs> Rainmaker, Manta Maria, lots of height differences, lots of ink flying over walls, uh, lots of flanking. Mm -hmm. And not to mention two roots that are, even if they're kind of close geographically, they feel Ooh, the dapples very are out. separate. Oh. And a V roller. Oh, there's Oh no, the that's a crack on roller. Yeah. So we have Kraken coming out. We do still have. Uh, we do still have uh, Trizuka coming out. And now on both teams, I believe, cooler on both teams. This is functionally similar comp, except for uh, the Dapples really mixing it up. They're going to be trying to pull a lot of action right off the bat. The Roller and the Dapples skirmishing. Uh, it looks like they decide to call that off. Try Zuka taking a quick hit on the Forge Flattershot Pro, though. And looks like the Roller there is doing some work. Roller's pretty defensive. And oh, the Dapples cutting in quick, though. Being dapples able to coming into up. play a supportive role like to finish off fights rather than start them. But it pays off. Neutral, though, coming right back to mid. No one's leaving mid quite yet. Three down for UTK feeders, though. Student debt gets to uh, take their momentum forward. I think already getting that first check. Uh, looks like Astro here has this uh, Kraken ready. I want to see what they do with it. Oh, this roller's stuck in a tricky spot. Astro does get out. Oh, and there's a jump getting camped there. Ooh. All right. Koreki gets picked off handily by the Duelies. These are the splat Duelies with the splashdown. Roller picked cleaning them up. Very nicely. Kraken coming out. Really just buying time for their team to jump in. Not just buying time, but they're chasing down that Rainmaker. You can't escape a Kraken that easily. Especially on this map. Uh, unless you have a wall to get on. Uh, I'm surprised, though. Th they didn't really gain that many points, but they are buying time to, pr uh, to continue their push. And looks like uh, they're keeping everyone away. These Dapples are over with. Okay, it's wow. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're bringing the action everywhere. I can't tell which team is splitting everything up. Uh, but it does look like Student Deck Gaming is handling it a little bit better right now. That said, uh, it does look like the streak got cleaned up, so we're moving a little bit closer back to mid, unless a surprise flank picks it up. And I said it! I wasn't sure! <laughs> uh, but it looks like the roller did that. Um, and now the score is at 13. That is a really difficult number to beat without getting at least one, if not two, team wipes. Yeah, that roller knowing how to flank move carefully up and also having those beacons to help themselves and their team get back in with annoying positions. <sighs> All right, and it does look like Student Debt manages to reclaim mid two because I think that uh, surprise Rainmaker push just scrambled the comms of the other team. They probably panicked a little bit and were making sure they cleared everything out. Understandable. Three up on this wall. One goes down. Uh, the roller is teaming up with the end zap to clean everything up. Two down, though. I do think uh, UTK Feeders is ready to counter push. Uh, maybe not quite. Okay, 2v2. <laughs> Spoke a little too soon. <laughs> These apples are still putting in the work, though. There is a lot of just constant action. This is really fun to watch, though. Uh, it looks like Roller cleaned up UTK Feeders in mid, but I don't trust that the opponents aren't hiding somewhere. As we do see a dually go down in the distance. All right, it's all up to the Dapples right now on UTK Feeders. They do have that oh. Reef Slider. And they get they one, get with, one it. with it. They're still alive. This Forge is trying to chase them down with that range advantage. Ah. They do get the pick, but the rest of the team is alive now. So yeah. there's not much to push yet. Not that they even need to because they're at 13, and I have to remind myself and everyone of that fact. <laughs> Ooh. And fortunately, I think Student Deck Gaming is just taking more effective fights here. Uh, they, yeah. They're 2v1ing, they're pincing people, while uh, UTK Feeders usually just has one or two people going and uh, trying to challenge people, which 
can work, but with something like Dapples, uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to close that distance and you just get canceled. Student Debt's really focusing on having that single explosive moment with the entire team, and I do think it's paying off in this mode. Uh, we're going, making our way toward the street of VTK Feeders, but again, Student Debt doesn't need to do all that much, so I think they're just trying to maintain control of the situation. Three on UTK Feeders goes down. I don't even know what exactly got them. It looks like, was it the Zap or is it the Forge in their street that just got several? I could not tell you oh, how fast they're all moving. Oh, it was probably shot. It was the spotter <laughs> shot. Wow. Roller just uh, being a menace on their uh, attic up here. Man, being able to control the ledges here with Roller, it is annoying to deal with, especially if you can keep getting there with beacons. Less than a minute left on the clock. This is all looking great for Student Dead Gaming as they have control of all of the paint in mid. They control the mobility. It does look like specials are starting to fly out on the side of UTK Oh, feeders. there's a flank. There's a dually, Dapple Dually flank. They're trying to make something happen. Oh. They get caught by Mizuno on the forge. And two down. And again, Student Dead doesn't have to grab anything. They just need to make sure that the other team can't do anything with the Raymaker in the next 10 seconds. And they might have it here since, I mean, there's... Two down on UTK feeders, people responding, but they're going to get camped by this roller. Or not, because <laughs> the duelies come in and get that roller out of there. Ten seconds, they do pick up, and it is over right ah. away. 1-1. One, one. This is looking like it's going to be a nice, good set. Yeah, see, they're just, I think Student Deck Gaming's um, comp and play style just worked out better since Manta isn't really a map where you can just consistently rush and try to take separate fights you'll get yourself isolated and cut off, which is what happened with that Dapples. They got themselves 2 v one a ton. Yeah, like, you can flank, but the escape routes aren't good. So mm -hmm. you have to get value out of your flanks. You have the op you have a much better option to do it, but you have to commit and get value. Uh, and it looks like, I think, knowing how that comp works, it looked like Student Deck Gaming was able to understand that that was a play style they were going to do, and they never really were surprised by the flanks. Yeah, I mean, the big thing with Dapples is as fast as it can move and as well as it can flank, if you're able to predict it even slightly, it becomes pretty trivial to some weapons to deal with it. Yeah, it it does. It's a hard weapon to fight with. Um, mm -hmm. But, I mean, you just have to be so slippery. And I am curious not to jump ahead right away, but... Robo Ramen is kind of the middle ground here. There's flank routes, but they're open. Yeah, it, they're open and committal, which is very interesting um, design-wise. I mean, I love the shape of this map because it's strange. It is strange, and I need more experience on it myself because I, I don't... I mean, even in my warm-up this morning, there was players uh, just... They were slipping down underneath this bridge, and it's so easy not to see it because you're up high and focused on what's going on in the middle of the map. And sure, they're vulnerable down there, but just due to the visual layout of the stage, it's really easy not to notice until yeah. something is really sudden. Well, a very interesting thing here, too, that we might be seeing from Student Deck Gaming is um, I know Aster loves their beacons. Beacons will reveal the location of any um, enemies around it, and that includes enemies that are below you. So if you put them above a flank route, that means you can see anyone under it. Or if you put it below, you'll see anyone above. So yeah. I want to see how they use that, or if they put their beacons on one of the flank well, routes. If so they anyone's going to have creative uses for their beacons, it's Aster. That's true. So I look forward to seeing where they get placed. And here we go. We're moving into Robo Ramen. We are seeing a Sploosh Neo. <laughs> and we're seeing, is this, so this is a beacon weapon on both teams. Yeah, beacons on both sides. Okay. This is a good beacon map. So I think you made the right prediction here, because this map this map is massive. It's massive and it's hard to find people, which Beacon does both, it fixes both those issues. And we are seeing some dually squelcher action here too. So more tools that will reveal and force players to displace. Uh, it looks like players are really playing for the uh, the openness of this map. Hey, that was a, honestly not a bad fight from the duallys. Very risky, but duallys versus roller is always fun to watch. Tacticooler is enabling both teams to feel more confident being the aggressors and it looks like neither team is getting the advantage quite yet. Kraken coming out for Student Deck Gaming, which does force UTK Feeders to scramble a little bit and just try to survive. Two I, go down. I was going to say that seems a bit early, but I mean, if you get two picks with it, nothing's too early. 
uh, and more specials flying out. But it, again, it looks like Student Dead Gaming isn't able to take a whole lot of ground just yet with that fight, despite them getting the uh, player advantage. And well, just like that, now. it's flipped again in their favor. So maybe we're about to see a little bit more ground taken. I think Student Dead Gaming knows how to be patient and just give it a second before they know they're going to get more ground. Yeah, especially with smart. that Forge Splatter Shop Pro on their team. I think they really want to build their pushes around this Booyah Bomb as it comes out. Two players go down, though. Uh, I guess they got a little bit jumped on, which I think Utiki Feeders did know that they have the, the damage output to kind of surprise them like that. Dooley's going into a fight, Ooh. picking up two with the help of that Wave Breaker, and they immediately respond with an actualized push, and uh, looks like Student Death Gaming is on their heels, but they appear to be cleaning up... Uh, Actually, yeah, they are cleaning up. I had to remember which color was pushing for a second. Uh, I don't know if they'll get that clan, but that's okay, because they can just clean up mid now. And, and they still have a pity. And here's that secret route we were talking about a little bit. Not fully utilized yet, as it's not painted. But with the beacons and everything at their disposal, the slippery weapons, the roller, the dualies, we Ooh. might see some covert usage. Surviving all three shots from the Trizuka UTK feeders is looking to make their move into mid with the tactical coming out. We'll see. I mean, they're still fighting for it. It's getting pretty scrappy, and they know even if uh, it takes Student Deck Gaming some time to push up, they get that ground. Look at them go. Student Deck Gaming absolutely not wasting any value from any of those picks and just converting ground to their control instantly, going right into another push. Three down. They are able to set the pace here, get more and more points. It looks like they're going to have to scramble to get some clans to, uh, to uh, make this uh, push longer but they have some teammates dedicated to going and fetching that. Uh, they are out of clams, though, and two players down. This might be the end of the push, despite the amount of control they're holding. Yeah, a small lead is nice, but it's not safe, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. One wipe from UTK Feeders, and that could get them into a position to take the score back. So this one-to-one -one set is looking just as close as the scoreboard would indicate right now. And these fast jumps from Astro, they love to use their beacons to back up, which is not something you see often. It's very smart, And we're though. seeing it now. UTK Feeders is able to get very close to scoring range, but they don't have the clams to get in yet. Uh, so they actually have to back up and uh, play objective for a little bit before they can commit. But, I mean, with two down and the crab tank coming out, this is their push. They, they got to move now. This is their push. They clearly want to make this their push, and I think that's the right play. They just all need to stay up right now. And... Uh, we have someone going on someone's the going here. ready for a flank. This is one of those sneaky options. But once again, Student Tech Gaming anticipates it very well. It's like they get the pick and oh. No player is going down quite yet. And it looks like two down on UTK feeders now. Student Tech Gaming able to maintain control. They lose the power clam. This is uh, UTK feeders game to reclaim as we go into the final minute. Uh, you see they grabbed the pity there too to try to set up an extra jump. But that sploosh went down. So they couldn't get it. Yeah, they... Uh, <laughs> Student Deck Gaming holding control of mid. I think the beacons are helping a lot more than we may notice, as they seem to be just returning to mid with extreme speed. Now, that's the thing. I, Roller really lacks movement, and Aster knows how to make themselves All right, move. Three down. This is absolutely UTK Feeder's push. They they sprint to the basket, and their team... Oh, nice catch oh. on these duelies. I did not notice them quite there. One more clam. The lead is now for UTK Feeder's with 20 seconds on the clock. Uh, we will be seeing a uh, Pitchy Clam coming in for Student Debt Gaming, so they have a chance to take this lead back because it is just that close. One Power Clam and two Small Clams, I believe, is all that is needed to take the lead back. Let's see if they can get it. The Roller here trying to make a difference, but they just aren't able to get in with the pain Tactical here. Tactical is starting to wear off for UTK Feeders just in time for Student Debt Gaming to get theirs. So they're probably feeling pretty confident that they can rush in. Kraken going in to force an opening, and it actually does get a pick uh, the Power Clam looking for the opportunity to move in. They are making the jump. They can get this in. But remember, they still need to get two Small Clams in. And there oh, they are. Oh! That was insane. I <laughs> loved that play. That was so smart. That was really clean. Going into the Booyah Bomb to lock in the jump position. If needed, it ended up not even being needed. But you have all that health to not, just give someone a quick It wasn't beacon. just the Booyah, though. They got a beacon under there. Mizuno knew to jump to it and instantly Booyah so that they wouldn't get killed. So they gave their players so many options to get in and finish the job, and they ended up not even really needing them. They were just physically there with the clams, but I think that was the right play to lock in their chance of success. 
that I mean that is thinking with beacons, you know, like 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 portals. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't I, know what else to say. The, the the nonstop fighting is very fascinating. I mean, this game is fast paced, but it's still a team fighting game. But this is it seems like we've been seeing so many one v one fights. Yeah, well, the thing is, 1v1s are still as important as ever, but one big thing is how do you play off of your teammates' 1v1s? Yeah, and I do think Student Deck Gaming is playing a little more together Yeah. as a unit, which almost certainly comes from their extensive experience playing together. Yeah, there are. I mean, I've seen some, uh, some flanks uh, where um, UTK Feeders uh, has someone going kind of far where it can work even if they don't get a pick just because splitting the attention of a team is very, very helpful. But capitalizing on it can be very difficult if you don't have people going in getting picks with it. Yeah, and even if you're getting picks, you need like you have to prepare your team to anticipate those picks. You have to prepare them for where you think you're gonna pull the opponents in. Pulling off this play style, it's so doable, it is difficult. It is funny how people often equate that with uh, you know like solo queue plays, but it sometimes takes more teamwork than our regular game style. I think to. it can be seen as a solo queue play style because you can accomplish it without comms, but to really elevate it to the level that it competes with a teamwork play style in competitive, the, the communication is essential because you need to capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. um, well, not just it's it's also not just distraction, but um, often I refer to the way a, a sort of aggressive feeding play style works as cycling. As, I mean, as you respawn, you have to know how to be in sync with your team. And with that, we're going into a real move as a big unit kind of map. Uh, tower control on Hagglefish Market. Very... Well, Haggle's a great map. It, it is a very, as Boing said, teamwork-oriented map, but you have to be able to make use of flanks here, too. You do! Uh, but you're not going to be doing a lot of hero plays necessarily unless you get like a very valuable trizuka. It's more so about using position or getting into positions that can help your team pinch or just force yeah. fights. The real hard part is getting past this barrier in the middle. The first player going down on behalf of Student Deck Gaming, but as you can see, everyone's just hiding around every corner. So making the first move past this this wall, this line of scrimmage, if you will, <laughs> and they they get to hide behind all this cover and just wait for you to pass and shred you. Oh, but there so. are a lot of explosions on screen. I, I will say the 52 gals wall is definitely going to help them peek around corners because that's another wall you can I hide do think behind. that was a really good pick for them because it does allow them some coverage to make these difficult transitions. The Kraken and Triple or Trizuka coming out. Uh, Student Deck Gaming is playing cleanup crew, and just like that, oh, I, oh <laughs> just wow. like that, UTK Feeders has to back off. Two down. More and more beacons just going out. Three down. And because of how quickly they cleaned up, UTK Fader, Feeders, Student Deck Gaming is now able to flip position really fast on this narrow mid section uh, and put them in the exact same position that they were just in. Yeah, we've got to see how they try to find a way out because, yes, you need to stay back and fight throw bombs, but you need to have someone who's able to push, like these dualies and this I, gal. And th that beacon that the team did not seem to notice and someone jumped in, so I think the roller is currently behind. Yep, oh. they are behind UTK Feeders and the Kraken just gets three, if not four. Uh, <laughs> Please mind your beacons, everyone. Uh, more beacons coming out. This roller is getting so much value. <laughs> Aster really holding in that aggression now, getting that pick onto the Gluga's lead flips for Student Deck Gaming as this teamwork and just cycling on and off the tower. Roller, I just keep calling out the roller because they're playing so effectively right now. <laughs> Music of dancing on the tower, playing a little DDR to... Uh, Survive this fight. Congratulations for getting okay, it all the way Mizuno, down to 33. Moving, with, moving more with pro than that dually can. That was impressive. Ooh. Okay, UTK Feeder's trying to really just stop the bleeding here. Uh, the Booyah Bomb does the exact thing that they needed it to. A very effective special in tower control. Oh, but I mean, with the response coming back. It, oh, no. Yeah, Cooler's keeping their cycling quick. It's Cooler's and the Beacons. They're just able to get right back. It's a deadly combo, one of my favorite support combos, because if your team can just keep moving back in, it doesn't matter how much they pick okay. you off. Student Debt is really pushing them back hard now. I think they know that they are in a really comfortable spot. They get to try to do full send to lock down this set for their favor. Uh, it looks like UTK Feeders is making an aggressive move to come Did back. You see all those super <laughs> jump spots? It's like they're using chumps. 
Oh! Nice splashdown pick. Just narrowly evaded death. Uh, <laughs> okay, I do think that ends Student Dead Gaming's push unless we find a secret beacon that was not uh, found. No, it looks like Aster is jumping. Uh, there's the probably still one somewhere. Oh, there's still beacons, Aster but there's is. no like beacon behind them. <laughs> <laughs> and revealing the rollers, that, yep, they jump out. That's All the right, thing. The it doesn't matter if you reveal the roller. They can just move <laughs> away instantly. Yeah, the map is slowly turning blue as they start to cl claw their way back into mid. UTK feeders trying to get that opportunity and this it jump. It doesn't last long, though, because, I mean, Student Deck Gaming is already back on it. Student Deck Gaming is making this incredibly difficult for them. Players just going down left and right as they uh, get caught alone. Oh. All right, they do survive, but they're jumping to a teammate because that tactical or lets you do really quick jumps, which can get you out of a pickle like that. Uh, but it does look like Student Deck Gaming is completely regaining their base. Yeah, I mean, Mizuno might go down, but they still have pretty good control here. Yeah, they do have good control with one minute left on the clock. They just keep applying pressure to people jumping in. <laughs> I think UTK Feeders is trying to force something a little bit faster than they're able to pull it off. and. It did just lead to something like this wipeout. So I think th this is looking really good for Student Deck Gaming. They're probably going to try to pull something similar off to what they got earlier. Those beacons and cooler just enabling them to jump in over and over and over again. They don't even need to win their fights necessarily. They just need to keep being here. Yeah, absolutely. I did. As far as they are with as much time as there is left, they might have victory sealed for them already. I mean, it's it never say never, not that you said never. Uh, 20 seconds on the clock. Uh, we're trying to get a little bit of blue reclaimed. Uh, I don't think they know where the opponent is, and that makes things scary. We see the roller sharking on the bottom down there. <laughs> they want to do something. Guys, come on, paint up. They paint want up. to break some hearts right now. Three, oh, two, oh. one. Didn't no one was on to. the tower. The set goes to Student Dead Gaming. Excellent job. You know, I was kind of worried for them in that first uh, Zones Mahi game, but I think what really turned things around was the Roller, honestly. Um, roller, even though it's typically a pretty aggro weapon, it punishes aggro weapons exceptionally well with how fast it kills. It kills so quickly, and it seemed like the beacons really just accelerated the pace of student debt gaming. Yeah, it helped them keep up with UTK feeders. And the, uh, Nito's dog, look at oh, that. Oh, that's a dog. Awesome. Ah. Uh, Beautiful. Amazing. <laughs> Effervescent, possibly. Oh, that's a word. It is. Yeah. A lot of syllables. But um, speaking of syllables, uh, it was a silly set, and I, I was here for it. Yeah, I, I found that very entertaining. There were a lot of wacky, high-energy moments. Uh, I think Roller and Dooley's both lead to some very entertaining plays. Because oh, yeah. Roller can... Roller can just get a ton of picks in rapid succession, even in a single swing. Yeah, that it is not a, a standard shooter weapon. Like, it plays so differently. It exploits panic. It exploits um, just being in slightly the wrong place at the wrong time. Not to mention just the way projectiles work in Splatoon with fall-off damage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially on any sort of map where there's just places to hide from beneath, which especially that last map, the end there, the roller can just sit and wait for you to drop in on them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I have fought Aster's roller before as uh, I used to fight ITAP a lot back in the day. And man, do I hate that guy sometimes because <laughs> he made my life heck. It, I mean, it's funny in retrospect. It but is very yeah, funny. It, it, it's true. Like when you just keep seeing the enemy come from places that you don't understand how they came from there, it gets into your head. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's tough because having to try to beat the enemy's pace for that kind of thing, it means you have to be able to stay alive consistently. With Roller, if you make one stupid mistake, you're dead. It's done. Yeah. So you have to play very selectively. Uh, and you really have to put faith in your team to support you, mm -hmm. which I think, again, that's the kind of play style that a group of long-term friends and, and teammates, they can pull that off. Yeah. Because they, they know how each other operates. They can really support them the exact way that that person wants to play. Exactly. Which looks like, I mean, they seem like good sports. They, uh, they obviously know each other given CCA staff and a collegiate team. So, I mean, hey, beating them once is still enough to say, you should bump us up a little bit on the seating. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I really look forward to seeing more of them. Yeah. Uh, and it, again, really cool to see CCA teams uh, expand beyond CCA. Yes, yeah. I, I There is the Collegian event uh, this week, but I mean, the CCA teams, they don't just want to play in one small event. They want to play in the main thing because that's Splatoon, baby. I mean, yeah, like you're not trying to play collegiate Splatoon. You're trying to play Splatoon because yeah. it's fun and because competing is exciting and I guess you, you want to push yourself. And because Nintendo doesn't fund a whole collegiate thing. But that's besides the point. That's I mean, yeah, I'll, uh, that's okay. That's okay. We're doing it. it. Grassroots is cool. It is. Um, I am excited to see what we have next. I'm excited to see what type of weapons we've been seeing. Because honestly, a lot of that set wasn't the type of weapons we see a lot of lately. And I'm not saying that's inherently uh, better or worse. But it, it felt like we kind of had to figure out that play style as they went. Yeah, it did seem like uh, Student Debt had some uh, mid-range options, which I do know more of them for, typically. But um, still, on both sides, a lot of things you don't typically see. Um, you know what I'm excited for? What are you excited for? Is to see people pop off on camera. You, you see them waving at the camera? I did see a dog get waved in front of the camera. A dog, other things. I, I That's one of my favorite things here at Riptide, is getting to go to the camera. Like how I'm on camera right now. Yeah, we're we're in front of the camera. Although I, I'm keeping it cool and collected this evening. I'm not. I look. I will. I, I will put a list of sponsors up here and probably get banned from uh, ever commentating again. So yeah, don't do that. Stop while I'm ahead. But yeah, being on camera is so exciting. The first time I was on stream at Riptide, I I felt like a celebrity. That's the best thing about the Splatoon community is I love hyping people up because it's. It's great. It, it's so motivating to feel like people are rooting for you, especially when we're usually just behind screens, getting to see real people cheer for you. Real people you recognize and real people you know. And yeah, the LAN experience is so exciting for that very reason that it's, it all becomes real. And not that online competition isn't real, but just you, you get so much more of the human experience of it by seeing the energy. Because, you know, if you're upset, you can't just mute. That's true. You can't just mute yourself and go wait for a little bit. Like You get to see everything. If you're excited, everyone sees it. If you're upset, everyone sees it. Now, you don't want to see people upset, but it's just part of the high energy. Like, mm -hmm. um, And just seeing everyone caring so much about the thing you also care about at this, in the same room, it's really uh, exciting. And I think it amplifies the energy. It's not just like we're bringing the online energy here. It's, it's a whole new thing. Yeah. And, I mean, there's also cool merch. Check out this shirt. Oh, yeah. There's a, a dealer's room, which lots of artists who are in the community. I know uh, in the next uh, group, I think <laughs> several of the table, uh, the dealers are competing. And I think that's my favorite thing. Yeah. I uh, Speaking of, uh, two of the players here have um, the RR Remix uh, Hayoris. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> Uh, which is really cool that the teams get... When you have those super creative people behind teams, you get the most fun merch without having to have, like, a company behind it. Yeah. And that's just, like, the, the grassroots... It, it doesn't stop people from bringing super cool things to the table, and it makes you just so excited to root for people that are literally just doing this for fun. And nothing more exciting than not even just being in the Vinny, but walking down the halls of the hotel, seeing someone with a shirt you recognize and being like, you play Squid Game too. Yeah, and it's funny because sometimes I have to catch myself walking down the hallway and seeing someone with a Splatoon thing and almost, like, I want to be like, oh my god, you like Splatoon. I remember everyone mm -hmm. in this area is <laughs> is doing that. But uh, um, enough about, uh, you know, being a social person. Now, let's... We have Krill Streak versus Lost and Found. Ooh. Uh, and we found Krill Streak first they're a team that has been around for a while apparently since april 2018 yeah so, I, i've seen their name around a lot. yeah i i definitely have i i always second guess myself when i see a name like this because i'm like is this the same krill streak and <laughs> it appears to be because i mean i was on a team where there was several other teams of the same name in the same looty season um <laughs> so i i never know but it is cool to see yes this is the same krill streak they've been going since 2018 um they are actively competing. It, it looks like they are. They were playing in Little Squid League in June. Uh, they are one of their notable achievements is surviving as a team for this long. I agree. That's yeah. awesome. Six years is a no joke. Like, 
<laughs> it's not. E I mean, you'll often see people joke about how y y you keep a team together, or you, you form a project, you go into Luda, you lose one set, and then you disband. Because um, a lot of teams, they don't make it. it. It takes a lot of work for four people to get, or five people in their case, to get along and consistently play with each other. Yeah, that is worth noting. Uh, because this is a 4v4 game, we may see some substitutes. I'm not sure. Um, and also, I do think this is a cool thing. There's a project going on at Riptide where many artists made trading cards of themselves, and they all did custom art. I believe there's a theme where each artist tackled a different special weapon. Uh, four of the team members of Krill Streak contributed to that project. Oh, really? Yes, it is right here. Four of the five people playing on Krill Streak in Riptide this year are part of the Splatland Artist Community Trading Card Project. So if you see these players out in the wild, if you're here at Riptide, maybe just watching in your room right now, uh, try to find them. Uh, yeah. They're making cards. Uh, collect them all. Go tackle them. Mug them. Let's talk about Lost and Found a little bit. I'm uh, glad we're, we're, uh, we're abiding by that statement. <laughs> uh, we have a pickup team here. They uh, seems like they threw themselves together pretty, pretty rapidly. Um, but we do have some LSL members, some CS, uh, CCA players, um, a few players from the team Spirality. And then uh, we got... Oh, I'm just looking at the weapon pools. It looks like we have some fun weapons. What's really fun is on uh, Krill Streak, Nox is a Dynamo one trick. So we will... If we are seeing Nox, we are seeing Dynamo. Which I'm excited for. And then I see Blob Lobber on Lost and Found. I see... <laughs> it's interesting that Blob Lobber or NZAP, V-Shot, V-Blaster... Blobber and Blaster is a little interesting. I I understand. I look. Here's the thing. I mean, I know they're about like slow projectiles that you have to get reads on, but the play styles are quite different. I find a lot of people who like very kill heavy weapons also really like Blobber for some reason. I, I can't put a connection. I mean, there. I think it's just about asserting a presence everywhere. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's fun to make your opponents have to play a, a bullet heck um, in the game of Splatoon. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I, it looks like we're most likely going to be seeing some chargers coming out from Lost and Found, as well as Amber Alert plays both E-Leaders, the Sniper Rider 5H, and the NZAP, but it, they also have NZAP from Nebula, which is also the Blob Lobber player, so I'm guessing the paint control is probably going to come from Nebula. Mm -hmm. um, it also looks like Mochi is good at both Squiffers. I kind of want to see Squiffer. I would love to see Squiffer. I would love even more to see... New. Zipcaster Squiffer. Yes, new Squiffer. Pull it out. I mean, I mean I'm not gonna be. A, I'm not gonna to judge you if you don't. But if you do, you will be a legend. If you do and get caught on camera getting picks in Zipcaster, you will be a double dipped if legend. You, if you can get a Zipcaster Squiffer pick, Splatoon Tourney will pay out a thousand dollars. No. Oh, they won't. No. I, I misread. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, never mind. <laughs> Literacy, please. I'm begging. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. I want to see Squiffer. Yes, it's so Squiffer is so annoying to fight, but in a way where you're like, I have to respect them because they are landing <laughs> those shots. Yeah, and, and it's, I don't know if it's just me, but it always has a little bit more range than I think it does. I always underestimate it. I'm always like, oh, I can poke it from here because I play splatlings, I play mid to long range stuff, and then I'm, I'm gone. I, I mean, and it's I not even I can't even blame MPU anymore. <laughs> I, I can't relate because I play short range, but for me, it's like, I can't rush this charger because it charges up really quick. It is it so fast. It, I also love that about it. Like, pre-Snipe Rider, Squiffer, I guess Bamboozler, but Squiffer was really like, you felt like you got a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. Because that's the one really frustrating thing about playing a charger is, if you're not hitting your shots, you're just burning time. You, there's no quick correction. There's nothing like that. But with Squiffer, you at least get another shot out really quick. Bamboozler kind of... But also, it's just so hard to play because of its paint output right now. Like, you're not seeing a lot of it. Yes. The only reason it's hard to play, not because of another weapon. Yeah. Um, We're pretending it doesn't exist right now. <laughs> well, I mean, we might see it soon. Well, that's true. So that is an Amber Alerts pool as well, Pencil. Um, as much as I'm, I, I will make fun of it sometimes, <laughs> it is a very good weapon to play. It's also people who play it well, I have a lot of respect for them. I'm going to be real. It's really fun to play. I, I don't know. I know the modern play style of it might not be fun, but like when you look at the kit, when it first came out, I was like, okay, it might not be that strong right now, but I get the vision. Like having a charger that does a ton of shots, that's 
not quite like like bamboozler where you actually just get to multi tap shot and it's a full charge it's really fun and satisfying yeah i mean it's a very good weapon concept yeah so i i i don't know i think we're going to see some chargers i oh um i'm not sure if we're going to see an update or not but we are still waiting to get more information on what is going to happen with the match uh don't be surprised if some things change. Like the teams, for instance, and players. Yeah. That might be one thing that changes. So. <laughs> Potentially. It looks like ah, we have. Ah, look at that. <laughs> the Gunch versus Big Fat Sea Cows. Oh. Hey, I know some of these people. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I know the Gunch. So the Gunch, um, one, of the, one of the people we know best on their Echo used to be part of our team, Themba Hop. Back in the day. Yes, so I'm looking forward to seeing some cool plays from Echo, which I understand they are on Slosher lately. Um, and I haven't really... We, I'm surprised we haven't seen really many uh, Sloshers. At least, I mean, we've only seen one set. But I'm looking forward to seeing some Sloshers. Mm -hmm. And then Big Fat Sea Cows. I've heard this name a lot. Um, they appear around a lot of like mid-level, low-level stuff. And okay. they're, they're pretty strong. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, just getting more info brought up. Okay, so they've been around since October 2022. Uh, we're going to probably see some long range, uh, some shooters, little paint. Uh, <laughs> wipers. Makes sense. They are working toward, or they've been, they are officially in the mid-level section. They have made a few great white brackets in SOS. So and I mean, the big thing, getting low ink banned, hey. Yeah, and they're they're bumping uh, they're bumping elbows with the strong teams, which really can accelerate your growth if you keep at it. Mm -hmm. So um, it looks like it's a team that has recently started to hit their stride, or maybe not recently, but they they're they're figuring it out in a great way. So that's awesome for them. Uh, in the same way, the gun. Yeah. I mean, sure, we recognize people. I think believe Delta Jordan is a staff member. Uh, I've seen Latios and Def for Nape around. Yeah, Latios well, especially, a uh, very consistent shooter player. I've seen them get crazy results in the past for sure. Um, someone I definitely do not underestimate. Okay. So it looks like several of these players are from a f team called Phoenix Armada, which is definitely a name I've heard. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it looks like their, comp their weapon list is a single weapon for each player. So if, if we're seeing anything that's not a Rapid Deco Pro, an Enzap, a Slosher, and a Shot, uh, they were being obscure. They were being obtuse on purpose. And I'll have to have a conversation with them. Or a Zap. I do know David um, is a pretty consistent support player. Um, recently, he's been on Zap. But uh, last game, he was a big junior guy. And he's still a pretty big junior fan. <laughs> it, junior's fun. Uh, I, I've been... I, it might just be like selection bias because I, my friends have been playing it more lately, but I feel like I'm seeing a greater uptick in junior lately. Is it just the bubble? It's the bubble, uh, which bubble definitely has uh, grown a lot in popularity, which I'm loving to see because I've believed in bubble since the very beginning. Um, and with since, Zuka's promise, since they showed that little that little demo with the yeah. the bubble in the crab tank rolling back and forth on Eel Tail Alley back when we were excited to play that map. Oh, what a time! What a time that was. But yeah, like uh, bubble has really come around, especially um, with Zuka being so popular. Bubble's like one of the better counters to it overall. It still dies easy to strike and crab, but strike and crab are very easy to <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, move around. I would say the strike, and it just enabled a larger variety of specials when the bubble is in play. So that's yes. really, is that a little quag? Quag sire. That's adorable. You can see Echo's all quagged out. Echo loves quag sire. It's not written in the data or in the uh, comm sheet. We just know. It, I use my context clues, um, and it looks like there's a lot of quag sires on that shirt. If you have at least four of a person on your shirt, you love them. I'm glad you think quag sire is a person. It, well, uh, some some would say. <laughs> Um, no, no, I, I actually agree. Yeah. Not to get political, but I do think Quagsire is pretty cool. I yeah, not to be political, but Pokemon should be people in law. <laughs> I I think I agree. <laughs> people in law. People in law. Okay, um, so apparently, the Gunch is Jordan. 
Jordan is the Gunch? Yeah, Delta Jordan is the Gunch, which is what the team is named after. I, I, I'm worried. I don't know what's going on there. Now, I have to ask, what, 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 what makes you think Jordan is the Gunch? Uh, the, the info for the team says Jordan is the Gunch. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. That's fair. The Gunch is a, a touchy <laughs> subject for some. Um, yeah, let's, let's move on. Um, I prefer the Grink, personally. What's um, the Grink there? What's the Grink there? Uh. Um, also, it looks like David might be going under the name Winston, and I have to explain this. He absolutely loves making... Um, well, his name is David Fernape, like in Fernape. He loves him some monkey jokes, and he loves Winston for that, too. Like Overwatch Winston? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure I was on, on board with what was going Which on. Which I believe has a defensive ultimate... It has yeah. a bubble. And that's, that's well, part wait, of... I haven't played Overwatch since the last game, so... Oh. Don't well, I know that's part of uh, um, his, his love for, for Junior is being Winston in this okay. game. Okay, that, that explains things, actually, like, genuinely. Um, we're going to see... Oh, we're oh. gaming. Rainmaker on. Humpback, Pump Track. We are seeing Slosher, Wiper, Shot, Ballpoint, and Zap, Rapid Pro Deco, uh, Shot, and Tri Slosher. Or no, that's V-Slosher. I got myself a little bit backwards. So they did commit to the weapons they said they'd play. Good for them. Uh, quick pop going in for uh, Fat Sea Cows. They're trying to establish themselves in mid while it looks like the Gunch is trying to punish any overextensions they do. Uh, one player goes down for Big Fat Sea Cows. Uh, the Gunch now starting to collapse in on them. Oh, wait, I, I think, I think the colors are backwards. Yeah, we have things backwards. Um, okay, yeah, this is making a little more sense. Oh. Two going down to the Trizuka, uh, and now uh, <laughs> now Big Fat Sea Cows is making their move. Uh, checkpoint secured, and th this, is the tr this is the tough transition because, again, you're so vulnerable coming around this corner because they get to, uh, the other team just gets to sit and watch. Uh, and now... Uh, the Gunch retaking mid a little bit. They do have the Rainmaker. This is always scary, too. Trying to play a defensive recovery while holding the Rainmaker, it really slows you down, but also you don't want to get that Rainmaker picked up by the other team at any surprises, especially after what we just saw in the last set. Yeah, it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like they are going to be able to make this conversion. Almost lived to tell the tale. Echo being the only one holding the rest of the team up. They do get a pick. They go down, uh, but uh, that slowed things down just enough. I think they're happy with that. Yeah, the thing about this map is uh, the push route is such a choke point, more so than normal. So getting a bunch of picks there, as we saw, is kind of par for the course with this and one. This is really just right back to a neutral game. Uh, because, again, getting them around that corner is the hard part. So both of them being at 60 and 61, that just means you got the checkpoint. This is really where the map starts. Yeah, and I want to see I want to see some uh, movement going around on both sides. I want to see someone flanking. This map does have a flank, y'all. Uh, I think we might see it soon. Uh, Big Fat Sea Cow's actually getting some cleanup. They're they're starting to move in. Ooh, ooh, nice uh, pick. Uh, <laughs> nice pick from Big Fat Sea Cow's. Uh, that was just a little bit surprise for me. Uh, yeah, and, and um, the Gunch is kind of pushed back. I they're pushed back, uh, but this this map is surprisingly mixed in its paint. Uh, so, and just like that, three go down for Big Fat Sea Cows. The Gunch is able to capitalize on their decent control of the map and start to get things going. I hear a Trizuka come out, and it looks like one player went down. It looks like it was a trade. Okay, yeah, it was a trade. I wasn't sure what had happened. This is the dangerous corner. A fizzy bomb, it just wrecks you right here. So they're, they're really waiting for an, a, a good opening. And I think that's the fair thing to do. Despite them not being in the lead, it's a single point. Getting around the corner is the hard part. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean... Ooh. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> and the fizzy bomb almost canceling the tries. Oh, that would have also been really cool. The stamp coming out and getting some quick value just flip. Ah! Oh, and the throw. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was really nice. Um, it's still... No one is really getting out of mid right now. Uh, the coolers on both teams, especially the end zap and the uh, the tri slasher, they're able to put it right where the action is, which is the longer range tactical weapons. Don't I, I think Big Fat Sea Cow, they're oh! getting around there. No one's there. We've got a complete breakaway. And Big Fat Sea Cow. Oh! Oh are they my getting, gosh! Are they going to dunk this? Okay, they don't get to dunk it, but that is a huge. They get to 
breathe so much easier now because that is the absolute hardest part of this map is getting that close, getting around that corner. Hey, Sonata's completely on the gunch to match that and get a little bit past it, I, which two down they might. And they might be able to push it further here, but they they really okay. got to... What the jump out, it looks like Big Fat Seacals is conceding the elbow, but they have a Trizuka and an Inkjet ready, so it's it's not going to be free. I mean, Big Fat Sea Cows, they're, they're just pushing up more once they um, get a good advantage. No one's going down, which means they don't have to slow down. Unfortunately, the Gunch kind of keeps losing one Oh, they push. lost their Trizuka. That's a really big relief on the side of the Gunch here as they get to move. They are two down, and because they have to get to three, you're not going to see them dive in. As much as they would get a lot of points, uh, getting points doesn't matter if you don't get the lead. I think this inkjet's going to stop it, though. Oh, and it stopped it up before it landed, so they don't even have to dish, uh, dig it out of that pit. That is a great catch on the side of the uh, inkjet for Big Fat Sea Cows, which I think, I mean, it was the ballpoint. Yes. Uh, which is mini. So good job, mini. Uh, this elbow still being held down by Big Fat Sea Cows. The slosher coming in really far, getting a really scary double, but you can't argue with the results. Echo going right in, painting hard. No, uh, get third the third. Pick. That was a great read. Oh, they, down to nine. Okay, they this is get really this. like it could be anyone's game right now. And I'm sure the Gunch is jumping in because they don't want to sacrifice this. There's ten seconds left on the clock. Down to six. They are halfway there. Oh, oh but the, the two down. They have to pop this. Oh, they just couldn't get enough damage that on the was Rainmaker Shield. Unbelievable. Really, really clutch play on the side of Big Fat Sea Cows. The gunch, Especially Echo there. Like Yeah, Echo got so much. They read Big Fat Sea Cows like a book. And sure, they were able to come back and stop it, but Echo created that opening. Yeah, those three picks and then the strikes really, they would have sealed everything. <laughs> I think timing must have just been a little bit off amongst the Gunch, but I mean, the fact well, that they got that close. And then trying to pop a Rainmaker against a Wiper, um, that's really hard. Yeah. Like, I think they did so much right, but they they didn't have any room for error just with the score at three. Because they yeah. pushed to six. Let's not forget, they pushed to six. But that wasn't enough in this situation. Yeah, these teams are neck and neck, just given how that went. I mean, they this is anyone's set. Yeah, and I think it's hard to judge a whole set based on Rainmaker Humpback Pump Track. <laughs> but as far as openers go, getting to three and six, like I, I would say that it would have told us less about the teams if there was a quick KO. It would have told us it was less about the teams if they both didn't, it was like who got a little bit further past the corner. But they both broke away. I think we saw the personality of these teams coming out. It looks like the Gunch wants to make an explosive play. And it looks like Big Fat Sea Cows kind of wants to chip away at the other team. Yeah, I think Big Fat Sea Cows has really good aggression. Um, I mean, they they just move very fast. Um, the Gunch, they have to make sure they're getting like a consistent foothold before they go in. As you saw at the start, they usually had one down going into most of their pushes, which meant they couldn't really get anything on the board. Yeah, it, it, it was... It was tough. I mean, there was this whole extended neutral game. Over, I think over half of the game was both teams only having gotten the checkpoint. Yeah, but uh, I mean, once, once they cleared those and were actually able to make moves, you saw how far they went. Yeah, both teams did really good at capturing any advantage they had. And I think that will translate very nicely into Clam Blitz. I think there is a relationship here where Clam Blitz is about opportunism. You need to create the opening. You cannot cheese this that easily. Sure, you can get single clams in, but that doesn't mean anything in a competitive sense. So I think we're about to see a lot more of the same exciting stuff. And yeah, we see the pencil coming out from many. Uh, very good hold on this map this thing has. Sorry to phrase that like Yoda, but I mean, it covers a lot of ground with paint and it can hit almost every spot Tactical that you are coming push. out in 15 seconds. They are not wasting any time. Both teams are now enabled to go for these huge fights. And it looks like a trade's coming out. Echo almost getting the pick. Mini cleaning up nicely and scaring off the Gunch. Uh, Big Fat Sea Cows has an early control of mid. Two players down, three players down. They have enough for a push, so I think we're about to see something. But they're going to be back really quick. I don't think this is going to be huge. Mini able to back up and get a foothold. They have a bubble up, oh, too. This, this bubble's getting a lot of control. value for them. And it's Stamp coming out to support just some safety. I was surprised what that was stuck on. It appeared to be stuck on the clam basket. Oh, almost two down, three I, down. Wow, self. Oh, my uh, the goodness. The tap shots. Don't underestimate the tap. Okay, and they just completely run out of ink. What else are you going to do at that point? Uh, they're still getting value. We're seeing some jumps. It looks like the push is actually over for real now. Uh, 
the Gunch answering with a quick tactical or they want to get mid under their control as soon as possible. Strike's coming out here too. I think a little early since I th they should be controlling more ground first, but the Zooka Ooh. taking out theirs. Oh the Zooka my took out their Zooka. This is, again, a battle of the specials. Mid, Big, Sac Big Bad Sea Cows is showing some prowess understanding the angles of this map right now. Yeah, I I really love how much they're just uh, dominating uh, the space here. Like, they're not letting the Gunch have anything, and that's really important for this map. Especially having the pencil up top right now. It just, ooh, nice dodge. <laughs> Barely getting out of there, and we are seeing push part two from Big Fat Sea Cows. <laughs> Lots of claims flying out. They rip right through that penalty. 23. I think we're about to see the finish of this because Mini can't do a whole lot alone as a pencil. Not that there wasn't great value. They made the absolute right play getting out of there. And now the Gunch is... Echo is holding up the front, trying to not give away too much ground. Yeah, trying to, trying to find a way to, to get some damage in. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a lot of paint to move around with. All right, the... Tr uh, the tripling streak. We have a Zooka ready for Big Fat Sea Cows. They're probably going to try to catch people on a cheeky angle. Never mind. Both shots are down. Uh, Big Fat Sea Cows ready for another push with the cooler out and 13 clams in possession. Looks like they're starting to trade some clams around to get a power clam going on. All right, two fall down. Okay, I think the Gunch is angry. They will need something now, and they know it. Two minutes left on the clock. Ladio is having to back off as this Ultra one. Stamp comes through. Uh, it looks like they're just going to try to wait out the Ultra Stamp, which I think is the right play. The opening is created as players are starting to jump in. The power Clam does not go down, so they are still at 80 points, which is the lowest score you can have while having created a push in Clam Blitz. There is still a lot of work to be done, but the match still has a minute 45 left and change if there is overtime. The Gunch, they're holding mid right now. I think I th they really know the severity of the situation. They're trying not to completely wipe and give anything Yeah, over. they're they're controlling top mid, but going through those sides, you have to be able to send people through there, and they're just unable to do that with the control they have on top. Yeah, Big Fat Sea Cows, they're taking their time here because they don't have to overcommit anymore. 23, 49, or whatever the score was, was a little bit of an unsafe number, but now they, they know like it's hard to break down to the number they have, so they can mm -hmm. really take these fights one at a time. Yeah, and we see here, self continuing to just put on the pressure. This guy is a headache to deal with, and I love it. I, uh, the whole man, the Rapid Pro Deco just getting kind of surrounded and outpainted there. Another stamp throw. I love a, a stamp with good aim. And, and we're about to see this bubble. They just need one more clam. They have it, and there it is. 2-0 for Big Fat Sea Cows. This is a best of five, though. We are not done. Yes, there there is still plenty of time to go. The Gunch could still reverse sweep. I know, and it's it's very possible. But I'm sure Big Fat Sea Cows is breathing a sigh of relief right now as they have this padding to really just try to close out this set. And this is impressive. I mean, I don't want to go and seed teams here, but the Gunch is, like, I would say a lot of very strong mid-level players. Meanwhile, I feel like... Um, Big Fat Sea Cows, they're a little newer to the mid-level scene, but uh, the, how they're holding it is... I mean, we could get their actual seeds, if that would be interesting. If we could. Maybe not. Okay. Maybe I not. will say they're close. Well, well, well. <laughs> they're close. I, I am, I'm just, I'm surprised, but, I mean, good job to the seeders, because I, <laughs> I am impressed by Big Fat Sea Cows right now. I, I'm sorry, I was not familiar with your game, guys. Yeah, uh, and we're about to see a little bit more of it. I at Inkblot Tower. Oh, it's Inkblot Tower? Mm -hmm. Okay, the classic. I should know. I played these already today. Yeah. Which, uh, I, I, as Blink said, classic map. Personally not a fan, but I'm a contrarian, and I hate what's popular, which Inkblot is very popular. We've seen your posts. We know. <laughs> um, but I think it's fun. Uh, <laughs> it's certainly... Uh, it, not that it's a boring map. It's a very standard map. There's a, we have seen a lot of it, especially if you've ever played a map with... or played or watched a map with counterpicks. Uh huh. It's a very <laughs> popular counterpick, but this map has all the regular features you see a map having. Um, an uninkable ramp. It has uh, two sides to uh, get the uh, enemies uh, plat with. Um, the steps and the slick. There's flanks here. There's a bit of a useless area. There's slopes to fight off of stacks. So a lot you can use here. Um, 
I think one of the most important things you can make use of here is um, the bats area of the opponent, which... That is really the hard commit area that's scary to hold, but you get so much value if you use it properly. And ooh, I hope I can see Echo hold it with Bucket. We're seeing... Is that Deco? No, it's not Deco. Uh, so we are seeing the Slosher come back out. Very... I think they're kind of... Both teams are kind of sticking with what they know here. Mm -hmm. Although, am I hallucinating or was Wyatt on order shot earlier? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing shot. Uh, they're going right into fighting in mid. Slosher is trying to take up this left stack, which will be a great spot for them to give a hard time to the opponent's pencil. Mm -hmm. See, right. Echo, Echo trying to get a fight done. He doesn't have much space to move, but repositioning with the cooler. Excellent job. Okay. And the pencil, this is a great spot for any backline to take on this map. It really helps them confirm the first checkpoint because you do have enough visibility here. So Mini holding this spot is going to be really nice. We might start to see some players rotate on the tower at this point because it becomes a lot harder to be a backline on the tower pretty soon. Ah, I really hope that Jordan can focus those whales on whoever's riding tower and bubbling. Big Fat Sea Cow's holding on to a lot of specials, though, so I do think the Gunch knows that they have to take it slow, bait these specials out, and we do see the Zooka come out. That's probably one of the scariest. Uh, Ultra Stamp still at the ready on the Wiper's behalf, though. Ladio's managing to narrowly escape. Echo is angry, not letting anyone get past them. Oh. All right, two down. It does look like this is the Gunch's chance. They have their cooler. Uh, the Slosher moving up, trying to get to a spot where they can take advantage of the height differential, which is completely right. Perfect special uses, literally textbook, to counteract that bubble with uh, some triple ink strikes. Uh, and now we see... Zuka coming out for Big Fat Sea Cows. Can they still get the check? No. Th ah. Well, they're not giving up, but they are splitting up, which I think was the proper play. The Ultra Stamp really able to clear up the alternate side of the map with that, just that <laughs> ability to charge forward like a chain chomp or something. Uh, okay, that Big was Fat Sea Cows. That was an epic reference. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, wow, I don't even know what exactly got the uh, oh, good. Rapid wow. Deco Pro. I, I, I mean, person defending bad, okay. that's an important point. Two down. All right, this is looking really nice for Big Fat Sea Cows. They probably will uh, lock down this Incro. This is the bats that we talked about earlier, this area up on the left. It is a high ground. You get to really watch your opponents come out of spawn. It is just really... It's a really scary spot to hold. Uh, they do look like they back off. I really like seeing this out of Big Fat Sea Cows. They are not afraid to ease off the gas a little bit and let their team recollect before they go again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really wise. That's an important part of aggression is having a bit of patience and knowing when to use it. Yes, so the gun getting picks here. Okay, I think they have a slight player advantage. But the but Ultra Stamp. Oh. The Ultra Stamp is completely wasting their time, which is exactly what it needs to do. They don't get any picks. I think... Uh, the Gunch is probably pretty happy with how that played out. Yeah, I was a little worried because self's been scaring me. Yeah, I think them not getting anything right there was really important. We see... Oh, they lost the Zooka, so I think that uh, the Gunch got the opening they needed here. Not that you can move the tower any faster, but uh, I think this is the momentum shift that they need to take what they have to get. Slosher going up on their platform. Uh, it looks like the Slosher is just directly doing flanks right now. Will we see any value? I'm not quite sure. They're still alive. Uh, the Wiper has gone down. Not a lot of uh, players going down since that, though. They clear the check, though. The Gunch making the careful transition around this corner. Trizuka takes one. That's going to happen sometimes. A player from Big Fat Sea Cows dropping down into mid, getting two oh! with the bomb. That is the absolute damper on the push that the Gunch does not need with a minute 30 left on the clock. Gosh. I mean, knowing that everyone's going to crowd around that cooler could be pretty effective if you... You make use of All it. Right. The Gunja is taking very defensive positioning right now. They clean up two players. Uh, they they know they don't have much time to waste, so they have to play this all kind of textbook and slow down with any hero plays. Okay, Echo here uh, hopping off the tower for a bit. He wants to aggress. Gladius went able to find picks with the... Oh, he, they, he does get one with the okay. uh, Chizuka. <laughs> It looks like they are also doing the same thing and slowing down off of the aggression when they need a breather because what else can you do? There's a minute on the clock. This push very well may be your last. I don't know. That's the thing. With things coming to such a, a an end, they need to be able to push up and get a better foothold here. Yeah, I understand. Uh, okay, so the shot goes down. They still have some triple ink strikes to counteract that bubble. I'm guessing that's what Echo's saving for because the junior still has a bubble up. Oh, very very oh. tight pick from, I believe that's David, David there. Yeah. Uh, 
they are taking their platform. But someone no one's on needs, tower. Someone needs to get on the tower. Uh, I'm not sure who grabbed it. It looks like it is moving once again. Some player, Wyatt, is sitting up there with the splatter shot. <laughs> They're ready to pounce on whoever's Game on that is tower. Moving, you see this? Yes, I do see. This is some, this is some <laughs> prime sh movement. Twister, nice. Another pick from the end zap. They're staying alive. This is so important. Now, David, I thought end zap was a support, not a slayer. Dang. But you got to do what you got to do, especially when you're cooler. Oh, but I don't know if they can. Two players these bombs. from the gun going down with every player firing everything at it. That's the wipe. Ah. Three zero for big fat sea cows. That is impressive. That, <laughs> that's a showing. That was really good. You, you hear, you, you all might not hear. I heard some screaming coming from across this uh, hallway. Yeah. I think, unfortunately, um, the guns just didn't have much of an answer to the wiper. I mean, towards the end, they were definitely dealing with the ultra stamp better, but having someone that can just continuously get into your face and keep hitting you and have something that allows them to just keep pushing further it kind of some mid lanes can struggle against it, that. It was it was a pretty solid pacemaker, and the amount of ultra stamps that they were getting out with that wiper was really impressive. Not that it's like the definitive special, but it it adds something. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of stamp, and seeing it just go and shred tons of people sitting in front like of you're it. You're often gonna go down when you use it, but if you're taking two players with you, that's value. Mm -hmm. Um. One is arguably value, especially if you have Tacticaler, which they had. both teams had a lot of Tacticaler. So really, just even getting trades with it is pretty free value. Um, and that thing was painting so much. I, I do think you saw there was a lot of paint control for, from Big... Uh, oh my gosh, I forgot what the name was. Big Fat Sea Oh, it's right there, it's Big Fat Sea Cows. I was like, Big Fat Snails? Uh. Yeah, I, I, another thing I kind of wish that we got to see... Er, that I think the Gunch kind of struggled with is these days, uh, a lot of people will tell you, me included, Shot is not a slayer. And Latios generally was playing a lot of Shot in the era where it was the slayer. It's not anymore. So having it try to contest a wiper consistently, it's, it's not going to happen. It's hard. It, it's not easy. Wipers are, oh man. I, I mean, and you saw it. It's like the, I know, don't. <laughs> Hate wiper. <laughs> Boo. Stop. Sorry, no anyway. Um <laughs> anyway, I what I loved was some of the absolute power that came out of tap shots from the wiper, which in my head is like the painting tool. Or the I got a big charge shot on them, now I will finish them off with a tap shot. But we saw some fights where exclusively tap shots were used to clean up one, two, three players. Now here's the important thing about Wiper that I think a lot of people miss when they think about it. Um, wiper, it's been called Long Ink Brush often and also compared to Tetra because both, like both weapons, it has a lot of mobility while it's swiping. It has, in fact, I think one of the fastest default strafing speeds in the entire game. Um, so not only can you move extremely effectively, you outrange a lot of short-range shooters, which means in fights, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a deceptively long range, and I think that's very interesting. It paints well. It's very volatile. Um, very fun to fight. It's it's tricky. Uh, although, uh, would you rather crush. fight a wiper or a stamper? Hmm. That's a good point. I think I would rather fight a wiper, personally. I, I think it probably depends on what you play. I I would fight a decavitator, because I don't have any cavities, therefore... All right, brag about it, why don't you? <laughs> I will. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think it also just depends because Wiper moves really fast, which doesn't scare me as much when I'm playing a Splatling. Yeah, it's funny to say that, like, uh, Wiper and Stamper are extremely different weapons because, I mean, they both do a lot of the same thing, but they just the paces they play at are very, very different sometimes. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely true. But it still uses the same brain, which is why I think you see a lot of players flexing to both. Because there's some weapon classes where there are vastly different weapons within that class, and players generally won't play both of them, mm -hmm. even if they like look similar. But wipers or stamper, no, Splatana. splatanas. That's the first word is the one that connects them. Or swords, if you're feeling. Uh, I'm not like shorthand. Oh, okay. Well. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's played both. It's very situational. Although we did see a very dedicated wiper come yeah. out. Yeah, I do love me uh, my uh, three member classes: good old umbrellas, splatanas, stringers, and brushes. Yeah, I mean, th w is umbrella still three? Oh, you ne never mind. Umbrellas, you're excluded. I go away. Shoot. And what about bow? There's only three bows. 
Yeah, which you were talking about three. Yeah, I said stringers. Oh, I, I think those. That's my fault. Okay, that's it. You know what? We'll, we'll we'll work on those game terms, buddy. We'll open the wiki tonight. We'll study. Didn't you say pencil? I. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so I'm excited <laughs> to see uh, some, some some crazy sets here. Uh, I believe th this will be the last round of uh, matches here. I think so. We're. We're waiting on confirmation, but I believe um, teams have been playing three matches. This is this Swiss groups format where you're still split up by groups, but you still play like a Swiss within your group. Riptide is very large this year, over 100 teams. It's very big. Uh, which is super cool. So many people in the venue all sharing the same passion. I opened up the doors, and I thought I was in the Mall of America. I, I, I had to turn around. I can wax. We're not too far. I can wax poetic about just the vibe of any sort of nerd gathering said with the most positivity possible. Uh, but we already did that. That was our I, I mean, I did steal some lunch money on my way here. I got like uh, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Did, you buy, did you buy a very uh, useful lunch with those $20? Um, I did not. I bought cookies instead. I think someone owes me a cookie. That's true. We'll have to... <laughs> I d you know, don't, don't take bets with this guy. I... <laughs> Don't don't gamble, kids. Uh, especially if you're if you're on the IPL stream in the future, don't don't waste all your channel points on one team. Oh yeah, well I mean Splatoon Tourney probably has the channel points too. Don't don't do it, Splatoon Tourney fans. Don't gamble. <laughs> it's not good. I, I know it's not the match this right now, but I do see a team called Double Slaw No to or Double Toast No Slaw, um, which is the correct way to order at Raising Canes, if you didn't know. Although it's called No Slaw Extra Toast. Uh, so, so, sorry, I, I thought Raising Cane's was a chicken place. Yeah, but the sides are important. And they have toast on the sides? It's, it's Texas toast. It's a, just a big, thick piece of buttery bread. Like garlic bread? I don't think there's garlic on it, but it's good. Hmm. I, yeah, I am not a, I'm not a big Raising Cane's guy, but um, I, I did try Culver's here in Ohio. I did get to try that. That was exciting. Um. Realizing I shouldn't endorse anything, though. Yeah. I just eat food sometimes. Don't, it's, it's really don't not eat food. a comment on... No, please eat food. Oh, uh, eat food. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're not entirely uh, ready for the next thing. So I do believe we're going to probably have a bit of a break as we wait for the teams to get ready yeah, for the I'm, next I'm, match. I'm going to go downstairs, Boing, if you want to join me. Uh, no. <laughs> Are you coming? No. No? Uh, no. Uh, anyway, we are, we are going to wait for more information for the team. So uh, we'll see you soon.
Welcome back, everyone, to Riptide 2024 Splatoon 3. We have our final set of Wave D uh, coming up on this stream very shortly. And I am, once again, Boy, and I am joined by Damp Waffle. All right. Well, anyway, we are doing, I believe, Fant in my system versus Krill Street. And flying. I am so excited to see these teams. I had to stand still for like five seconds so I would not explode. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad you're not exploded because the set's about to start pretty soon. And I know. There's still a risk of me exploding. So let's let's see. Uh, who do we have here, we, Boing? We have Krill Streak. Ah, again. And Fanta in my system. Yes, we saw Krill Streak earlier. And we have both the teams displayed before you now. Oh, uh, my gosh. I will admit, I don't know a whole lot about Fanta in my system, which can always be fun, though, to see a uh, I have better. a little bit of intel. Um, actually, uh, Lazy Much on Fanta in my system does go uh, to my school and is someone I will be coaching. Um, he is a bucket player. Oh, so we will probably see a bucket then. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like the game is going to start soon, so I think we will... Hopefully watch it. I, yeah, I, I do think I hear game audio. I hear Amalgamania. Oh, and I oh hear they canceled, the so I guess something must have gone wrong. Maybe another disconnect. Yeah. But yeah, so. um, Lazy Much, uh, very, very good bucket player, very good communication skills, so I'm excited to see what kind of teamwork they have together. That's, yeah, I that's good to know. I think having communication, I mean, it's... Clearly a team game, and uh, with any group of people ever, communication becomes a super important skill. It does look like we're having some technical issues. I, I'm sure they'll be resolved shortly. We, it, it's been happening all day. It's fine. Yeah. Um, the players here just enjoying the energy. Everyone's, everyone's been able to have a decent sense of humor about it. Again? Oh, no. Uh-oh. More, more technical. DCs. Oh, that guy's oh, from Rivals of Aether, isn't it? The little. Was that Edelus? It was like an orca. Or no, Edelus is the bear, right? Oh, Orcane? I don't know. I'm, I'm not a furry boy, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, uh, we will be waiting a little bit longer as our awesome staff try to take care of whatever is going on. It seems like that specific setup has been a little bit problematic. Yeah, it's been this one, and in my experience, um, the site that we tried to scrim on this morning was just breaking, but luckily, from all the breaking, we fixed it. Well, we got the TOs to fix it. So TOs are awesome. The, cr the crack and mare fixed it. I'm drinking my adore TO water right now. That, I mean, I would just drink water, but uh, you do you. Okay. But I do love, my, uh, love me some TOs. So we are still waiting for the resolution of this issue, but it seems like I think I think the fix is on the horizon. Hopefully, I, I'm excited to see people play. That's generally why. Right, I hear gameplay, and I want to. That's look generally at why it. I commentate. Yeah, it's. I want to watch awesome gameplay. Oh, there, there's Vapor the TO. He grabbed the controller. I kind of wanted to see Vapor play. Isn't Vapor on Triggerfish Zone Supremacy? Yes, Vapor is an incredible expo player for TZS. That's exactly what I remember, so I'm glad my memory is <laughs> correct. Stop your I, man, <laughs> I'm just saying, it, th there should be a, 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 a TO moment where they see someone just struggling, and they're like, you know what, give me that controller, and they just I don't off. know if I would like that. I think, like, what if it's someone who, like, never plays the game? <laughs> but, but would they want that? I mean, it would be dramatic. It would be dramatic. It would be some very good, uh, yeah. s s some good production lore. It would be divisive. Some would say. I see Isabel uh, jamming. Where? The, 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 that, that guy in the background. Oh. Yeah, look, look. Oh, I, I see it now. Okay. And you know why they call her Isabel? Because her hair is Isabel. Oh, I was going to say because she's cute, and so is the name is... Oh, awesome. Yeah, that too. We're at Clamblitz on Barnacle and Dime. That's not Barnacle and Dime. I'm bad at brain. <laughs> We're, at <Cl> <laughs> We're at Museum de Alfonsito, everyone. Uh, Clamblitz, we have a... That is the custom range blaster? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have, there's the dynamo. The dynamo one trick, baby. Okay, so we have pretty uh, standard comp on the yellow side, but with a little bit of flavor with that custom range blaster. But uh, it, it's pretty uh, standard meta. This is... Uh, well, if there's one thing I know that can ruin flavor, it's milk. As you can see here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> milk. Well, gets milk has been removed. Uh, yeah. And we have uh, Krill Streak here, kind of pushed back on their heels, but they're getting picks. I just, it hasn't converted to mid control just yet. Uh, yeah, Krill Streak here being in the purple. Unfortunately, Dynamo, it, it, it can struggle once Pencil has a good hold. Another Kraken out. It looks like Fanta in my system is now trying to make their, their attack. But no picks coming out from the Kraken, and this Range Blaster is stuck. Oh! The Range Blaster is stuck at a very close range fight that they don't want to be in, but some massive support coming out from the uh, Trizuka. Uh, Lazy on that bucket, as prophesized, is taking the flat. Trying to, they're trying to reclaim that uh, clam if they can, because they don't have any push material outside of that. Two down on Krill Street. Three down. That. All See, right. Lazy. Proving why I was uh, such a fan. Yeah, I mean, but it looks like the, what I, I was about. I was in the middle of saying that's the end of the push, and they did sneak in. I still think it's the end of the push, but uh, good job for Fanta in my system to pull off uh, <laughs> getting that 80 on the board. Now, if uh, Museum the Alfonsino Clam Blitz does the thing where everyone is stuck in neutral for the rest of the game, they have the win. That's true. If you can be the inciting pusher, that forces everyone else to have to push eventually. Ooh! That was a bold dynamo play that got some value. Uh, we it's see Nox coming up along the side. The rest of the team, Krill Streak, is kind of filing in here. I was going to say, I, I wish they would move a little faster, but their weapons aren't the most mobile. Save the Yeah, labor. they have to take their time to claim ground in front of them. And I think that's going to slow them down here when they don't have a huge player advantage. Yeah, I, I definitely want to see them moving through more than just the ramp, though. There is a flank on this map. All right, and it looks like they're trying to force the opening. One goes down to Milk, but it, it ends up being a trade. And my system still kind of having a loose control of mid, but it is not set in stone here. Trizuka coming out. No one going quite down yet. Landing down right on all those bombs. Oh. Torpedo kind of playing cleanup crew there. I think I think Krill Streak's trying to get their resources all in a row to make this push. Oh yes, the Dynamo goes on the flank. This is big. Oh, oh. the Dynamo went on the flank but had nothing to do there. Uh, well, they popped cooler, so unfortunately, that's no swingies for you, buddy. Yeah, and now we have Phantom. My, <laughs> it's just back and forth. I, I can't keep track of this. Come on, y'all. All right, the, there, no team has really definitive paint. Finishing up with a direct just for style. The custom range blaster taking out the dynamo and a bomb. This is trades left and right. I was joking about it going to time with no scores. But it's looking pretty similar aside from that one that puts the 80 on the board. That might be all they need if something doesn't change soon. Yeah, I mean, maybe Fanta knows they just had to play a really annoying defense just to get this. All right, two down on Krill Streak. Fanta may be trying to assemble the next push here. Three down, and that looks like the next push is on the board. There Good go. on them. I hear a stamp coming out. It was canceled off screen. Uh, the pencil is now setting up. Okay, this is a legit push now. The Snipe Rider 5H getting pick after pick around this corner. This is a nasty position. And it looks like the slosher Lazy was chased down by Nova. And it seems like Fanta in my system is now officially starting to back off of this push. I think, yes. Hopefully. We're I mean, back to an overall uh, kind of neutral game. They as barely lost mid. I mean, Krill Street needs to gain more ground. It's tough with how slow the Dynamo is. but Yeah, that is exactly what's going on. Krill Street is working on getting mid back. But they kind of have to take fights to do it. They're aside, like, their weapons, they can't just inch forward that easily. Yeah, I mean, it, they have to take fights together. They have to ru not run out of ink. I mean, you can only spam so many torpedoes. It's starting to look a little bit yellow for Fanta once again, but no. Uh, Krill Streak is doing a good job of keeping them out of mid, but once they get into the, their plat, it seems like that's where the struggle has been happening. I'm seeing some clams come up. This might be Curl Streak's first push. Overtime activated because they have fall in play. 
Oh, oh but I specials are being thrown left out? and right. I don't know if they're... Yeah, they may be timed out. They don't have a lot of... Oh, they're in. They still need a lot of points, though, and they don't really have the reason. Oh, and there's the And wipe. there's the wipeout. Krill Street can officially no longer do anything for this game. Some extra play going on to suppress them here from Fanta in my system. Perhaps game one goes to Fanta in my system. Wow, what a dark horse. Uh, I <laughs> they look pretty jazzed, if uh, you ask me. They look, I, they look positively, uh, positively fizzy. Yeah, that's that's what Fanta does. Fizzes. Yeah, Fanta fizz. But uh, well, yeah, that's a guy. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I Fanta the team. Yes, um, I think. I mean, Fanta just looked like a the dominant team there overall. Like they were winning fights, they were taking more ground. Uh, Krillstrik really has to figure out a way to catch up. Um, I like the Dynamo too. That might have not been the map for it, um, especially against a pencil. But um, uh, maybe what's coming up next might help him out. Yeah, I would love to see Dynamo on a map such as Manta Maria. Ooh. Or Ooh. what? what's another Dynamo map? That Humpback. Humpback Pump Track. Yeah. Even Rainmaker, which is pretty much most of what we see. Yeah. Okay. Because I mostly imagine back to the days of zones on Humpback Pump Track, and that was obviously an awesome Dynamo map. Yeah, I mean, having z Dynamo in zones is great, but in general, anything where there's a lot of good fall-off points and not a lot of places where the Dynamo has to, you know, try to get up to positions yeah I, that's a pretty solid dynamo map which was kind of the struggle here is i think dynamo to be most effective does need to go up on that block flank like they were trying yeah but you have to have enough aggression from the other side and unfortunately going as many down as they were having yeah like, like a pencil. we saw the dynamo come in and then there wasn't really a lot of paint under them so if they didn't get essentially a pick with their first swing it was over hmm. um and i, I I think if a few more things fall into place for them on the next game, then Krill Streak yeah. can get things right back. It, it did not look one-sided, per se. The scoreboard was, but that, I mean, if one specific part of a map is giving you an issue, it can make a huge difference in the scoring. Yeah. Speaking of... Looks like we are moving into our next match. Tower control on Undertow Spillway. A carbon roller coming out, and the octo shot with... So two rollers and some decent paint hopefully back them up. It looks like they're playing the kind of surprise people game, if I were to classify it that. It, it looks like the same kind of thing coming out from Panta in my system. I believe the same comp that they had last game. Yeah, still a strong one, too, going oh down Oh, yeah, it's absolutely a strong comp. Um, two going down. Krill Streak is angry, I think. This oh, carbon. Yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of cool plays with this carb in this game. Yeah, the carb is going to be a big difference maker, and they have three weapons that can paint it in, so... Especially the Trizuka coming out to counter theirs. Ooh! All right. Carbon got a little caught off guard there. Uh, Fanta in my system really making their answer known right now. We see a jump come in from the carbon, or something like it, right into it, getting a pick this time. Milk hopping all over the map, just trying to annoy Fanta in my system. Uh, and it looks like the official press officially started, but the tactical are out. Oh, Nox looking stuck there. That's the thing, Dynamo might be a painter, but when it fights, it's gonna need some paint for it. Alright, it looks like Nox recognized they were out pretty far. Moved back a little bit. Uh, the tower is moving back to a neutral position. All players are up right now, so we're gonna see a lot of specials flying out left and right, trying to get some picks. Carbon goes down. Excellent bomb pick there from Lazy, right. who still has his strikes ready. Another this pick, they two down on the side of Kill Streak and their strikes for Fanta. This, this is officially look looking really nice for Fanta in my system as the specials are at the ready. Two, or uh, the set of uh, ink strikes coming out. Ooh. Oh. Very, very hard hit from Nox. The shot backing up a little bit. Two down for Fanta now. It is. Pearl Streaks move to make once again. Just the pencil, and looks like they have strikes ready. And a cooler online. Lots of specials coming out. This is going to help them extend this push. Triple Ink Strike does a lot oh. right there because it can buy you so much time off of those grades. Unfortunately, two going down to a bomb. That is the kind of thing that just grinds your push to a screeching halt. Lots of bomb kills here. These, Pearl Streak, you got to get moving. 
nice play from Lazy here, cleaning up some picks. And uh, the position is looking, or the state of the map is looking really nice for Phantom My System again. They, they are converting paint yeah. so quickly. And it looks like Pearl Freak is starting to fight back, even without Bomb Sniffer. Not bad, not bad. Okay. Carbon tagged, which pretty much incapacitates them right now with the playstyle that I'm assuming a Carbon wants. Yeah, it looks like they're still trying to creep up. Oh, they oh, closed the One first. down. Oh. Range blast. Or no, that was the okay. That was the spotter shot. It, it gets uh, an important uh, stoppage there. Another one down. Two down, if not. Oh yeah, two down. Both players of Girl Street backing off. See, whenever Fanta has cooler or anything, they just go in. Good job there to Nova for getting that pick. But we really got to pick things up. Yeah, we, we know that getting value out of the coolers is the most important part, and it's good that they're not being bashful when they have it. Oh, Another one down. Phantom's still near the tower, Krill Streak. They're, oh. they're getting some of the picks they need, but oh, not the ones in the place that were really making the difference. The pencil on the tower here kind of gets to just rain down annoyance. And the heavy edit splatling from Krill Streak trying to put a stop to it. But, I mean, they're in such, they have such a high score right now. Yeah, this is 16, that's a game winning okay. score. Cruel Streak stops the bleeding. I think it depends, okay, yeah, with this fight, I believe the bleeding is now stopped. But they have a big answer to make within one minute. Yeah, oh my gosh, that is one yellow map. Cruel Streak just doesn't have much to move with. The shot is one of their main painters. And if they keep going down like this, everyone else can't move. The carpet and the dynamo. Yeah, it, it really just seems like Phantom My System is just winning so many fights right now. And that's, it's keeping their momentum up, which is how you keep going. Like, they're, they're positioning well as well. A bit of an aggressive play from the range blaster gets punished here, giving the specials a fair kind of playing frantically, trying to just get their map back so they can make their push in the next 30 seconds to get into overtime. Okay, that's getting a little stuck there. Uh, let's see if Nova can push up a little more. Nox goes for the aggression. Oh, nice! Two, Two shots from Milk. Milk, this this could be enough to just give them the opening to take this game back. Okay, Milk scares them away. Uh, they need this checkpoint really bad. This is such a hard position. But uh, Fanta has Zuka ready. There it goes. Fanta has Zuka ready. And the Dynamo goes down. The Range Blaster coming in. Two off the tower for Curl Street. Three off the tower. That's it. Yeah, unfortunately, as great as Dynamo, Dynamo's range can be very, very oppressive sometimes, but with how big its windup is, if you're facing down a pencil like that, it's just going to stop you dead in your tracks. Yeah. Uh, up 2-0 now for Fanta in my system. They're surprising. <laughs> They're putting up a really good show. The coordination there was awesome to see. They, they've won so many fights, and Curl Streak was playing really well. Um, for some moments there, but it was just the offense was so solid mm -hmm. on Phantom My System. I think the slosher did a lot. Oh yeah, Lazy's bucket is incredible. I mean, first of all, being able to fight with it so well, but also some of the picks that he's finding are like, they're making very good use of the slosher hitbox, which is kind of broken, but I mean that in the best way well, possible. And I think maps like Undertow are so, they, they really highlight the slosher class. Yeah, uh, being and the roller to, class, anything with the the fall off projectiles. Fall off projectiles. Um, it, it, being able to slosh over that uh, middle spine is super effective, especially um, with a lot of the close range fighting weapons um, that people tend to run. Um, it even outranges carbon, which is the wall banging special, as we all know. Yeah, and it's not even just the spine in the middle. It's once you get past those checkpoints, and you're just the enemy team has to drop onto you over and over again, and you can see where they're coming from. And you have the grates, where they have to be vulnerable on the grates. There's so many things where you can play pretty comfortably from below with a yeah. slosher or a roller. Which, I mean, they could just outpace the dynamo there. That was, I think that was kind of part of the, the reason they won that. Like, dynamo, as great as it is, it can struggle in fights just because it can't keep going over and over just like a bucket can. Yeah, and uh, if we saw the, oh, we're going right in here. This is Hagglefish Market. Hagglefish Market Splat Zones. And uh, they're going, and I see a Rapid Deco. And that seems to be a comp change from 
Fanta in my system, so they are playing an Inkjet now. Yes. Uh, and looks Ooh, like... Gold Dynamo. Yeah. Looks like Pearl Streak has uh, splashing a very paint heavy. Ooh! Combo. Two down to the Zuka, though. That was starting to look pretty good for Krill Streak as they got the first foot on the zone. Last player jumps out, an effective white uh, in favor of Fanta in my system. So they get to set up an aggressive position. We're about to see some value out of an Inkjet, I believe. This is tough just because Krill Streak needs to be able to push up far. They have the paint to secure zone, but. Ah. Inkjet coming out from Fizzler, taking out the uh, spotting. Another oh. one. Very high value Inkjet. Great job Solid for Fizzler. 60 on the clock. We have about. 30 seconds remaining for this if the bleeding does not stop now. Uh, Fanta in my system. Chumps come out, Zuka comes out. Oh, nice pick one. on the Zuka. The Chumps also doing a great job of backing them up into a spot where they don't just get to sit and wait. Uh, it doesn't need to get picked. Dynamo flipping that zone very quickly. Okay, Krill Streak is putting up a great fight right here. Two down. Uh, sounds like someone might be flanking this Dynamo. <laughs> oh, rapid for. Oh! More flipping left and right. Krill Streak hanging onto the zone right now. Uh, we might see it go into neutral. No, they're holding it very nicely. The pencil is in the spot it wants to be, so it's really on Krill Streak to not get caught off guard. Yeah, with the Dynamo going down, though, I mean, there's not much they can do to hold the zone. As people are jumping out, trying to retreat, get a safe vantage point where they can push back in again. All right, Krill Streak withstood that pretty nicely as they are getting ready to... Uh, make their attack once again. A player goes down on the right to the blaster. That's going to slow them down pretty considerably, losing the splash. Yeah, Milk, unfortunately, not really getting into the spots they need to be to take advantage of their kills. That uh, looks like they jump out, too. Yeah, their positioning is getting called out repeatedly. Super Chumps might buy them the space they need from the Dynamo. And as you can see, this lets them to rush in. And I think the zone's going to turn blue now. Krill Streak getting the zone, but they need to keep their players alive so they can take out Fanta and keep them from constantly applying pressure to the zone. Not fighting like a champ, though. I love it. Oh, if only they survived. Oh. The yes, they do. They do survive. They hold around that corner. Real nice play. Pencil throwing down a lot of ink on the zone. But if anything can up made a pencil, it's a dynamo. Oh, gosh. Yeah, this is intense. I mean, the chump is also helping them stay alive against oh. the pencil. Oh! Is the Milk Zuka going to get the perfect pencil? idea with that Zuka? Just barely cleared the pencil's head. They played that well. Oh, Whoa! Excellent Very pick, tight though. flick on that. Oh, and they barely don't get the lead before their penalty gets put back on. Oh. Krill Streak, they will hold the zone here, but that's going to that's gonna really slow down their progress. Come on, Krill Streak, you guys can get this with our sweet oh. started. All right, it looks like they're kind of hitting their stride right now, getting that communication down, picking off stragglers. This is exactly what they need to hold for a bit longer. Their penalty coming to a close. Uh, the lead may flip very soon. Oh, a lot coming out from Fanta, no. though. Oh, they oh. got a single point, and Fanta in my system holds it. 2v2 in the zone. It's not too late for Krill Streak to reclaim this, but they have to act fast. Milk is... Oh, oh Milk getting caught. That is rough. Not Another one go down. Too. It looks like Fanta in my system is taking the victory of this single team fight. This, ma this match is not over. These penalties are fairly small, and the distance is a single point. Uh, we are about to see anything happen. I think Krill Streak is playing way better this time around. Yeah, oh, they just got to find their way back in. They can just get the Dynamo back where they need to be. They All right, the shot work. goes down. The Slosher is not able to get as far up as they probably would like to. And Special's flying out on behalf of Krill Streak. I think we might see the zone the change as the Slosher yes. gets stuck out. The, the Chumps are doing a very good job of just forcing the team to back up. Yeah. I mean, like, the paint and damage they apply is nothing to be stopped at. And here they just got a hold against these strikes. Oh. Yeah, 40 left on the clock. The Dynamo is really trying to make something happen. Okay. They get a trade. I don't know if that's exactly what they wanted right now with 30 seconds on the clock, but it's not too late. Zuka coming out, getting an instant pick on the heavy edit. Oh, this has got a sting for Curl Streak, but they're they're holding on oh, with two left. barely. 2v4, and they can't do much from here. Nox going down. 18 seconds. Nova going down. Uh, they have to respawn, and hopefully they can get back in in time. It's very possible, but there's so little room for error right now. And as the heavy edit spotlight goes three down. Oh, I don't think Bulls. there's really much that they can do unless the splash just... They wait. That's... Woo-hoo, Phantom, my system's got to be feeling good. They stamped hard on that opportunity for for Krill Streak to you take know, that game back. I don't know how they got 
get soda in their system by eating that hard. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, um, yeah. That was a good one, right? It was pretty good. They ate. They ate. They ate uh, that. That was a really exciting match to watch, though. There was good demonstration of ability on both teams to read each other. We're seeing the fist bumps. We're seeing the handshakes. I think they're both... I mean, it's it's got to hurt for Curl Streak. They were so close there. Yeah. Uh, Phantom, my system... I'm starting to think that Fanta's a prop. Maybe. I get it, though. Uh, we, could, we could start a conspiracy about that another time, though. I'm, I'm just floored at how well no, they played. An absolute they, dark horse. They quietly showed up, and yeah, they're doing really good work. I was impressed with the teamwork for what I presume is a pickup. Yeah. I may be wrong, but just because I haven't really seen them around as this group. Um, yeah, I can't say. I, I don't know much about uh, what Lazy was really playing uh, before trying out for the collegiate team I'm coaching, but I th this is why I, I knew that he'd be a good fit. I'm impressed beyond words. As you should be. That was a really fun set, and we got to see, I think, a different side of Curl Streak where they had to play a little more defensively. It, they had to lock in. And th we got flashes of it. It was just, just not quite enough. Yeah. I, well, unfortunate an unfortunate end to their streak, th th their Krill streak. Yeah, I mean, because that is the last set of Wave D. It is? It is. Uh, I for knew the that. Pools. So, I believe that is all that we are commentating today, but... For now. Yeah, yeah. for now. For now. I said today. For today, yeah. Um, but it was really good. I, I'm really hype with the matches. We so I guess that was technically a 3-0, wasn't it? it well, was not technically. It was literally a 3-0. But the moments were so excited. I'm glad. It, I always like when it at least ends on a good game. Yeah, a, a game that's back and forth is still, in my opinion, like that's that's fun Splatoon to watch. Not that I don't love a good KO here and there, but yeah, I, I think I, they're better in the middle or the beginning, like because then they can set up an upset or a surprise. Uh, but anyway, I think we're, we're going to see more of these teams. And I, I wonder, I have no clue of what the outcome of this pool was. Yeah. Or what this wave was. Because I guess it, we're seeing more than just the single pool. There's multiple pools per wave. Because there's so many players. There's so, so many people. And I say that with love. Because it's awesome. I say it with fear. Because it looks like World War Z out there. I guess. I mean, but World War Z, but if everyone's wearing like, fun, colorful things and having a lot of fun and, like and playing video games and, you know, and Popgun is there. eating food that they like. Um, so maybe I'm not understanding the connection. Yeah, but I, 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 don't, I don't know if you've seen that movie. I haven't. Well, that would that would do it. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, hey, you're. Your, your media illiteracy is made up for by your Splatoon and anal analytical skill. Aw. I love that. Yeah. I but like Splatoon. Splatoon is fun. I, I, I must admit, <laughs> I, I do play the game from time to time. Maybe. 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 Um, which, I, everyone here seems to like it, too. Um, I, surprisingly. I think I saw someone with a Splatoon shirt. Really? Yeah. I saw someone with the <laughs> Splatoon video game. I might have it in my hotel room. What? Yeah. You have Splatoon? Can, can I play it? Sure. Oh, my God. Okay. Do you have Splatoon on your phone? No. Ah, I have no games on my phone. Dang. Uh. But yeah, um, I, I joking aside, it, I, it's, it's fun out here. Seeing everyone's passion, um, I keep looking out to the crowd and just... Yeah, the crowd's that way. We're having fun looking at them. Mm-hmm. And, like, even uh, just, like, being, like, even during sets, having people crowd behind you, it's it's just such a rush. Like, it's what makes going to lands worth it. I, I love the hype. I love everyone shouting. And, ah, it's great. Yeah. But, I mean, we opened that way. And we, I suppose, we are closing that way. Because, once again, this is the uh, conclusion of our commentating block today. Not that I had a ton of fun, though. Yeah. And I don't really have anything to plug myself, but I do have RIT Splatoon under my name because there was a free space. Uh, yeah, that, I, that, that's who I'm coaching. If you want to see more Lazy Much, the guy who just played. RIT Splatoon. Yeah, RIT Splatoon. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm down there. I'm Damp Waffle. That's me. 
Splatoon 1 came out when I was in college. <laughs> I'm boing. This guy's old. Uh, you, you, it's, I'm hard to find online. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I, 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 I yap a lot, so. Isn't that great? You'll, you'll yeah, find me. Uh, I think this is it for us, so uh, thank you, everyone, and have an awesome night. Peace.
Hello, everybody, and welcome to day one of Splatoon 3 at Riptide. I am Jay King, and I'm joined by Drew Marf once again. So how are you doing today, man? Uh, I'm doing great. It's been really energetic today. So much energy in that room. I was it's about to so say, much fun. I was about to say, it is incredibly energetic, despite, like, all the, like, it, it, we may be having a few delays, but, like, <laughs> it's still going insanely well, and I'm, like, okay. having an absolute blast here. So oh, yeah, definitely. That's a good thing. Yeah. But yeah, so on stream, we already have our uh, first game um, going to be coming up soon. We have uh, Legence, um, who has a lot of notable members. Um, we have players like Bats and the Deceased, who were, um, who were uh, formerly from Inked, um, which was a very, very well-known team. Um, and then we also have Trident as our other team. And shout out to Offbeat. Uh, we, played la we played together on Last Riptide. <laughs> and so, yeah. Uh, Sending a lot of wishes to him, but not gonna be biased. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no bias. Here. No bias here. No uh, bias here. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Definitely no bias. Yeah. Also, I'm sorry. I just noticed <laughs> Shadow Draw 13, number one player <laughs> in <laughs> DN. <laughs> uh, I don't even I know what that, that means, but it's funny. I don't know. Oh no. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into uh, Legends for the first team. So yeah, as I, I said, know. Bats and the Deceased were previously on Inked, a very strong team. Mm -hmm. um, now currently on different teams, and then we also have Coffee and Astra who formerly were on uh, Cold Coral. So Cold Coral uh, didn't really have too many results from what we can see, um, but Coffee and Astra did actually get fifth out of 152 in the Turf 4 um, 2023 February ladder, dropping two games, and um, also recently got 17th in a recent charity uh, tournament, so. Yeah, really cool. Uh, really, really cool results. It's gonna be really interesting to see what they decide to do. They're looking at their weapon comps. It's really like out there, a lot of different like choices that you wouldn't usually see in a meta like this. I know. I think I think one of the most interesting is like even though you do see it, not so many nine. So yeah. that's gonna be an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. What's really interesting, like today, it's like no one's really playing meta that much. I mean, people are playing meta, of course. Like, mm -hmm. why wouldn't you? <laughs> but you're seeing like some random pick. Like you're seeing your Luna's, your Cloud Flasher's, your Arrow Sprays, and it's just like, I guess people just want to have fun and not just like try hard a lot. <laughs> I was about to say, I feel like it depends also on, like, your kind of level where you're, like, playing. Like, if you're, like, um, like lower level to mid-level or even, like, starting to get higher out of mid-level, like, mm -hmm. you can definitely get away with a lot of random comps. Oh, yeah, like, definitely. I think one of the craziest things is I did not expect to see so many dynamos this time around. Yeah, I like, know three dynamos today. <laughs> one of which was on your team. And yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, my team currently has a gold dynamo as their main, so that's very definitely fun. something uh, very interesting. But yeah, uh, like my teammate going Slosher Deco in one of the games. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep, Slosher Deco, and it worked out. Oh, my God, that's insane. But very funny. I think let's go ahead and get into uh, Trident, since uh, we know a little bit about Legends. Yeah, and Trident, uh, like you said, Offbeat, uh, as well as Shadow, AJ, and Paradigm. Uh, their most notable result is uh, getting Division 9 in the latest Ludi season. Nice. And uh, it's, um, I don't know if that was actually their the most recent one, but it was their first, and I'm very happy mm -hmm. to see that. Um, but some of the uh, things that we have been told about the players, Offbeat um, actually runs an equipment org for um, providing switches for like friendlies um, for Riptide, which I think is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> one of the funniest yeah. teams. Paradigm. One centered a talent show is a joke and one. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder what I, they, I wonder what they did. I'm very curious. Yeah. And apparently Shadow Draw is actually a very relatively new player as they learned to adapt to Splatoon in like about a month before Riptide. So that's wow. insane. Wow. That's awesome. That's really cool. We love to see new people join the community like that. I know, right? Like that's the th that's the thing. I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand is like we love having so many new players, especially like people who have like taken a break from the game or are just coming in. Like it's fun to see because we see people from all different types of like backgrounds, especially and like seeing the weapons that they can go with. I yeah. love that stuff. So oh, much. it's that's so, much, so much fun. So much different diversity and in like not even weapon choices and like so many like IRL diversity. I was about to say. Like, just the device that bleh, I cannot speak. <laughs> <laughs> this is how my commentary usually goes. It goes yeah. fine, and then I immediately start stuttering. Yeah, that's kind of just how <laughs> it goes. But yeah, I feel like this is definitely going to be a very, very fun game to watch. Um, Legends, I definitely think that they might have a little bit of advantage here with the players that they have, but it could potentially be a very, like, um, like back and forth game. Who knows? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I do think I hear them queuing into their match. Yeah, I think getting their weapons picked out. So I was about to looks say like I we're gonna be starting shortly. I was about to say I think um, kind of going with our comps. I have 
offbeat when we played when we played he was definitely like more of a heavy player mm -hmm. um definitely played like a lot of the splatlings um shadow apparently plays four splatter shot which That's is so base i love that i know like, i love that weapon too Splat really. see the splatter shot pro now that it doesn't have main power up it's actually fun to play like don't get me wrong it was still fun to play back in splatoon 2 but i think it like using the main power up it just made it a little bit less fun for me mm -hmm. And then we got AJ Moment, um, who I think is actually going to have a very fun one. They potentially could play New Bamboo, oh, which I, I don't that. think we've I seen. See it. Oh, we, we want that fizzy chunk. Yes. Bamboo. That is, give it to that me. Is, um, <laughs> that is content right there. That is indeed content. And then Paradigm running shot t tech So I feel like it's definitely going to be a very, like... <laughs> We got some stuff going on. Yeah, I think we got we got some fun production stuff going on. Production. But, uh, let's go. I was, I was about to say, let's go ahead and get into our first map actually, which is Splat Zones Mahi. Yeah. So I feel it like this is, is going to be a very looking interesting like one. we are starting now. Yeah, we're Maybe. getting in now. I, I believe, unless we might have the race. Ah, uh, land moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a little bit more time. So yeah. we can we can actually talk about this. We can actually that. talk about it. Let's go. Splatoon's Mahi. So this is just a thing. I was not a huge, huge fan of Mahi in like Splatoon One. Like I didn't like. It wasn't a map that I like hated or anything. Mm -hmm. Like it just wasn't something that I would be like, okay, I like, yeah, I'm playing Mahi. I'm just like, okay, there it is. I'll play it. Like, yeah. I, 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 had, I had fun with it. I, I mean, did it, too. It, it was different. It was unique. See, that's the thing. Like it was a very unique map, and like in this one, it just feels weird because especially on things like Raymaker. Clan Bless and everything, mm -hmm. it's just like a line. That's oh, yeah. It it's just a line. No, that's like, like I knew Arowana and like um, Yotay and Hammerhead are typing. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was about to say. Those are lines. No, Splat 1 Arowana. Splat 1 Arowana when oh. it didn't have like yeah. off, the, off the spot, it didn't have like the sides on it, so it was just oh, a thin wait. line. Oh, wait. I don't remember that. But what? <laughs> yeah. I didn't play S1 oh, really? I mean, oh, I, I did, but this is like years ago, so ah, I remember that. That makes sense. Alrighty. Well, now with that, I think Ooh. we actually have everybody in. So let's go ahead and get into game number one. That's a mini splatling. Oh my gosh. Whoop! Oh! Uh, we got a mini splatling, and we do see the Forge Pro coming out, actually. So. Okay, I don't know if you know this, but Splatoon 2, I mained mini splatling, so I am so hyped to see this. <laughs> oh my. Ooh, we see AJ getting a lot of, trying to get a lot of control over on the right side right now, but. Legence is just really applying a lot of pressure. AJ going down to the seas, but ooh, the seas is actually going to get traded out. Offbeat could potentially find something. Ooh, two yeah. going down. They are going to pop the cooler, so this could be a very early uh, lead for them if they can play it properly. Yeah, Legence does have the zone right now, but it looks like it might flip right here with that Zuka going three down. And it looks like Trident is going to be able to take it back, but maybe not. It seems like Astra is able to hold it. Ooh, Astra, what? Astro's just absolutely holding it down there. That was uh, that was honestly really well played. Try not yeah. to get into a very good like, try not to get into a very open spot that way they could get taken out, but still giving themselves like opportunities to try and push in. Yeah, and Patson with a great stamp cancel right there. And we do see Paradigm right there does have that Zuka ready. May decide to pop it soon, and it, they will. They're not going to get any in those two shots. Taking a third, not going to be able to get anything there. Ooh, Batson popping the hammer. No, I didn't oh. even realize they got a double hammer cop. They do have a double AJ's hammer. trying to get something. Paradigm going to have to jump out. One of the hammers. Ooh, Coffee going to fall to the Booyah Bomb there from Shadow. Shadow is in a really weird spot, especially with that splashdown. So Ooh. it's going to be a wipe, and that could potentially be game there. Yeah, it's looking like game one going to Legends. Yep, and there it is. Legends going to take game number one. Oh, we see a little bit of laughter coming out from Legends <laughs> there. <laughs> I did not expect the uh, <laughs> the double hammer actually. Like I, it didn't process in my mind. I was yeah, like, I okay, didn't. I don't know why. And then wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh wait, there's two of them. There's two of them. Wait a minute. <clears throat> All right. So I think that I think that's definitely going to be interesting going into our like second game with how they played. Like Trident, I think definitely had like a lot of good opportunities for like picks. But they weren't really able to capitalize on it. Like yeah, they got good picks, but they weren't really able to like get the map control that they needed. I feel like they definitely should have tried to get like cooler a lot sooner mm -hmm. because then they could potentially find something. Yeah, there. definitely. And they did have a three down situation, but I Astro Astro just able to hold it. Like they just held the zone like by themselves and like a one I know. three. And um like very good game sense movement and Really good painting ability as well. I was about to say, Astra is a Zap player, so... Of course. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, it's Zap. 
uh, what else say, Zap, obviously, like, really, really good movement. So I definitely expected them to do quite a lot there. So mm -hmm. I'm overall very curious to see what exactly is going to go on with, like, this yeah. next game. Because we know, right? We know Manta. We, we know how Manta is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Bottom five map. Bottom five. Bottom map. five. Bottom five map. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it just is. We got mini back. I'm happy. Yeah, we got the mini. We got the double hammer coming out again. Uh, looks we like got pretty same much comps. the same comps. Yeah. yeah, same comps. Yeah, they were just immediately just locked in. Like, all right, we know where we're going. Let's go. This. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go. <laughs> I feel like what they really have to do is try and play around cooler in this one because I feel like they didn't do that a lot. But the thing is, like, Trident has a lot of bombs. I think they can play to their advantage. Yeah. What do they have? They have Torp, suc Double Suction, and Curling. Yes. See, Curling definitely could be used for a lot of movement. Ooh, Offbeat getting Ooh. really aggressive, already popping the cooler. They have to try and find a spot to gr try and grab the Rainmaker. Paradigm going to get mm. caught out as they're trying to get some sort of push. Offbeat trying to go for the cut, but Coffee is going to be able to get a pick. Shadow trying Ooh. to survive, but unfortunately is going to get wiped out there. Yeah, and even though it's Astro just blocking off that area right there, so they could not pass whatever lever. And it looks like Lejeune is going to be able to get that first checkpoint. Ooh, that's three down already for Lejeune. And that could potentially be a push for Trident, but they have to be careful. Astra pushing in the mid. <laughs> AJ's just like, get back here. Oh, I thought they actually almost got that. I did too. Ooh, Astra getting in a really weird spot. And we do see Offbeat bringing it back into mid, seeing if they will be able to get the checkpoint. But it looks like they might get caught Ooh. out just a little bit too soon. They did have a very good idea there, though, just from the way they were moving. Like, they were really trying to avoid, like, getting taken out and using the Rainmaker to, like, paint themselves at their feet. Oh, oh AJ oh, oh. getting caught out by Batson with the oh. hammer. That was so unfortunate there. I really should play more menu spot lane. Seeing Batson play it makes me really want to play it now. <laughs> I say do it. I mean, since the recent patch... Shadow's like, still oh. alive! What? Wow. That was actually insane. Yeah. And that's a wipe. And it looks like Lejeune is going to be able to push as far as they possibly can. They're going to get past the checkpoint, getting all the way through the 40s. Into the 20s, are they going to get any point? They get all the way to 22 off that. It definitely is in a really weird spot. Ooh, AJ able to Ooh. avoid the splashdown as they are going to be able to get a pick onto the Rainmaker there. Paradigm trying to get something going here. They do have Zuka. They, I don't know what exactly they're going to have to do with the Zuka. They might just try and save it at this point. Yeah, I feel like Zuka is really weird on this match. It's really the angles that you can take with this. It's like really awkward. Oh, oh my god, I thought that was going to be happy for a second. Almost. Yeah, kind of going back to what you said about the, um, I'm sorry, I thought Astro was about to get to I did too. <laughs> but see, like, going back to what you said about Ham, uh, about, uh, Zuka, it definitely is really rare on this map. Like, I feel like it's good, especially to get into places like, um, like Bunker, if needed, but at the same time, like, unless you're in a really high spot or, like, on, <laughs> like, longer surface, it's a little bit of a struggle. Yeah, but it looks like Lejeune has a pretty, uh, pretty good hold right here, and they are going to push it even further all the way to the single digits. They do get it pushed to the single digits, but they have to really be careful here. The hammer going to come oh, in Paradigm. Oh. Paradigm going to be able to get one, going to be able to get two. The Rainmaker is not going to get popped yet. It is going to get popped over from Trident. Paradigm could potentially find here. They're going to be able to uh, potentially camp the jump, but no. Asher's going to be able to sneak it behind. Oh. They don't realize oh. that they get it through. <laughs> what? They no just snuck it through! Way. Astro, what? <laughs> oh, wow. All right, all right. That was disrespectful. You didn't have to do it like that. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't have to do oh, it like that. Come on. Astro. <laughs> that, was, that was an insane It's like, oh, though. I'm just going to sneak by here. Hey, don't mind me. Just going to get through here. Okay. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> like, just trying to get a huge crowd. Just like, sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to take this. Bye. Pretty much. Yeah. But no, I'm surprised they didn't get Astro there. I thought they would have noticed. Yeah, me either. That was insane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and it looks like we're already running up for game three. Like, th this is the efficiency that we we need here. I was about to say. I think they're already ready to like get going. Yeah. So I think that's gonna be the interesting thing. Yeah, it's like we've had quite a few delays today, but this is the efficiency that 
We've been wanting. Oh, we see the we see the crab hat. <laughs> the crab. Oh, we see the, the squid, squid hat. hat. Oh, there's another squid hat in the back. <laughs> there's a red one in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually have a funny story about one of those squid hats. We I were do. in. I think I do own one of them. <laughs> or oh I God. did at least one point. No. So we were going to. We were in Maryland. We were going to the aquarium that was there. Mm -hmm. And my stepbrother decided to get a hat, uh, like one of the squid hats. Yeah. And we were walking down the sidewalk, just getting back to our hotel. Out of nowhere, some dude with his windows down, with his windows down, passes by us and yells, "Squidward!" <laughs> Out of nowhere, and we're just like, huh? <laughs> Only in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just sitting there, and out of nowhere, just squirt. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> Literally, we were all just kind of looking at each other, like, huh? All right, I think that is the sound of us getting into. Potentially, our very last map for this set, if Le Jean's can take this, but. With the way that Trident have been playing, they have definitely been holding off this team and how strong they are, so. And it looks like we're sticking with <coughs> almost the same comps, but we're seeing a try new bow instead of a head it. I feel like that works a little bit uh, better when it comes to the aggression. Plus, even though Curling Bomb is good, that Fizzy can really do a lot of damage oh, on yeah, a lot definitely. of like, certain spots, so. Yeah, and plus, this is Clan Blitz, so. We Ooh. got some team coordination going on here. Oh yeah, AJ gonna try and trying to find oh, one, but no, unfortunately, gonna get a very quick wipeout. The cooler is gonna come out as Batson just throwing some clams, trying to throw get the, the clams. Coffee. Throw the clams, people! Oh, oh! Ooh, gonna Paradigm get it. gonna be able to get, get a good Oh no! They did score it. I they get the direct. I had that to that wipe. Is gonna wow! Be wipe. I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to say it, but Paradigm like. Got a very good pick, but they fell off the map by accident. Oh, I heard, I heard the sound. I was like, oh, no. Yeah, that was actually very good defense coming out from Trident there. Only getting it down to about 59. So yeah. if they can play well, they can easily just hold it at this point. Yeah, but that, this is a great start for the Jones. And we're going to see how Trident is going to be able to push out of this area right here. There's the Zuka from Paradigm. Did take two shots to knock at anyone. Trying to get a third, but not able to. Hammer is popped by one of the members of Legends. Does take out the try, and it is thrown, and it is not going to get anyone. Yeah, it's definitely starting to be a very interesting situation. Can we just also say Shadow has actually been doing insanely good for like oh, just recently picking up the game. Like oh they yes. might, like they're doing good with their special coordination, so I feel like that's something that is definitely working out in their favor. But Trident is in a very very rough spot. It's going to be a two v four situation with a lot of their members respawning. Flash, I'm going to come in, not going to find a pick. The Zuka coming out, could potentially find one from Paradigm, but no, Paradigm's not going to find is any. Three going down for Trident is another wipe as Legion's getting gets an easy lead there. Yeah, and they're just going to get all of these clams in as many as they can. The stamp is ready from Coffee. That's Pops it, isn't able to get anyone. Coffee. There's Coffee trying to get one. Is able to get AJ. Is it going to get anyone else? But they're not. They are get, able to get the lead down to 26. And are they going to be able to get it down any lower? I'm not fully sure, but Offbeat playing very well with that slosher is going to hold them off just enough. Going to get a pick onto Deceased with that Nautilus there. So at this point, Lejeune has to kind of just like kind of center themselves, but try to. Could potentially find some sort of push. The Booyah is going to come out. If they can all get grouped up, that's going to be deadly. Oh, that, oh, was, getting, that oh, was insanely that close. That was to very close. Deceased and Astra there. Yeah. Shadow going to get taken oh. out by that Torpedo. That's, uh, yeah. that's very rough for Trident. But that was a there. very good Booyah placement by Shadow there. I know it, it was. Really it was very close to getting some. Paradigm, Did no. With the stamp. Fasten no. Paradigm. Paradign 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 in the corner Paradign with the Zuka. Paradign 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 I saw the Zuka pop. I'm like, who's going to win that? Like, I genuinely. Say, I had a feeling the hammer just because the hammer is busted. Yeah, but. Not really, but. Busted in, like, some of the wrong ways. <laughs> Fair enough. As in, it doesn't work. Literally, it doesn't work half the time. Oh, that's the, a very, the stamp. I didn't realize there's, like, three stamps in this game. I didn't even realize it either, but that is true. Also, I didn't, um. I was about to say, that was a very interesting cooler placement for Legion. They placed it very, like, ahead of them and was very aggressive, so. Shadow, Shadow. getting taken down by the. Splashdown, that's going to be another wipeout. Lejeune basically has a chance to close it out here. Yeah, and they are going to get through those penalty points, but they don't have any remaining. And that is a double stamp! No way! No way! No way! <laughs> They're not able to get anyone, though. Ooh, AJ almost getting caught by the throw, but Deceased is just throwing in Clam Shadow. Going to be able to get the pick, as we do see Batson trying to regroup a little bit. Could we actually find one? We do. Is that another hammer right here? It that's is! AJ, AJ no. no! They both pop stamp at the exact same time. I saw that, I was like, it looked like a pair of scissors. I only heard one sound effect and saw two stamps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Hey, did you see AJ in the middle? You Go killed one of me, you know what? It's like it's split up by mitosis. You killed one of me, <laughs> but did you kill all of me? Yep. <laughs> you see Coffee right there just trying to take as much space as they can. AJ with the stamp is going to go down. That is one down on each Ooh. side. That is two down on the side of Trident. Is Ladon's going to be able to get this? They do get the wipeout. And that right there could potentially be the game ending throw. The, the ball does, goes, does go more. in. They only need one and that more. Is game. And that is going to be game for Legions. Going 3-0 against Trident there. Yeah, very good gameplay from both sides. I was we about to say, like, despite how strong Legions is, like, Trident held their own oh, a absolutely. lot of points, especially on that clam Kraken. Team. Big Kraken. Big Kraken. Big Kraken. Big Kraken. Big, big Kraken is gone. <laughs> no. Uh, we, we can still see him. He's <laughs> we a, he's we in can the still corner. see him. We can't see him on the cams, but we can see him, but we, we can see him right now <laughs> over to our side. Yeah. And then we got Red Squid Hat. Red Squid <laughs> in Hat. In the distance. <laughs> Oh, we see production going out. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'd say very strong. <laughs> what's happening? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having some fun. I know, right? I, yeah. mean, hey, I mean, hey, when you go to Riptide, you got to have some fun. Yeah, oh, wait, exactly. Of course. Also, I didn't even notice the sunglasses. <laughs> wait, where? <laughs> what? The uh, sunglasses, did you see them? No. Uh, it was right uh dude with the flannel. He had the, he had the glasses on, the sunglasses. So I uh, was no, I didn't notice them. Ah, oh, I gotcha. Unfortunately. All good, all good. Oh, he's Dang. probably gonna be coming. There it is. Oh no, no, I see it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant like one of the. Oh no, 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 no. I meant, like, I meant oh. on Trident. I meant on Trident. Oh no, I didn't see it. <laughs> I just saw it just now. I'm like, oh, you're just like, oh, there it is. <laughs> it's not really that bright in there, <laughs> is it? <laughs> well, some of the lights are off. I was about to say. I know when we were on stage earlier, um, after we finished our game, the lights just started dimming, and I'm like, I think they turned. Them, I think they turned them down a bit. That could potentially be the case. I just thought it was funny because I'm just like, dang, we lost, and now the lights are getting <laughs> turned down. This is depressing. <laughs> setting the mood. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much setting the mood, though. That's what it was. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Overall, I definitely think like. Then again, I'm not. I'm not being biased about this, but like overall, I definitely think that Trident like really held their own, especially against Legends. Like Bats and the Deceased are both insane players. Oh, like I remember when I wanted to see them play, I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" I faced <laughs> against them last year, and yeah, they wiped the floor like completely. <laughs> it wasn't really that close. <laughs> You're just like, "Oh, this is this is this, this is, is the Riptide well. experience." <laughs> yeah. No, oh my gosh, I didn't say anything about this, but um, the first year that we were here. Um, we were potentially going to go against FT Win, oh. but my <laughs> team was having scheduling issues. We weren't going to be able to get in in time, so we had to swap oh. teams. And um, I felt so bad. For Falco. Oh, oh wait, that was last year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I felt so bad. I'm just like, I did not mean uh, it. Yeah. I mean, then again, we had to go against uh, DNA. Um, oh, of the that's of DNA, still so. that's still like a high it like, did it high sucked, level team. Yeah. Even that, I'm sorry, but Falco, if you're watching this, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> much much love. Much we love. are we are on <laughs> his team. <laughs> No, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting Take to look at I'm waiting to look at Twitch chat and they're just like, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> we don't have a Twitch chat. What are you talking about? What? <laughs> There's no Twitch chat. I'm just, here. I'm just going back into the vod and just yeah. like, where is it? Oh yeah, in the vod, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like later tonight when I'm just, like at midnight <laughs> when I'm just rewatching the vod. Pretty much. So I'm definitely expecting something like that to happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know what exactly. I think we're just waiting for our uh, next game because things Probably. have definitely been a little bit slow when it came to like. Yeah. How the games have been progressing, but even then, I feel like with that, I definitely think the TOs have been doing a very good job with like keeping yeah. everything moving, despite how much they're trying their best. <laughs> they're trying their best because this respect is, your TOs, please. This, this is literally like one of the biggest Splatoon tournaments. Like I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. it's like the biggest LAN uh -huh. as of like over 400 people with like over 100 teams. Like, oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, woo! That's a lot of people. Because I think last year wasn't even remotely close it to was that. Seventy teams, like two ninety people. That's a rough estimate and could be wrong. I don't remember. Jeez. Uh, but yeah, this is <laughs> pretty much the biggest tournament. Ever. Like so, yeah. Like of course we've had our delays. We've had our how delays, it goes. Yeah. So we actually just got word that it is the biggest outside of like any uh, Japan land tournaments, to my knowledge. So, um, yeah. but that is definitely very interesting. So, yeah. Overall, I'm very curious to see what we're actually going to be coming up, what we're going to see coming up from like this group. Like what teams, because, yeah. because yeah, I don't know off the top of my head which, um, what teams we What have teams are playing now. Yeah, yeah, what teams we have in our current pool. Yeah. So I definitely, I definitely think Legends might be one of them that are poised to go pretty far in their group, mm -hmm. depending on who it is. Um, like if they can get like redemption or something. I feel like, like they team. could potentially get redemption, or depending on who else they have in their group, they could even get top 32. Who probably. knows, yeah. Especially with the way that they were playing. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, they were playing great. I know. Um... 
But yeah, I think we're just kind of waiting for our next match. But overall, what are your thoughts on that uh, last game? Uh, I think it was really good. I, Of course, I think we did bring it up a little bit. Shadow for just playing for like only a month. Playing very good. A lot of very good special coordination. Uh, Forge Pro, of course, a very <laughs> strong weapon. I, I love that weapon, actually. I, think I don't play it, but... It's I fun. love how it's widely considered not great, but I still everyone love still likes it. Yeah. I know it's like one of those weapons that's like universally like it's, liked. I think it's because the kit is just good. It's it's a good kit. I feel like that's the thing. The kit is good. Um, so I definitely think that's one of the things um, about it. Like, is that it's mm -hmm. it has a very very good kit, but I think it's just one of the problems about it is like it, the painting output is not great. So I feel like that's the thing, but. Yeah, I'm not fully sure. Yeah, what I'm, exactly not, I'm not sure. So, yeah. But yeah, I think with that we might be transitioning to a break while we wait for our next match. Um, so definitely stay tuned. But we will be back very soon, and hopefully, it's about as hype as this one. I really want to see a game five potentially. I want to so. see a game four. But a game please, five. can we get a game five? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely stay tuned. We'll be back in just a bit. See ya.
we're good. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to day one of Splatoon 3 at Riptide. I am Jake King, joined again by Jumar, and we actually do have a very interesting matchup uh, right now. We have, we apologize if we butcher the name, uh, Kaisa Sukopu Fan Club, which is a very highly rated team, I will say. They're poised to go pretty far, and uh, Pinpoint, so I'm trying to find out uh, uh, more about Pinpoint yeah. so we can, like, yeah, get to it pretty it. quick. There we are. There it okay. is. All right. So this is actually going to be a very interesting match because both of these teams are very high, highly seated. Also, mm -hmm. Torchic. <laughs> Hello, Torchic is here. Hello oh. to the Torchic. Oh. All right. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, uh, Pinpoint d has a lot of members that I think a lot of us know. Akame. Yep. Um, insane, like insane Insanity. player. Insanity. It's crazy. I know. And then some of their notable achievements is top four in Division Two of the most recent Ludi season. And yeah. apparently they have three one tricks. Uh, 49er is a Octobrush player. Wow. Gimme is a Dapple and Ren is a Pencil. Wow. And then Dapple plus Octobrush <laughs> is meta. <laughs> it just, he's not a camera, but the visible no. disappointment on his face. No. <laughs> I feel like it's like my team cat and me like, can I play H3? I'm like, no. 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 <laughs> no. Yeah, and then uh, Kaisa, um, I don't, I think, I don't know too much about the players. I think the only main one I really remember is Atlas. Oh, they're waving to stream, so. <laughs> Hello. You guys can't see us, but. <laughs> Yeah, so Kakioka got second in Ludi Div 2 Season 15. And a lot of them have won uh, Megalodon Monday, which is a very well-known tournament, mm -hmm. um, along with some Mesozoic Mayhem. So yeah. a lot of them have a lot of good results. So Yeah, definitely. I'm sorry. The, the, the outlier here, though, Atlas dropped out of college and then went back. <laughs> I'm sorry. Also won <laughs> Megalodon Monday and it's two, uh, so, uh, yeah, 2700 XP, I guess. Pretty much sure. all of them have won it, uh, a Megalodon Monday. And this is a pickup team compared to Pinpoint, which is fairly established. Yep. Wait, what did that say? Oh, Kakioka and Ivy are both Canadian. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kakioka likes capybaras. I, I mean, who doesn't? Capybaras Bubbles are isn't actually a bubble, and when he was two years old, he knocked over a can of paint. <laughs> 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 and then, so, uh, Wait, no. read the bottom one. <laughs> Y'all can't see this, but we have a thing. Somebody said, I ate a mad good spaghetti with mayonnaise and parmal <laughs> reading this. We well, love like this Splatoon community. I, I know, we love this Splatoon community. But overall, I feel like this is going to be a very interesting match because both of these teams are have a lot of insanely good players. Mm -hmm. um, Pinpoint is seated 17th, yeah. while uh, Kaisa is seated 12th. So there's a lot. a lot that could be riding on here. One of them... It, I've, one of them is definitely going to get top 32, I feel. Oh, yeah, most definitely. One of the, it, This is probably going to be a match for top 32. It most likely is, because with the way that it went the first game, I wonder what exactly we're going to see out of the group fully. Um, kind of just like looking around at the group. So yeah. I, I feel like in this one, Kaisa might have a little bit of an advantage, but at the same time, with the way Pinpoint plays, they are very, very strong if they can really get going. Like, especially yeah. at Kame. Oh, uh, of course, Akame. I, <laughs> I think we commented Akame like I think last we did. year. Cracked, like cracked. out <laughs> of her mind. Cracked. I know, and especially when it comes to the first map, which is going to be Rainmaker Humpback. Which, <sighs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm, I have mixed I feelings like about this. I, I don't like, like it. So I like Humpback as a map. No. But, but <laughs> just disagree. Now. Disagree. Now. Disagree. Eh. That's a, that's a lie one. It's like, I don't lie. <laughs> An incor loud, incorrect I buzzer. will say Rainmaker is definitely its best mode. Not even close. Rainmaker, no. Rainmaker is absolutely the best mode. Clan Blitz, no. Zones, no. Tower, don't, don't even get me started on Tower. Tower is garbage. Don't even get me started on Humpback in general, except for <laughs> maybe Rainmaker. Fair enough. Rainmaker is pushing it. It is, like, on the cusp of, uh, of being okay. Your, I was about to say, in your mind, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. It's, it's not amazing, barely. but it's, like, barely acceptable. It's, like, it's like a <sighs> fine type. <laughs> yeah. You're just like, ugh, fine. Because I know there's not that many good Rainmaker apps, so it's like, what other choice do we have? Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, I definitely think it's going to be very interesting, especially because, like, if I remember correctly, Pinpoint plays a very aggressive style, especially considering their weapons, which is like, um, which is Dapples, um, 52, and 52 Echo, 96, Octobrush. So I feel like they're really going to yeah. go heavily into the I'm just realizing, comp. is Akami wearing a subway uniform? Wait, are they? I think she... She might be. <laughs> I, I think she. Know. I know. I remember. I think, I th she is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got. A, they, she just got off her ship, though, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. She just got off her ship. <laughs> did, 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 
Someone just mute the camera. <laughs> oh no. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. I will have to track that person down and be like, we saw that. <laughs> we saw that and we are disappointed. You're just like, you're not escaping this. But yeah, overall, I feel like it's definitely going to be pretty interesting what exactly we're going to see out of both teams. So I like, hear screams. I was about there. to say, I don't know if anybody on stream can hear it, but they are popping off out there. Like, that's, well, that's what this entire day has been. It's just we kind of towards the back, so probably not. We're, like, in the back rooms. <laughs> we're in the back rooms. Yeah. <laughs> don't know clip or else. No. No. <laughs> don't know clip. <laughs> it's not going to end with. clip. Yeah, I feel like this match is definitely going to be a very interesting one, considering how strong both of these teams are. It's, like, Raymaker, I feel like Pinpoint might have a little bit more of an advantage, especially with the way they play. Mm -hmm. So they're definitely going to try and take a lot more advantage. But the thing is, Ivy plays Roller and Carbon. Ooh. So we could potentially see that on that, this map. Especially. I, that is very strong. Carbon is very strong on this map. Oh, absolutely. I, I've tried it myself. It is very strong. I was about to say, Kakioka plays things like uh, CRB, uh, Range Blaster, and... Um, also really strong there. Yeah, yeah, Atlas plays like Splattershot, Ten Attack, Splash. So like, we're course. kind of expecting that, but I feel like this one could really go either way if we're like actually thinking about it. So yeah. I think that is and the sign. We are going, going ahead and getting into game one. Heck yeah. We are loading in. Let's see what we got. Let's do it. I'm going to guess Octobrush and Dapples. Oh. I am correct. And we got the pencil. And on and that side, we see, yeah, we do see the Carmen, but we also see CRB and Headed, actually. We got coolers on both sides. We have, uh, Pinpoint is going Zuccalus. I feel like that definitely could work in their favor, especially if they really know how to space out these strikes. But we do see the Dapples actually going down, unfortunately, for Pinpoint. Kaisa is getting a little bit aggressive. 49er trying to get a bit of a cheeky jump in, but not really going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Kakioka just instantly getting some good blaster mm. shots with Bub could potentially try and find something here. Bubbles trying to push it. Did that just cancel out the suction bomb? I don't know actually. It, it just disappeared and didn't explode. I did not see. I did uh, not. Notice. Oh well. They do see the Zuka. Pop, they do have one shot left, but they do see Ivy able to get a pick right there. The strikes are coming in. The reef slider as well. It's just so many specials at one time. It's just so overbearing. About to say that was a lot of specials all at once. We saw the reef <laughs> and the um, strikes coming Ooh, in at once. The comedy's going around, or trying to at least. Yeah, trying to go around. Pinpoint not going to be able to find much. Gimme could potentially find a pick onto um, Atlas here, who also goes by Azu. But no, they're going to actually get a jump back. Ooh. Gimme could be able to get a nice little jump Wild. back onto Ivy there. What? Immediately jumped back. Immediately gets a pick. That was a very nice play. I will say that. Kame trying to shark over here. Maybe gonna go for a bit of a flank mode. They are spotted now. I hear the Kraken. So 49er could potentially find something. They got to be careful of this Kraken as they could potentially camp the jump here for the zip. Oh, I got a bit of damage. They're taken out. They are gonna be able to get the Ooh, checkpoint. Though. I think I got taken out by the. They got taken out by the uh, strikes. I think so. Yeah. Atlas trying to get one with the inkjet, uh, not inkjet, the Zuka. They are actually able to get one, as we do see Pinpoint pushing it really heavily. Whoa. The Blaster going to be able to get the pick onto the pencil there, but Pinpoint has a very strong lead right now. Yeah, they're going to try their best to keep going. Gimme trying to go for a pick right there isn't going to be able to get it. They are two down, and it looks like uh, Kaisa is going to be able to uh, push this back a bit. Ooh, very good pick over there from uh, Kakioke getting it. A pick onto Akame, so that is going to put them in a little bit of a weird situation. As we do see the Kraken actually pop, we see them all on the left side oh from Kaipa just trying to get that man out of there. Just trying to get 49er out of here, especially. Yeah, we do have a cooler popped on the side of Pinpoint Ivy with that Zuka trying to get Ooh. the pencil and is able to. That is three down on the side of Pinpoint. Kaisa can go for a push right now. They haven't started yet and are finally going for it. I think the thing is, though, they did come back with. Um, cooler, so it could potentially be a little bit of an advantage. Akame and Gimme getting a little bit strapped here onto um, onto the trench. As totally the Atlas does have the Rainmaker, could potentially find one push. One does go dead, one does go Probably down. Probably gonna be able to get lead Ooh, Gimme oh, getting it now. The Dragon Kakioka gonna be getting two. One with not even a charge, well, not even with a charge there. And they're gonna get Kaisa the lead. Takes the lead there. Yeah, great Kraken by I don't remember who that was. I think uh, Kakioka. Kakioka. Yeah, great Kraken by them. Able to get two up down and able to take that lead. Pinpoint is gonna have to get a strong push Ooh. if they want to win this game. And we do see Bubbles on that headed, just trying to kind of cover fire over where 49er is because you don't want to let them really get that flank as they are gonna be able to get the Raymaker pop here. 49er does have. 
uh, Zipcaster ready, so this could potentially be deadly, but Kaisa has definitely been really good at, tar at just shutting down um, Zipcaster, I will say. Yeah, the thing that I'm noticing is Kaisa has so much paint just everywhere, but we do see 49 able to get a pick right there, trying to get any more. Not gonna be able to give me. Trying to get a pick on the shot right there. Not able to. 49er with the Ankh Brush. Trying to go for it. Not getting it. But Bubbles just trying to hold as much space as they possibly can. But we do see uh, Pinpoint going for another push. Seeing if they can take this lead back. They could potentially have something here. As the Pencil does have control of that Rainmaker. Ka Kaisa has to be really careful right now. They do have a lot of specials to work to their advantage, along with Cooler. So even if they go down, it's definitely going to be a big advantage for them. But they have to be careful, especially with Ooh, Takioka. Great who does get taken out. down here. Atlas do is, does have the jet. Uh, does the Reef Slider. could potentially find something here. The Reef Slider is going to be able to get Ivy. Gimme has, has a very good advantage. Oh, there's a Kraken. And the Zooka oh. are going to come out. Kakioka is going to be able to get the pick. Akame falling back now. Oh, that Kraken just saved them right there. Oh! Who was that? That was, was that a flat on the that was a flat on the Rainmaker. This is already shaking. There's so many it's wild insane. picks going on. I don't even I know, know how to follow it all. I I I'm lost. Help! Help! <laughs> Please help! <laughs> oh, but they're too, pinpoint is two down right now. We do see uh, Kyoga trying to get a pick right there on the pencil. I'm gonna be able to, and they are gonna drop it back into mid with 10 seconds left. Yeah, that that point. Ooh, Gimme gonna be Gimme trying to go for a bank. Trying to get one there. Oh, gonna be able to get down. The Reef Slider gonna be popped early, but Gimme gonna get taken down as Bubbles does respawn. Ivy gonna be able to get 49ers. Could potentially find a Akame. Akame is actually gonna live, but at the same time, Kakyo good. It is gonna, gonna be in mid. Watching that jump. Gimme could potentially find the pop here. They're gonna grab, but I don't really think they oh, have they are so rounded. Away. <laughs> that was very, very close that to was both sides there, but uh, pinpoint. Uh, oh my lord. <laughs> wow. I'm lost. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> Brain, mush. <laughs> Brain is indeed mush. After like a whole like what? How many hours have we been here? Uh, I got it. I got. Like, I got in here at like 9:30. I was about to say I got in around the same time, so probably about almost 12 hours now. Nah, uh, I think it would be around 10 hours, but still. No, I'm saying almost 12. Yeah. Just like after we're done with commentating. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I feel like the thing was 49er like definitely had a lot of good ideas with the brush, but I feel like the problem was they kept getting taken down when they were in the zip caster, so like it really didn't do much for them. Yeah, definitely. And I think the thing I'm noticing is that Kaiser has so much more paint. If you have a dapples and octobrush one trick, you're not that shortens the amount of paint you're gonna get significantly. Oh, yeah. So it literally it gives Kaisa a very strong advantage in the paint department. I was about to say, so I feel like that's the thing that Kaisa definitely has a lot going for them. I feel like the Carbon also really played a big part in that game because we constantly saw them getting rolled oh, a lot yeah, of good picks there. But I think with that being said, we're getting into our next game, which I believe is Clam Blitz. Um, uh, Umami. Umami. I don't know why. And we're going same comps? Yeah, I think it is roughly the same comps. They have yes. a shot. Yeah, they had a shot. Yeah, they had double Zuka. Yeah. <coughs> I, yeah, I forgot and, if they had a shot um, And Pinpoint didn't have a Zuka on that call, yeah. so. Same I feel comps. like, in my opinion, Zuka is definitely one of those one of the specials you want to run on this map, especially with how much open sight lines it has. Ivy! Good Whoa. lord, already getting aggressive. Going to be able to get two. Just could potentially find a pick onto Akame here, but no, Ivy's going to go down, but is going to be able to get a decent trade there. So, it's definitely starting to become a bit of a weird situation. Yeah, we do have a Zuka popped by us right there. Able Whoa. to get a pick on Gimme right there, and they are going to be able to dodge out the pencil for now. Yeah, that was a very good shot getting a pick on to Gimme there as 49er currently holding down mid. Good potential find a pick on to Ivy, but no, Ivy's actually going to be able to get the trade as Gimme going to be pushing over to that right side. Bubbles, I don't really think notices Ooh, Gimme. Almost had it. On the flank. Bubbles oh. does notice. They're going to be able to get taken out, oh, but no, Ivy Ivy. And, uh, Ivy and Atlas both there to pick it up. Carbon is such a, it is such a counter. Uh, to Dapples, and we do see a oh, double no! from uh, Kyoka right there, and that is a wipeout as Kaisler takes the first push of this game. That was an insanely well played um, maneuver there from the blaster, like instantly getting the instantly getting oh one gosh. with the direct, and then immediately waiting for the jump to crack in it. Oh, I thought they were gonna get that pick with the Zuka right there. Uh, too, ooh, Gimme gonna be able to get the jump get in, so their bubbles just gonna have to kind of hold back for now. Yeah, but they do have a Zuka. They do still have a football ready, like immediately after the push though. So they can start it up like whenever the basket comes back. <laughs> yeah, they definitely could find something here. I'm not really sure. Well, it's going to be as... Ooh, Ooh, one doesn't get taken down. I don't know if that was... I don't know if they accidentally walked into the strikes that took him down, but it is going to be a 2v3 uh, situation now. It's one response for Kaisa. So I feel like they really have to play safe. Ooh, Akame getting caught out by the bomb ooh, 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 there. Ooh, ooh. 
Yeah, and they are coolered up on, I believe, both sides. So we're going to see how they're going to go. We do have a trade, Akame and Ivy right there. 49er trying to go for a flank right there of any sorts. Seeing what they can do. We do see Gimme on the uh, left side. is going to get taken out. Yeah, I'm definitely curious to see what exactly is going to happen here. Ren is on that pencil split. Unfortunately, they are going to get taken out. The blaster from Kakioka really playing so strong here. As They actually do get taken out, I believe, by Gimme there. But Alice could potentially find something here. They are a little bit pushed back. Where they actually could Ooh. potentially be in a decent spot. As they are going to be pushed back up into their spawn. The strikes and the <laughs> reslide are going to come out. But not going to be able to find a pick. As Gimme actually going to be able to find a pick onto um, Alice there. Yeah, and it looks like Pinpoint is going to get their pu first push of the game, and they are getting all the way to 71. They're going to get even further, see how far they can get. 49er does have four clans left over, seeing what they can do. They want to get all the way to 47, and they are going to take the lead. That's a very strong lead there for Pinpoint, as they are just throwing more clans into that basket. But I think this could potentially be the end of the push here, as the strikes do come in. Akame not really able to find a lot, but is just going to try and get some clans and just kind of regroup with their team. Yeah, two minutes left. Well, both sides, no specials, one special, two special, three special, four. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe uh, Kaisa might have a little bit of an advantage because they do have their uh, Zuka ready, but they have to really be a safe. Ooh, Akame going to get taken out as I believe the one in mid is going to have to fall back a little bit. Ooh, Ooh give me, give me. You find one here on the Atlas, Ooh. and that's going to take him down. But I believe Atlas does have cooler, so they are going to come back with their special there. Yeah, and we do see Raze on that pencil, seeing whether they can get a pick on Bubbles right there. Not able to get it right there. We do see a Zuka charge from Azu right there. Are they going to pop it and see if they can get a push off of it? And they are going to pop it. Oh, gets an indirect, gets one pick on the pencil. That is huge pick right there for Kaisa. Yeah, that is going to be a lot of advantage there Hold for Kaisa, but at the same time, Kakyoko nearly getting taken down by Gimme, but is going to be able to be backed up by their team. That's going to work well in their favor. Kame throwing out the strikes, trying to get something here. Ooh. They are going to be able to find one. I believe that might have been a bomb, actually, as Kakyoka and Atlas apparently kind of pushed back into mid. One going to go down for Kakyoka, just walking right into that blaster. Yeah, we see 49er does have that zip cross ready. Are they going to pop it? Oh, and they're no. going to get taken out by Ivy right there. Atlas holding down mid right now. They are going to get taken down by Gimme. Ivy does have that Zook at the ready, ready to just beam down anybody that could, just walks into their path. But uh, no, they're going to get taken out as a Kame. Does have the Zook, does have the strikes here, along with the cooler. This could potentially be huge for them. They're going to throw the ball into mid as the Zookas oh. do come out. 49er is going to be able to get away safely. But Atlas is in a really bad spot at the moment. Yeah, we do see Azu right there on that snipe. Akami does have strikes ready to go if they need it. Ivy pushing in with that carbon. Are they going to be able to get close enough? Somehow they're very close, but they are going to get taken out eventually. Strikes are ready from Akame. They are going to pop them. That is two down on the side of Pinpoint as well, and it looks like we are Ooh, going into overtime. 49er just using that just using that strike to really hold it down with Ooh. that zip, but they are going to be able to get all of them just shutting down that pull, uh, that push from Kaisa. That could, that's going to be game at that point. They don't have a ball to come back with. Yeah, and that is, confirms that we are going to at least a game four. Let's go. No, no three O's. Yeah. No three O's on this channel. Wasn't it last time when we commentated, it was constantly just game It was constantly three O's, yeah. yeah. It was constantly three O's, and we're just like, bleh. Yeah, that was short. That's <laughs> was hard like to say. Overall, Pinpoint definitely playing it a lot more strongly, I feel, in that game. Like, they really mm -hmm. got a strong push, and they just immediately I went I feel like it. they were a bit at a map disadvantage on Humpback as well. It's just, it's a weird map. Especially compared, to the com especially compared to the comp that Kaisa was running. Like, mm -hmm. their comp works perfectly for Humpback. So, okay. I feel like that's their main thing. Okay, I'm going to predict this right now. Ivy, wait, who was on? No, Kakioka with a range flasher. Yeah, pop off. Right. Oh, absolutely. Game. Tower at Rakeblot? Like, please. Oh, you are. Uh, that's. I literally played that today with range blaster. Nah. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> range it's Jover. It, yeah. It's Jover. Range Blaster is insane on this map. Blasters in general are good on tower control just oh, because yeah. like they can hit around the tower if somebody's trying to use it for cover, especially if it's like a charger or something that's literally, holding tower. Literally, like they were about to KO us. I mean they won the game anyways, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> got it. They did it twice, I got a double and then I got a triple. What? And there were two times in that game where I got a double with one indirect shot. That's insane actually. Like, we gotta push this now. <laughs> it's still off so well. It is what it is. I mean, even then, like, still doing that is, like, insane. Uh, but like, I think with fuck. that being said, I think we're actually going to go into...
our next game, Heck which yeah. is going to be, again, Tower Control on Inkblot. So, also, thoughts on Inkblot? I like it. Me too. I really like it, yeah. I definitely think it's, like, up there as, like, it, consistently, even on the modes that, like, aren't, like, amazing really to good. play, like, it's still it's a so fun, fun map. I would put this in my top ten. Yeah, honestly. I, I mean, out of 24, agree. it's really not that much, but, like... Ooh, Gimme trying to get a little aggressive there over onto that flank, but unfortunately does get taken out. Bubbles popping up very early cooler. Very like risky cooler. Seconds. Very risky cooler. If Tenfoy is able to push it up a little bit, that cooler is gone. The cooler is gone. They did pop uh, uh, Pinpoint uh, did pop their cooler, but unfortunately <laughs> they do get taken out pretty quickly. But they are gonna be respawning as the Zuka actually does come out. Over on the side of uh, Kaisa. Ooh, Ivy. Ooh, uh, Ivy. Spot. I mean, a risky spot on the enemy band. See what they can get. Oh, the pencil spots them, but they aren't going to be able to get the pick. 49er does have that. Does have the uh, Zipcaster, but is going to nearly get taken out by the burst bomb there from Ivy. But is going to be able to get back as Bubbles and Azu are currently holding up that bat. Bubbles going to get nice. taken down, and the tower does go back into pinpoint control. But they really have to hold it here. I will say. Yeah, and we do see uh, Cooler pop right there. That uh -oh. is Azuka, able to get one, trying to get a second, isn't able to get it. Gimme popping, wow. Rear Slider, really interesting it's position very to pop good. it, though. Very There's, good jump out. I was about to say, it was a good jump out, but I feel like that Rear Slider definitely could have been saved for like a better push, mm -hmm. because I yeah. feel like it was a, like popped a little bit weird. Ooh, Ivy, trying Ooh. to get the Almost got trying it. to get the Zuka, but not going to find anybody there. And we got that pencil, of course, painting for Cooler. As it does. Yeah. Ah, yes. This is a, this is a ah, yes. certified pencil moment. Certified <laughs> pencil moment. This is a certified pencil. Oh! This is a certified Zuka moment. And that is going <laughs> to be an unfortunate wipeout there from Pinpoint as Kakioka just... Kakioka, oh. I'm saying it, is like a absolute beast with this boss. It's like, insanity. Really holding and that's Kraken right there. Gimme goes down. Kraken still pops. See if Kakioka is going to be able to get anything out. Chasing one of them down to the void. Pencil has to <laughs> jump out. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get out. You're being chased into the back rooms. Uh. Kami does pipe strikes. Not able to get anyone with those. Ellis does have the Zuka, so they could potentially 49er. Trying to make it like the, the 49ers. Like the 49ers. Oh, Isle is going to be able to get two there. It's going to be a three. Uh, it's going to be a three down situation for both sides, as both teams are going to have the respawn coming in. But Kaisa has such a strong lead. Pinpoint is really on the back burner right now. Yeah, they are going to have to get a very strong push. They have not pushed at all this game, and we have two and a half minutes left. Oh, now they pushed. Yeah, I was about to say, they really had to try and get something going, even if it was just a little bit, to try and at least get past that first checkpoint. Because if they can get past the checkpoint, they can definitely do a lot there. 49er needs a clutch moment. Act like you're playing against the Cowboys. Unfortunately not. <laughs> I was about to say, I All my that, sports fans were like that one. <laughs> I was about to say, for, um, 49er definitely was in a bit of a weird spot to pop the zip. I feel like if they were in a bit of a better spot, they probably could have had something. But that zip, I think, was pop maybe a panic pop. Maybe, yeah. But they were able to hold out pretty well, and it looks like they're going to get back into a push, but it really doesn't look... Now it looks like they're starting to push, but Gimme does go down. It's going to be a bit of no an one interesting situation here, as uh, Ren Ooh, is going to be scary. holding it down pretty well. Uh -oh. just holding it. Oh! Gimme is able to dash out of it! But oh! is still going to be able to get the direct... What was that? What the heck was that? That was an ultra instinct moment. Like I'd be <laughs> so for real. That was insane though. Like Gimme I feel knew was gonna be camped. Yeah, but I'm like, oh he's done. Yeah, it's like GG. Like, we, we thought they were gonna get them and like, the, but immediately Kakir was like, nah boy. Nah boy. He's still <laughs> nah, boy. still went down, but Gimme won that fight in Ooh, our hearts. Gimme gonna be Ooh. able to get a pick on the bubbles, but no, they're actually gonna get taken down. Kakioka, I'm sorry, is absolutely <laughs> popping off this game. Absolutely just Disgusting range blast for gameplay. Disgusting in a good way. <laughs> need to preface that. I feel like, yeah, I feel like that's probably need to be prefaced. Oh, I'm sorry. If, uh, if, get that, the if that Zuka got that... Uh, I played zip, a few I days ago. I played a few days ago. I was on leader. We were playing on land, and I was just screwing out on a leader. I canceled this dude's Zipcaster three times. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh. Atlas trying to stop It's a 1v1. It's, a 1v1. it's pencil versus range. Kakioka doesn't have the range advantage here, but they do they have do get the Kraken. They do off. have the Kraken, and also they did have the uh, radius. They so, should have They could have saved down. that for GGs. 
They could have waited that for a GG Kraken, but it looks like they were able to push them out far enough. I mean, honestly, it's already starting to tick down. This is basically a GG Kraken. Gimme gonna get taken down. I think that might have been a bomb there. Kakioka is gonna clutch in this point. Gonna throw another splat bomb out as the strikes do come in. Pinpoint has to try and get on the tower right this point. Oh, they do get it. They are on. But they gotta get on. Come has gotta get on. Gimme, gimme jumped up. Gimme. I was trying to say, Gimme just got off the tower. Like they're trying to get aggressive instead of holding it. Like, I know at that point... I mean, I get... Really the thing is, Gimme doesn't have a lot of range to deal with anything on... I, feel, I, I understand that, but I feel like they probably could have at least tried to hold it. That way, somebody like Akame was able to get onto the tower to replace them. Yeah. To maybe allow Gimme, like, a little bit more advantage to try and push in there. Maybe. Then again, that's just me speculating, so... Yeah. <laughs> Spec that's just the commentator speculation brain. But yeah, overall, I feel like that was fairly even, but Kaisa really just had like a lot more control in that game, I feel. Yeah. So I just feel like that's the thing about it. So mm -hmm. overall, I feel like this is this is already shaping up to be an insane match, I will say. Oh yeah. We could potentially be going to a game five. We could see the only score scorers that we will ever see today. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say. Score scorers know. is on the map rotation. I don't think it yeah. is on the map list, and it is shown once in a game five. I was about to say I remember seeing it earlier, but that was like once, and I don't even remember when. What I pool that was? I didn't that even was see a it. While ago, I didn't even I see say, it. So I'm just like, oh. it was probably 10 a.m. <laughs> it's probably 10 a.m. I don't know actually. I think it was maybe a little bit after, but I don't remember. So you know, I hope we do see it. The 10 a.m. to 12:30, and then the 12:45 to three, and then the. Yeah, no, I felt so bad for one of my I felt so bad for one of my friends' teams, um, because they were like had to play at two, but they didn't get to play till like three or so. Yeah, I don't think we started playing until like twelve forty-five. See, we, were to play we luckily were able to get our stuff started, but we didn't get to do it until ten thirty because we were one of the first stream teams, like mm. on Splatoon's Journey, and yeah. then we got sent on the stage. So we went. Oh, you got stream twice. Oh yeah, we literally was at we were at Splatoon Journey, won that game, and then we went on to stream to play against um. I don't remember the team name, but they beat us. Yeah. So we went from stream to stream. Yep. And it looks like we are starting our game right now. We got spots on Barnacle. Oh boy. Now we can see it. Cool. Yep. Uh, same comps. Yeah, pretty much. If it same ain't broke, comps. don't fix it. Pretty much. Oh, absolutely. Ivy, I feel like might have a field day on this map, especially uh, oh, yeah. Atlas as well. Purely just because of the sight lines. Oh, Gimme going super aggro right there. It's got yeah. might get picked off and is going to. Kakioka is in a bit of a weird spot, same with Ivy, but at the same time, they're really going to try and get that control as I believe they do have the strike coming out pretty early. Kakioka could potentially find one. No, they're actually going to get a good jump back as Ivy in a little bit of a weird spot there. And we do see Akami trying to get something right there in that corner, not going to be able to. Ivy jumping in. Oh, is going to get picked off by Gimme right there. We do see 49er. Are they going to play it like they're playing the Cowboys? That is the question today. Gimme trying to get a little bit aggressive there with that reef slider, but unfortunately is going to get taken down right as they get in. But at the same time, Pinpoint really has a bit of a chokehold right now on onto Kaisa. Kaisa is just really struggling to try and get in. Zip coming in. Oh, uh, zip through the wall. Zip through the wall. Ah, yes, zip physics. Ah, yes, zip physics. <laughs> oh, Takiyasuko yeah. was just holding that down and like, yeah, I'm ready for that. Down. Oh, does get picked though. The Petzl is holding their own a bit. I was about to say, and not only that, but they're coming back with uh, Cooler, so they immediately were able to get back But are they going to be able to cap zone? That's the question. I don't know, because no, they're gonna hold just it. lost two, and they're going to be able to hold this down. Pinpoint already ticking it down very incredibly quickly. Kaisa has to try and find something, but they're so pushed back. They're incredibly pushed 49ers back. 49ers charging under there. Is able to get Kakioka right there? Trying to get Ivy as well. It's going to get it. It's going to get bubbled all on this knot, but we got a game five. We got a game five! We got a game five! We got a game five! <laughs> Woo! Game five! Alrighty, I will say that was very well played from Pinpoint there. Like, they really had a lot of advantage and just went with it. Oh, yeah, definitely. They are just, honestly, they just locked in. They locked in. They locked in, like, for real. Yeah, they definitely locked in. And so, like, overall, just very well very late. Again, this is how my commentary usually goes. I do fine and then yep. stutter. Fair enough. That's kind of just how it goes. <laughs> Pretty much. But yeah, overall, I feel like the thing with Pinpoint is that, like, once they can really find some sort of snowball, like, they can absolutely go for it. But, like, if they really start getting shut down, especially with, like... It's hard like, to get back into it. It's hard to get back into it, I think, purely because of the way they play. They don't really have specials like Zuka or anything to really try and open up something. Yeah, so they don't have any Zukas or Crabs or Chets, nothing. Mm -hmm. And, like, the only thing they really have is the Octobrush, which has Zip. But if the enemy team really knows how to play against it, good luck. 
Dude, you're, you're not really going to yep. be able to engage. Exactly. But hey, for the first time in a while, we see Scorch. Scorch. We got Scorch. Let's hear it up for Scorch. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, we can uh, probably see on cam uh, for the people watching, but we got a bit of a crowd here for this one. Yeah, we do. A lot of people <laughs> out there walk, looking around, around the table, seeing what is going to go down. I was about to say, it is a very, very close game, and I feel like that's the good thing. I kind of expected it to be a close game mm -hmm. with the seeds that they are currently at. Yeah. So either one of these teams, I feel like, is probably going to make top 32. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Especially because, well, if one of them does go down to Redemption Bracket, I feel like they could have a pretty decent chance of oh, doing yeah. it. Depending on the team that they go against, like, probably Orca Balistra. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, teams like that are going to be very close. Yeah. As I say that, we're going to go ahead and get into our very last game, which is going to be game five for this round of Swiss. First time seeing Scorch Scorch today. I know. And, of course, same comps. Same comps. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I feel like Gimme, Gimme already getting a cross. Oh my. I'm sorry, Gimme just gave me flashbacks of butts. <laughs> of what? Butts. Oh, yeah. Your flashbacks. Uh oh. Bad flashbacks. Bad flashbacks. I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. Oh, Reem Slider going in. Not Reem able Slider to get it. Oh, Gimme! Gimme actually just get out. I am surprised. They got out of that. Oh, Pencil goes down. That is two down on the side of Pinpoint. That's three down. It's only Akame. Akame has to get back here as 49ers did have they still have their zip so they could potentially find something here but they're gonna get no they're not gonna gimme. get checkpoint they're actually gonna get taken down by gimme insane fall off from gimme right there did you see 49er with that zip caster ready hasn't zipped once i was about to say i think they might have popped it a little is that a zipless zip caster that is a zipless zip caster yeah i think they i think they popped it a little too early Maybe. i think they tried to go for the pedestal but just missed it Oh, I thought that was going to get someone there. I did too, because that was a very close, but they definitely uh, they definitely knew what was going on. Kakioka in a very good position. They could potentially get... No, Gimme's going to be able to get the pick there. And the thing Reef is... Slider. That's no, it! He's going to be able to get Gimme! That's a triple there. Could potentially get Another one, one for Gimme! Gimme's going to be able to get a quad. What? Oh, my gosh. That just lined up perfectly for Gimme. And Pinpoint takes the lead off of that. Insane. 49er does have that Zipcaster ready as well. They're going to get all the way to 42. One down on each side. Check and they the get up. another one down. And then the oh, no, 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 they, they can't do it. it. They got it right as the Kraken was popped. They lost the Kraken because of it. What is giving them trouble down there? I don't know what is. I don't know. I'm just trying to see why they didn't like push up that far. They're being really, uh, who, Pinpoint? Yeah. They, got, I felt taken, like they, they got taken out as they were pushing up, but I feel okay. like since they're all going to start respawning, they didn't want to play it too, like, aggressive, so they were just probably trying to push back. Ren, you gotta go. playing that, in su playing that um, pencil in such a good spot right now. Uh, I want to oh. see just Azuka just shot in the air and just drop on someone. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Oh, another Kraken cancel. 49er getting really aggressive, not going to be able to find a pick, but is going to take it into a 3v3 situation. Ivy could potentially find something here. No, barely avoiding the strikes, as they are just in a really bad position. They lived that, too, which is insane. Do you see 49er right there trying to get a pick? Is able to get Azu right there? Is going to get Ivy as well somehow? I don't know who got Ivy. Someone got Ivy. Gimme. Okay. Gimme got I Oh, Gimme getting onto the grades. Getting oh, onto the Gimme getting right behind! Gimme getting behind! Gimme getting behind! Gimme getting behind! Gimme no, oh, they're not going to get one. They do get one with the crush of the re-slider. Probably peeking my mic so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> hey, the pe the mic peeking is worth it because of the That's the hype. It is worth That's it. where the hype is at. <laughs> the mic peeks is where the hype is at. Then again, we're just a very hype commentator duo, so exactly. that's the thing. <laughs> we like that fun out here. Like, oh, oh, what a that was snipe. a Zuka snipe. And that's a wipeout. This could potentially but it is pretty far out. Like, they're not going to be able to push it that far this before they get back. They did see Gimme drop right there. They do see him, but are they going to try and take him out is the key, that is is question. The key question. Takiyoko right there. Does have Kraken ready. I don't think they're, they're, they're not doing anything about Gimme. Gimme's still alive. Gimme's really still alive? Yes, Gimme's still oh, alive. Oh, there's a Reef Slider. Oh, but the Kraken. No way. What, what was that? What was that like? I thought they had some invincibility at least. Oh, almost got Kakioka with that zip as well. Honestly, if they they might just be able to like keep it in there. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna reset eventually, but they I don't have to grab. Feel, I definitely feel Gimme. like they probably should have tried to. Can't, <laughs> can't, can't put that. Give me, you can't do that. You gotta, you gotta give him a chance at least. 
Kame going to be popping those strikes. Not yeah. really going to be able to find many, unfortunately. Oh, as and Chibi goes down as well. As do go down for pinpoint, Kaisa could potentially find a little bit of a push here, but no, they're right. actually going to get taken down by Ren with the pencil. Yeah, Medusa Gimme again trying to push bowls right there. Ooh, Sharking, like, goodness. in that corner. Oh, no but Ivy saw Ivy, Ivy, Ivy saw that. And Ivy does go down to the pencil as well. There's only 40 seconds left in this game. There's so little time for Kaisa to really do something. They have to try and find something, but with the way that they've been playing, it Jump. is insanely difficult. Gimme all the Kaka way in the back. Yep, Kakioka is going to be popping the Kraken. Gimme is going to be on the flank. 49er. 49er. Going to be able to avoid it. Kakioka, good position to go down here unless they get the jump out. I'm not really sure. Gimme is on a good flank here. They're good position by one. They're uh, going to be able to get one. But they're going to get taken out by the blast. Oh, there's three down. Ren is currently the last alive. Kaisa, could potentially find something here. Atlas, Ka Atlas, Kakioka, Ivy. Ivy's pushing up. Good position. <laughs> That's two ready. Gimme's Gimme not going to go down. Gimme is still alive. The good position by some. Good they're gonna get one! Oh. They're gonna get two, but they're gonna get taken down by Atlas! Look at the Azu grabbed Rainmaker with Cooler! Oh, this I is mean, so not Cooler. Tense. Atlas. Azu grabbed Rainmaker with Zuko ready so they can't pop it. That's such a that's such a bad spot. They could potentially find something here. A comment. Oh. Gonna get taken down. Kaisa. They don't realize that Gimme's on the flank. Gimme is on the flank. They have the restarter ready. They're oh. gonna pop it. Are they gonna be able to pop oh. it? No, they're gonna they be able to pop it. I think that's the pick. How much time do they have on the Rainmaker? That's the question. Three down. Three, three to go down. Uh. They don't have much time on the Rainmaker. Twenty seconds. Oh, oh my God. God. He's taking down. They're still on oh. the <laughs> No, they're gonna go down. And that's going to be game four. Pinpoint. What? Wow. What was that? That was insane. What was that? This dude, my voice is dead. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> this weekend is just gonna screw us over. Our voice is gonna be gone by Sunday. I know. I mean, my voice is already almost Mine is gone. starting to leave. <laughs> it's, it's like, it has got a foot out the door. I'm sorry, Kaisa, like, I was so scared because the Rainmaker time was ticking and ticking and ticking, and by the end of it, they only had like 20 seconds. What <laughs> was that? There was, was just so much in that last, like, 30 seconds. I know. I'm just like, what? I'm just like, I don't know. I was going to say, Torchic, do you want to give your thoughts real quick? <laughs> we got we to we ask you, at least. Thank you. Thank you, Torchic. Thank you, Torchic. We got to ask it at least. Exactly. Right. Yeah, oh, my goodness. I definitely I, I definitely knew that one was going to be, high, like, a very, oh, yeah, like, too. insane game. But I did not expect it no. to be like that at all. What? That that is a game five right there. <laughs> that was indeed a game five. Like, pinpoint, I was really not sure how they were going to do. And then they just did that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Gimme. Yeah, gimme. <laughs> yeah. The, I'm, the quad. I'm sorry. Literally getting getting one, somehow not getting taken out by Ivy, then immediately popping the reef slider to get two, and then getting the last, I think it was a comment. I just realized I'm going to get a DM from my captain and be like, see, Dapples works. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'm expecting that. Except for, unless if you're gimme, then it works. You're just sitting here, you're just sitting here like, no, it doesn't. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. It, this this only means works nothing. This only works if you're a top player. Oh, my Lord. But, yeah, that was overall very well played. But I think after this one, we only have one more game. Because yeah. it's only, like, three in the pools. And yeah, I think we're But, yeah, I think with that, I think we might need a quick break. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. We got to take some time. I was about to say, we got to let our voices recover, <laughs> but um, overall, I definitely think both teams played really well, but... So apparently we just got word. That was the third pool, uh, third seed beating the first seed wow. in the pool. That's insane. That's a one seed going down. That's <laughs> insane. <laughs> That's insane. They, they could potentially go into redemption mm -hmm. because of that loss. Yeah. That is insane because they're also no, seeded higher I think in you need to be... I think you need to go three out to get yeah. top 32. You do. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But so yeah, that I means Kaisa goes into redemption based Kaisa, off rep. That's insane, Kaisa. The first in the group going to redemption over pinpoint. That's insane, actually. What? Because, like, I did not expect that. I expected Kaisa to go through. Yeah. Not pinpoint. I, I feel like we all have our expectations. I mean, it's supposed to be anything could happen. Yeah, fair, fair enough. Yeah. I was about to say, this game is, like, this so... This game is insane. It's <laughs> you can't predict it, no matter what. I know. Well, I think with that... We, yep. need it. we need a second before I we come think back. We, need it. we gotta get ready, but I think with that, we'll go ahead and send it to a very quick break. But when we come back, we'll have our very last match for this pool. But yeah, stick, to stick around.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this last game of pools for uh, Riptide 2024. Um, I'm Jay King, and I'm joined again by Drew Mar, and uh, we got a very interesting game here. We got Argyos Pizza versus um, Which one is the ten, ten, ten missiles, missiles in, in qu question. The ten missiles in question. Which, uh, personally, I love that team name. <laughs> that is a great. <laughs> there are so many great team names here today. I know, but uh, let me go ahead and find where they are. Oh, there's they Stan are. Miku. <laughs> the Stan Miku. Yep. The ten, ten missiles in question. So we don't know a lot about. Ten of middles in question. We know that they're a decently like C high seed team, but I feel like the problem is just figuring out like because there's n not really a lot of info. We, we only know of. we only know two things. Dinsfire plays head at ballpoint and heavy, and then this way is Flingza, yeah. and um, that's it. Yeah, we pretty much. Don't, that's all we, we know. But we know more about Argios Pizza. <laughs> yes, thank you. So, Argus Pizza, they formed, um, they were all originally Baskin Robbins Esports, but I actually, which I actually remember. Oh, Baskin Robbins Esports, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they're not affiliated with uh, Baskin Robbins. Just yep, yep. we need there. to make sure, we make sure we about that. Sure they're about. not. Um, but I think, okay, I'm sorry, one of the funniest things here is Sim. V shot, V shot, V shot is their weapon. That's what's listed. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, this team has um, some notable results, such as uh, bronze podium in uh, FTIU 49 and bronze fourth in FTIU uh, 57. And all four of them are currently free agents. So if anybody is looking for uh, some players, you could potentially find them here. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of looking around at the teams because I feel like this is going to be interesting because, again, we don't know much yeah. about Ten of Missiles. Um, yeah, and what is it that it said? Uh, this way is actually uh, uh, Dim's dad. Yeah, so that's, yeah, we got that's, a that's cool, actually. father-child duo. <laughs> that's cool, actually, though. Like, that is really cool. You don't really see a lot of, like, parents, like. Actually fully, like, involved like yeah. this. Like, you do see him involved, but not like this. So, yeah. like, I just think that's the interesting part. I mean, of course, there's, like, Pavlon and Falco, who just recently had kids from the last year. Let's go. Yeah. But, <laughs> maybe Pop Gun Jr. Pop Gun Jr. PJ <laughs> and Baby Plumber. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, we got... We got, we got I actually saw pop. them, like, this morning when I went out to breakfast. Oh, really? Yeah, they went to the Pancake House. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. I, I should have nice. got, got breakfast this morning. I just yeah. I, was, I was too excited. You woke, I, I like, woke up at like <laughs> seven. I will say, waking up at nine forty for a class versus waking up at seven ten for here is so different. <laughs> it is ridiculous. Here's, here's, here's the thing. It's something you want to do versus something you yes, have to that's do. What, yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. But anyways, getting back onto the topic here, yes. I definitely think this match is gonna be interesting because it's Clam Blitz Museum. I don't know how to feel about Museum. I like the map. I times, really like it. I was about to say, I um, love it at times, but sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to play. I don't want to yeah. deal with this. Honestly, whenever I play Museum, I most of the time I'm going to Capitator, I'm immediately going right. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. There has been times where I've gotten quads like that. Interesting. Very rarely, but it can happen. Nah, but I see. Yeah, we got, honestly, a pretty good map list. Don't know why Tower Undertow is there, but... That's the only... That's I the didn't only make the map list, so <laughs> don't blame me. That's the only outlier here. No, Rainmaker Ramen is also an outlier. Yeah, it's it's okay. Nah, should have been zoned. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like th I feel like this. Oh, I didn't notice it, but Lindolin. I hope we get to see this. S Blast ninety one. Ooh, S Blast. Because I we have I don't think we've seen S Blast at all. I think there's been yet. a little bit, but it's say. not like a lot. I think I faced one mm -hmm. when I was playing range. I like think one of my favorites. One of my here. games. Mm -hmm. I but think one of my favorites here is Kip Kazoo, Inkline Tri Stringer, Flings the Roller, and Zap. If we're getting spicy, <laughs> if we're getting spicy. <laughs> so I actually hope to see this because we I, we've seen a little bit of well string. I haven't seen a single wiper. I think. Oh, uh, yeah, so it I looks think, like we uh, are restarting. Could, yeah, we're gonna be. We restarting, got a I dead controller. Womp 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 Play it out. Play it out. Play it out. Womp Play it out. Your controller is dead. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Oh, oh. I see the stringer. Stringer. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Uh, my teammate played Stringer today. Oh, yeah. ah. There goes the mic. I we lost got... the mic. Oh, wait, are we restarting? I'm confuzzled. Wait, are we? Uh, I guess not. I, I guess, guess we're not. going. I think we're okay. Wait, uh, we got a we got a Sorella tent. Why? We got a Sorella tent. And we've seen tent quite a bit. We have seen like, tent a bit, but we haven't seen it yet. I'm like, surprised to see it. I was about to say, I know my, I know my team, we hate fighting. We hate fighting. I have a friend so who mains tent. Like uh, it is like almost a one trick. I used to team. I, I was on a team with a uh, with a tent player and um, much love to him. So honestly, I was about to say I feel like 
RDS Pizza, even though yeah. they are seated much lower, I definitely feel like they're going to have a pretty strong advantage mm -hmm. on this game, especially with the way that they're playing. Tedemus Missile's really trying to find something here, but they're, I feel like they're like struggling a little bit with like trying to just get some pushes in, whereas Argyo is really just trying to get aggressive. Yeah, definitely, but Argyo was just two down right there, so it did give Tenor Missiles a, a bit of time to be able to uh, get some claims going and try to mount a push. You know, we see Kit Kazoo does have the stringer. They do have a little bit to go with right now. Argus Pizza, good potential to find something. Linda, gonna try and find a bit of a pick here, but not gonna be able to find it at this moment as those missiles do come out <laughs> from the Flingsa, as the expected missiles. by the name. The missiles from the missiles in question. <laughs> Ooh, we do see Micro getting really aggressive here. Ooh. Good potential to find one. Is he, is I believe well we do with that football. I was about to say, this could potentially be a bit of a pusher for um, Tenet Missiles, but I'm not really sure. Micro going a little bit aggressive here over on the left side. They're Everybody not going to take him out. They're just going to let him get through. They're are just, they going to they they get another? They could potentially find another. No, they but they go down. They do get traded out. Does, does Sim just... Oh, does, that was unfortunate. I swear Sim just got a pick from the bottom of Spinner while someone was at the top of Spinner without even naming up. That's actually insane. Can I stop in the mic at least? <laughs> All right, so Arceus Pizza definitely could do a lot here considering they have two power clams, but they really have to be careful here. Kip Kazoo providing a lot of good cover fire. Micro kind of holding over onto the right side. Um, if we're going to Argyo with the Zuka, could potentially find one. I don't really know what they're going to be able to find. Linda holding down a little bit with that blaster. Yeah. We do see the chumps coming out, so this could potentially find a little bit of an opening. And the Zuka. They have to be careful. Micro is getting really aggressive onto Ooh. the clam, onto the uh, power clam for the tri slasher, and they are going to get taken down here. And we do see a range blaster uh, cracking from Lind Linda right now, seeing what they can do, and it looks like Argyo's Pizza is going to get the first push. Argyo's Pizza getting Oh, when they get the oh, pull they in. Get the jump in. They and they get two. They get two right as the jump in. They're not going to be able to stop that. Is that one of them still behind? I don't know. No, no, they're not. I thought they were. I thought there was still one back there. Yeah, no, they're all kind of respawning right now, so they're all in uh, one area. <clears throat> that is it. That is ten. That's Zuka. Where? Oh, symbols oh, getting wow. so aggressive there, getting a good pick over onto the head it, as they could potentially find one, but I'm not fully Just sure. Just controlled the RNG perfectly. We do see this way getting taken down. Um, the tenor uh, tenor unfortunately, going to be put into a bad position. Ooh, that's a, that's a cooler really offline. That's a cooler offline. Ooh, that's definitely that could definitely be deadly there for uh, ten missiles because mm. they don't have a cooler to really go off of. They do have the Zuka ready right there. Uh, cooler is popped from Dins, right? Yeah, and seeing what they can it. do, not going to be able to Ooh. get anything, and they are going to go down. Ten missiles in question, trying to mount a push that is a Zuka as well. I feel like the thing we're noticing. Is that Argyos like really can make like a lot of aggressive plays, but Tenet Missiles is just very hesitant, I feel like. They, they're yeah. really struggling to try and find those openings. Yeah, I feel like they have a much slower comp. Oh, that was an unfortunate game. Yeah. The Tenet Missiles trying to get popped, but unfortunately they're gonna get taken down. I think the they're playing a lot slower because I, I it's a Flingza and Tent duo, it's gonna be a very it's gonna be a lot slower. I understand that, but I feel like Flingza can be played decently aggressive, especially like if it with needs the to, yeah, with, I the can. with the horizontal flick, so I feel like they can definitely try and at least get it into some decent positions to like paint a lot more. Linda, gonna pop the crack and cook the find more room. here, but I'm not really sure. Argue Symbols has four, it's not grabbing them, it's not putting them in. Well, Symbols. I think they were trying to shark. Symbols not I mean, They could have just put him in at least. Kip, Kip Ooh, barely getting it right. Ooh, the getting two more. To go up, but Dins does have the uh, cooler there. Yeah. They are going to be able to stop this push. Argios does have a very good lead, but Tenet Missiles is really struggling right now. Yeah, they got to get a push, and they got to go quickly. They only have 20 seconds left in this game. No football as well. They do have a pity, Ooh, though, Kip back Kazoo, there. what with those shots with a stringer. Micro is going to go down, but is able to get one. That's two down for Tenet Missiles. The question, that's three down as well. It's only the head it, and Myth is going to try to see what they can do. Trying to get a pick on this. Is able to get one. Is able to get a second, but they are going to go down, and Tenet Missiles, in question, is in overtime. <coughs> Good to potentially be good for Ten Missiles here. But at the same time, Argyos does have a lot of map control. Linda is currently on this flank, so that's really deadly if they don't know how to get this out. They don't even notice Linda there. They can just get uh, down. That is Linda just it's spinning Linda. on. Linda, come on. That was disrespectful. <laughs> that was disrespectful. <laughs> a little unfortunate there, but... Is that a giant Kirby plush? I think it is, yeah. Oh, that's adorable. Oh, yeah. E e EP. 
<laughs> EP. What's, I mean, the, I, what's the one in the back? What's the, what's the orange? The ball? orange? Um, I don't know, actually. I, I can't really tell. We might have to look I think later. I saw it. I think it's like, um... I think it's like a, I don't know what it actually is. Like I guess I think I saw it earlier, but I don't know what it is on the top of my it's, head. It's something. It's something. I know, it's a plush. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it is a plush. And then I think at the back we can, we can actually see a uh, squid. Squid, squid hat. hat. Squid I, hat. I, think, I think a squid hat, maybe. It might. Can I look from out here? No. <laughs> JPEG's in the way. <laughs> <laughs> JPEG, how dare you? JPEG, JPEG, JPEG right. there you are. J there's JPEG. <laughs> JPEG, much love to JPEG. We running, love JPEG. Running a lot of the, uh, running a lot of like lowing stuff and like yeah. really providing a good space for all of the Splatoon stuff. So much love to him. Love but. it. Uh, so game two, TC Undertow. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Why? I think I asked Toasty who made the map, who made the map list. It wasn't him. I don't know who made it, but I want to have a talking to. <laughs> Uh, you're just like I want to have some I wanna words. See, I want to see the manager. <laughs> <laughs> Who runs this establishment? Who runs this stand? <laughs> Who runs this establishment? Who runs this establishment? I don't know, but I really am curious to see what we're gonna see. I feel like tenant missiles they really can like do something here, mm -hmm. but I feel like the problem is they're just like not playing as aggressive as I think they should. Yeah, as I think they could. They are playing slow, but the thing is, tower is a slow mode. See, in this one, it can actually work. Like, they can definitely, like, go slower here, but I feel like, especially for something like Clean Blitz or Rainmaker, yeah. that's something you cannot I feel like slowly. you need a healthy balance of fast aggression and slow aggression. Oh, absolutely. Like, that's kind of the way you need to play it. And but defense. with the way that they're playing it, I feel like it's not really finding that good balance. So I feel like, yeah. compared to Argios, where, Argios, where they're, in my opinion, they're just going full on aggressive. Yeah. I love playing like that. <laughs> I mean, it's it is pretty fun. It is so fun. Yeah, Why else do you think my mains are my mains? <laughs> As I say that, we're going to go ahead and get into this next game, which I definitely think could be pretty interesting. I don't know if we're going to see potentially a comp change up. As we do uh, see. No, um, not on the No, we're no. not seeing a tent. We're not oh, having a wait. tent. We, we a got tent? a bucket. We got a bucket now. We got a bucket, and we, this don't is actually, we don't have a tent either. That makes the comp way quicker. Just one change like that. We still do have missiles, though. The Tenet Missiles in question are still here. The Tenet Missiles are indeed here. Ooh, Symbols is getting insanely aggressive right off the rip, but it's going to get taken down. Kip Kazoo going to be kind of holding over on the snipe area. Micro trying to find one. This is going to get taken down as the strikes do come in from Izzy there. Izzy yeah. could potentially take control of this left side. And I'd oh, Ooh, their bomb wow. is going to get Symbols. What a great pick by Izzy right there. Trying to go for Myth as well. And they are going to trade in the back there. The Tenet Missiles in question are popped. Tenet Missiles in question are indeed popped. Linda is... It, Linda, in my opinion, has been playing for, like the Blaster insanely well. They've really been putting themselves in a lot of good positions to like get a lot of good, like... Especially, like, holding up certain uh, spots, like, drop and everything. Like, they're really doing a lot there. Symbols does pop the Zuka. Are they going to yeah. be able to get a pick on the Dins? No, they're not, yeah. but they're still holding this tower so strong at the moment. Yeah, they do have a cooler pop as well, so they can get it if they need to. Uh, Death Rider does drop into the uninkable uh, ramp right there. Myth right there does have cooler charge. Micro seeing what they can do with that slosher. Is able to get one slosh, but not able to get another. But oh! is able to get the pick on Linda from behind. Micro just going to be uh, getting a little bit of a uh, slosher flick there. Going to be able to get the pick. Myth is going to get a little caught out here over onto the left side. Micro could potentially find a pick there, but no, they're probably going to just kind of group up. Linda going to try and get a little bit aggressive on the, sp on the spine here, but Dins. Kind of falling back, not trying to get too aggressive onto the tower right now. They could potentially find something, especially considering they have two strikes. Oh, the right cooler. Here. Oh, the cooler might get broken. Oh, no. Oh, wait. They save it a bit. Um, maybe not. We'll see. This could potentially be something Linda. this way. And Izzy both going to be able to get takedown mid. Linda going to be on tower. And the same cooler kid, is same gone. Same with Kikazoo. Symbols is going to be pushing in a little bit, but unfortunately the cooler is gone. Symbols popping the Zuka. They could potentially buy the pick on the oh. Izzy. I was scared of that. I don't think it was angled right, but that was very close. We do see Lindo do does have the Kraken, and they pop it. Kraken's gonna go in. Oh, and they get this from it. Dins. They get this. Strikes coming in. GG strikes, as we like to say, but not, not GG's get. yet. Oh, great. Fizzy Ooh. pick from Myth right there. Myth definitely trying to get Micro. Well. Trying to get Micro. Micro in a 2v1, is able to get them. 
I was about to say, we're already starting. Ten missiles is really starting to get into a pretty rough spot at the moment. Yeah, and the Zuka right there. Pop the no, two go do? down. Oh. I don't know what that was from, but that but might have been a bomb. As two do go down, but at the same time, they do have the cooler, so they're going to be able to get back pretty quickly here. Yeah, we do see Kip with the Stringer. Stringer is such an interesting pick. You don't see Stringer backlines often. Honestly, because Stringers aren't really that good, sadly. I think it's one of those things, like, we don't see them often because they're not that good, but I'm sorry, a good Stringer player can tear Oh, them. my God. Linda does have that crack, and could potentially find a pick on the Dins. No, they don't, really, they don't know where Dins is. Could potentially get taken down the raw. get out of the Kraken. Oh, is he does go down after popping strike right there. Kip Kazoo just putting so much chip damage around. Kip Kazoo really trying to do something, but unfortunately he does get taken down there. The strikes do come out. Not really going to be able Oh, it is actually going to get myth, as they could potentially oh, find something here. Three going down on the side of Argios. And this could potentially be a good push for Tenon Missiles, but they really had to be careful here. The thing is, are they going to be able to get through the, at least this first checkpoint? They are going to have to drop off. Myth on that tower right there. Are they going to be able to push it any further? They are able to get it past checkpoint one. Symbols with that shot right there, seeing if they can get a pick on Izzy. But Izzy is going to back up a little bit further back. This could potentially be good. Kip Kazoo is going to be caught in a really bad spot. They have to try Ooh, to get out. Great pick get taken out. by Symbols with that Zuka. Izzy gets hit with the Indirect. Seeing what Myth can do right here. Myth Trying to get a pick on this way. Oh, Myth nearly getting a pick, but unfortunately not going to get it. So they're going to have to jump out. Two going down on the side of Ten of Missiles. As RTOs is basically full on their comp right now. Ooh, Dins really has to get out or else they're going to get taken out by this blaster. Yeah, 45 seconds left to go in this game. Uh, RGOs beats it with a resounding lead all the way to 13. And th they are two down. They are three down now. That is a wipeout. That's out. a wipeout from Ten of Missiles. This could potentially be a decent push here if they can play it safe. They do have the strikes to kind of stall it out, but they have to really be careful. They yeah. are able to get past the second checkpoint as well. Is he throwing strikes? I'm sorry. Is he just standing there menacingly? <laughs> He's just standing <laughs> there. Do it. Do it. I dare you. I menacingly. Strikes. Micro could potentially Micro. Find Micro. Could oh, potentially they is able to get one. one. They are finding myth. Is he Symbols versus Izzy. Shot versus D-Tech. Shot versus D-Tech. Right? Who's going to be able to get the pick here? Oh. Someone, does go down. There's a three Someone else gets caught in the front fire. Respawning, but they do have to be careful, especially considering they do have the strike. They do have the Zook at the moment. Symbols going to try and get Izzy. Oh, Izzy's, Izzy's going down. down. One is still on the tower. Micro Michael goal down. Again, but no, that's going to be game there Ooh. for the Argios, despite the push that they had. That was a very strong push towards the end. That was, I will say, Argios. Tenemus has definitely really found their groove at the end there, but they still are like kind of struggling to get that aggression, especially with the way Argios is playing. Like it's just really difficult for them. But yeah, definitely. I feel like this could definitely benefit them more. Splat zone tacklefish. Yeah. I feel like this. Could I feel like missiles here would be strong. Tent here would be very strong. Especially if they're running the double comp with um, Tenemus with not Tenemus um, strikes, they can easily use that to like. Chip because out the tent, the tent player was the. Oh wait, no, they had double I thought, strikes. I thought they had double I strikes. They had double strikes. Though. Oh, okay, I yeah. Think. I thought Argios was the one that had the uh, tent. If I remember correctly. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's been I a long know. day. <laughs> I saw a fly day. fire fly around here, and You're I want to like I want to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it go? I don't know. I tried to grab for it, and it, it's gone now. If I see it again, I'm actually going to just lose swat it. around. You're just like me. Yeah, where Let is me it? Get it? Let me kill it. Also, we didn't mention this earlier, but uh, Argios has said, if the other team lets us win, we'll give them a 50% off coupon for a cheese pizza, <laughs> which I find funny. But it seems like uh, they're gonna, hey, they're just already going to take Are you guys going to take that offer? Are you guys going to take that offer? You guys going to take that offer? Personally, <laughs> Hello? I wouldn't take that offer because I can't <laughs> eat pizza. But yeah, pretty much. All righty. Well, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into our very <laughs> last game here. I guess. This way has a gold missiles badge. Oh god. Yeah. I mean they're playing missiles, so I can guess it makes sense, oh. but took it took a little bit longer. S blast! Yo, we got the S blast popping off here. And off we got the tent back. Yeah, we got the tent, so this could potentially be a very interesting game. What did the S blast switch out for? Oh, range. Oh, yeah, wow. range. Oh That's yeah, Booyah probably is way better here than Kraken. So we do see uh, Tenemus is actually is going to be able to get a decent push, but Linda going to be on the flank there. Has to try and be careful. Izzy is going to be holding down this left side. So they just really have to watch, especially with the Stringer currently up on to uh, their ten. Yeah, we do see Myth did pop cooler there. Are they going to be able to get zoned back? And they will. 
Ooh, very well executed push here. Micro gonna be able to like, get one, but at the same time, they do have Izzy still alive. Izzy, oh, gonna be Izzy! Able to the Linda! Izzy, gonna be able to get another, I believe. They're still alive. They are just doing work right now. There is a Zuka ready, and it is pop one shot, two shot, three shot, no good. May not have been good, but at the same time, Izzy was really playing it well. They do have the strike, so that is going to get popped here. The Booyah yeah. is popped as well. Not going to get anyone from that, however. Yeah, it's a bit unfortunate that doesn't get anybody here, but... I There's so many painting specials I know. in this game. Ooh, Chum, what was whoa. that? Oh, and that's two! Zuko's going to be able to get one with the Zuka. They could potentially get a bit of a... Oh, what? Micro's still alive with the... Damn, Damn Micro! The frick? They were able to get them. What? I'm sorry? Uh... <laughs> Strikes are going to be coming in. They have to be careful. Izzy, you got to watch behind. Two you down. Watch for Linda. And Linda does go down. They do have the penalty. So Tenet Missiles could definitely like do something here, especially considering it is going to be a 2v4, uh, 2v3 situation. No! They're still getting aggressive. One's going to go down from Tenet Missiles. Yeah, we do see Myth trying to get a pick on this way. Did get one slosh, but didn't get anything else after that. They didn't push it. This is a very scary position. Oh, Izzy. All three of them are Izzy on the corner. Izzy in the corner. All they, three of them they, they, right they are spotted. Simple. Simple is in the corner. They have Zuka ready. They can't pop it at any time. And they're going to back up. Yeah, they're going to back up. I was going to say, probably not trying to take the risk here. So probably Fair just enough. trying to play a little bit safer. Mike, the Zuka now they're going for it. Out. It could potentially find one. No, one it's touch. not going to find anybody. The, sl the slosher on the side of Orgius is going to go down. They got the holders here. The, the ten of missiles in out. question are popped. I don't think they noticed. They, there's one on the flank. There's one on the yeah, flank. Yeah, there is one on the flank. One on the uh, flank. Do they notice? They noticed. Do they notice? They, they, they don't notice! They haven't noticed Simples. the flank, even though they ten of missiles them. Simple's going to be able to get behind, and that's going to create a very difficult situation there for ten of missiles. Yeah, we do see this right there, trying to see what they can do. Not able to do anything, but that is two down. That is another Linda. down. Linda does pop the Booyah ball. Micro backs up. Linda getting really aggressive here. They could potentially find a pick on the micro, but they have to be really careful. That is a Zuka Linda ready. Linda has such good control. Oh! Zuka's gonna come out and get Simples! Right as Simples pops a Zuka! Two going down on the side of Argeos! Ten of Missiles getting a little aggressive here, but they have to be careful because I don't think they had, um... I don't think they had Cooler on that. I don't think so either. Yeah, they didn't. They don't have it anymore. Oh, here come the Chumps. The Chumps. The, the guys! guys. <laughs> 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 Let's go. Same brain. Same brain. Same brain. Oh, we do see the strikes coming out, especially with the missiles. That's such a poor position for Linda. Linda does good uh, taken down from all the chip damage. Izzy is, he, is oh. gonna be looking around. See what he's up here. here. I don't know what's gonna happen. Symbols is watching that left side. As Myth does have the cooler ready. It's gonna get Ooh. popped. This could be very tense. That's this an is gonna, come in. He's gonna be able to get a pick on the Linda there. Kept popping the chumps. This the boys be. have been popped. The guys. The guys. The guys have been popped. The guys. My bad. Oh, if they hit that. Oh, so many chip. There's just so much chip damage going on. I know. Throughout this entire thing. Ooh, Izzy top Izzy strike. In a really bad spot. Linda oh, isn't Linda's able to get it. Not going to be able to get the pick. Izzy is still alive. Dins. Dins going to pop the going to pop the cooler. They could potentially find something. Myth has to be careful. Myth going to get taken down. We got a minute left. A very strong push here for Tenna. Argios has to try and hold it here. We got a minute left in this game. See what they can do. Whoa, Ten whoa, whoa. Whoa. Pop. They got whoa. on the flank. They have, they have one on the flank. Simples. Simples. Trying to get a pick on Dins. Is they able to get Dins down? It is 3v3 right now. Strikes are pop. Simples might try to go around. They are just striking in that corner. Uh, Kip with that stringer just trying to get back up. Linda with that s blast Got hit with an end. It's going to go down. By Micro with Azuka. All they need to do is hold it. They go to get down. It's a delayed wipe. They just need to hold this position. But they have to be careful because they do have. They the have Booyah 20 seconds left. They gotta hold it. S plus has to try and pop the Booyah. They're in a really bad position. They're gonna get lead. They got lead. They got lead. They have to try and pop the Booyah. They have to hold this now. Choosing not to throw it at the zone. This could potentially be the game for Tenet Missiles. Dins does get one. Does get they two. They got two. Two v two situation. As the as the. It's not enough bait. But no. The Tenet Missiles in question take a game. That was insane. Well played. That was well played. I am saying it now, Linda. I don't think, I think the Booyah Bomb was, like, that placement of it really I think it needed to be on zone. It needed, it did need to be on zone, because even if it, like, stopped the timer and, like, just put it into neutral, at least it, gives it would you give time. you a chance to try and get back in. But it the way that it was popped, they were able to predict it easily and just get it out of there. So yeah. I feel like that was something that really played down, um, into their mm -hmm. downside on that yeah. one.
So we're going to Rainmaker Ramen. Oh. This is going to be interesting. I've seen this a few times today. I have as well. I've yeah. seen ramen just pretty much all day. Dude, ramen's been played a lot. <laughs> I, I don't know how to feel about the map. It's okay. Raymaker, it's not really that good. But Raymaker, Clams and Zones is very good. I was about to say, Clams and Zones is actually pretty fun, I will say. Z Clam especially. I actually do have fun no, that For map. me, it's Zones. Absolutely. That's fair. Th that's my Decapitator map right there. <laughs> I, w I really want to see more Decap. Like, it's so fun, dude. I would have played it today, but I didn't. I was about to say, I've seen like quite a few people play it, but I haven't seen it too, too much. Yeah, you so. really aren't seeing that many of the new weapons. That, I mean, they're not really new. They came out like three months ago, but... I mean, they're still relatively new compared yeah. to other weapons in the game. True. So that's it's like, if you of... compare it to, like, Dynamo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's not Gold funny. Dynamo, because Gold Dynamo took forever to release. <laughs> Uh, where's my gold dynamo, says the community. Where's my gold dynamo? Here. As it's in the f the reveal trailer. I know. That, that's something I didn't add. That, that didn't make sense to me. Like, why would they have it in the reveal trailer, but, like, not really? Yeah, I don't understand that. Day? I don't get it. Overall, I will say, I feel like Tenor Missiles might struggle a little bit with Rainmaker, purely just because of their comp. They, I feel like... Micro <laughs> is doing good with that Tenna, but I feel like they really had to be careful about how they play it. Mm -hmm. As we say that, we're I going think in. We, uh, as best say, I think we just heard the ping, so I think it's time Let's for game this. number four. Who gets pop, RGS or Tenna missiles? RGS. That's my thought. Just because of the way that they've been playing, I really think fizzy suction, suction, yeah, yeah fizzy so double suction, curling. Um, uh, yeah, 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 easy. Curling, they're curling running double score. mine. Yeah. Yeah, they got it easy. Yeah, they're easily going to get it considering. Uh, dun, 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 and then Kip Kazoo is the odd one out with the sprinkler. Dun, 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 yeah, they're dun, easily going to get Yeah, they're going to get pop here. Micro could potentially do a lot here, but Linda does have that CRV again, so they're definitely going to be a lot, like, a lot more aggressive yep. on this one. That was the. How did those chumps get popped so quickly? Oh, I'm we do sure. see Micro with the pet. Getting really aggressive. They're gonna be able uh, to he's gonna jump out. Going to be able to get a good jump out. That was insanely well played. As the ten as the uh, the Rainmaker does get taken down. Yeah, I did notice Linda is back on that range blaster. Oh, they do go down to the pop. The ten of us in question has been popped on Kit. What? Oh, what uh, the heck? What, the what was that? I wonder if it was probably just spectator stuff. Maybe, probably. probably. Um, oh, Micro with the tag! Gonna be able to get a good pick there. Micro could potentially find one over on the symbol. They do have a bit of an interesting position. Gonna drop down and get the jump back as two go down on the side of ten missiles. Argios definitely has a little bit of an advantage here. Definitely, yeah. Oh, we do see Linda. Oh, Micro! gonna be able to get the pick on the, the Linda. one tap. Ooh, That's two down on the side of Argios Pizza. Are they gonna be able to push it? Doesn't look like it. They're gonna go down. I was about to say, Tenna Missile's really holding it down at this point. Micro, in my opinion, is playing insanely well. Oh my like, gosh. With the way that they've been going. This is an insane tent gameplay. I know. Argeos is most likely going to get the pop here. As two do yes. go down on the side of Tenna Missile, so it's definitely starting to be a little bit of a uh, disadvantage, disadvantageous The Tenna Missiles in Tenna question Missiles. have been popped. The I'm going to say it again. Oh, we do see the Kraken. Micro, uh, gotta be Micro! Micro! Oh! No, it's not it's right as Micro gets back in. It's the pop doesn't get them! Linda! Gets taken down and unfortunately finds no value with that. Ooh, Ooh almost got out. someone there. There really hasn't been that much movement of the Rainmaker this game. We're two minutes in and the furthest push is to 86. That's three down though, and it looks like this is going to change. Yeah, do you see the wipeout coming in as the shot is going to be respawning? Same with the Tenna. Shortly Are they going to be able to get pop again? Uh, they're most likely going to be able to get pop. Just grab it and push it. Yeah, that why guy not? Just push it, but watch out for Micro. As Micro is really watching at this point, Micro going to be able to get one. If Micro gets a pick. Be able to get two. Oh, that's a pick, pick on Dins. Zuka's going to be able to find one this way. Currently hiding onto the right side, so they have to be really careful here. The ton of missiles in question have been popped. Going to be able to stop them there. Symbols does get the pick. They could potentially find the Rainmaker here. Dins is going to have to play it very careful. They could potentially get the Rainmaker down. No, the Rainmaker's still alive. Wow. Still trying to push it. They got all the way to 22 with that. Uh, they got to jump out. Yeah, they are going to be able to jump uh, out. Grab cooler. Symbols be chased by this way right now. Uh, That's going to be a little bit of a weird spot for them. A very strong push to 22 by RGS Pizza. Will Tenor Missiles in question be able to get a push of their own like that? Micro does have that tent. That Zuka ready to go. The Tenor Missiles in question have been popped. I'm not really sure what exactly we're going to see here. 
Nothing from that Zuka. Ooh, we do see Linda getting very aggressive. Micro and Izzy are going to be able to take down Linda. They had to be careful as one is going to be going onto the flank there. They had to be careful of Kyokazu, mm -hmm. who does have Kyokazu and Sybil, who are going to be in a bit of an advantageous position, but at the same time, they do have the strikes coming out, so that's going to be a little bit rough. Micro. Good to oh, get a lot for the Sybils there. Wow. They had to try and pick up Raymaker. They had to pick up Raymaker. The Venomous of the Quadrant have been popped. They had to be careful. They are able to get the checkpoint right there. Our OI Micro, Micro pops Suzuka. Suzuka. is able, able to get one on one! Micro, could potentially just hold this for the team right now. Auto damage not going in Micro's favor. No, they could potentially get popped. Oh, though. they did get popped? Yeah, they did. Wow. All, I was about to say, Argeos is a little grouped up all into one spot, so they have to really be careful. Micro could potentially find something here. They do have the cooler. Ooh, Myth, I was scared that was going to fall yeah, off. Yeah, a little try bit. And go for a flank, but no, Micro is going to be able to predict that. Myth, still alive somehow. It's Raymaker is reset, and the, and the Kraken is going to be popped over for Linda. Yeah. Ten of in question have 40 seconds to get a push all the way to 21 if they want to win this game and stay alive. Is he? Kind of just watching down below. I believe the cra the CRB did fall, but is going to... Um, but does get taken down, and is currently responding. Simple. That's two, two down. Going down. Two going down on the side of Argeos. This could potentially be the push for Tenemesis, but they have to be so careful. They only have 20 seconds left. If they go down now, this is going to be insanely deadly for them. The chumps are popped. The Tenem Missiles are ready. Zuka is ready. The Tenem Missiles in question have been popped. Yep, the Tenem Missiles are going to come in. Going to really kind of just... Did you see Linda down there? He's going for it! Oh! They, no! They get they stopped right get at it. the end! They get stopped right at the end! That's potentially game! That is game. What Two was that? points. They almost had it though. That was. What? Wow. What? Wow. Well, RGS Pizza takes that three up, uh, three one. Yeah. I will say, despite that, Tenet missiles d played insanely well. There. Oh, we yeah. had Micro's tent. Insane. I was about to say Micro's tent was absolutely nuts. Like what? Heck some of the yeah. things, some of those picks I did not expect. I'm, I'm literally like, like, huh? Especially on the crates, I was just like, yeah, what? I'm like, wow. You just do that like that? I know. Uh, wow, we, we got, got the GGs. Yeah, we got the GGs. We got the, the fist, fist bumps. bumps all over. Heck yeah, we love to see it. I know. That's the that's the thing I will say about the scene is like it's so positive and like mm -hmm. it, it like we all we all exchange fish bump fist bump fish bumps. I mean fish well. bumps. <laughs> We all exchange fist bumps. We just we, we just go on about a day. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we see the teams kind of compliment each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, I'm just like saying Who something. Did that? Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. No, overall, that was insanely well played from yeah. both sides. RGO's definitely had a lot more returns of aggression, but I'm sorry. Micro in that uh, tent was insane. Insane, yeah. They have tent, and then they have ten ton missiles. So yeah. I just think it's goofy. I'm <laughs> sorry. I love how every single time they pop ten missiles, you're like, the ten missiles in question have, have been, been popped. popped. <laughs> I just love that. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to get your stuff going. I know, right? It's, it's just funny. It's just funny. I know. It, it's Maybe I'll let funny. them know that I was doing that. I was about to funny. say. You should definitely let them know. But yeah. overall, that was insanely well. Um, that was insanely well played from all the teams that we yeah. got to see today. So I feel like that's a thing. I hear some cheering um, back there, I think so. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's, that's just, that's how, just it, how it is. That's just how it is at Lance. It's a bit, mu <laughs> bit muffled, but... A bit muffled. You guys, we can, probably yeah. can't really hear it, but... Yeah. Well, no. I feel like that's a thing. Um, this was fun. Overall... RGS Pizza, I definitely think like they might have, they might be able to go far. I don't know how. Um, I don't know how. Why am I blanking on the team? We literally just commentated it. I am the ten of missiles and questions. Ten of missiles and yes. I don't know why I'm blanking. This is this is my. How do you thing. blank on that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is just me when I commentate. My brain's going a million. Yeah, miles a minute, so I, I like, get it. Yeah, that's, that's how it is. I really wonder how exactly Ten of Missiles of Question did on, on their sets. I mean, they played really well on this one, especially going um, Yeah, against, they um, did take a game. Especially going against, like, a team that had, like, former Baskin Robbins mm -hmm. uh, eSports members. Baskin Robbins were really good, actually. Song. Yeah. I still love that name. Yeah, <laughs> Baskin Robbins eSports is very funny. But, yeah, I yeah. think um, I think that is actually going to be our it does last say, game. It does say Wave E pulls round which three we were next, just, which, we, it, we were which that was just they, round three. So. I was about to say, I think they already kind of got uh, underway. Been updated. With I think, yeah, Wave F, I think, has started. A yeah, I, I was looking. I was looking, and I did see that it was getting started. So I think that is potentially yeah. what's going on right now. This but that. I think it? overall that might be done for us. I uh, think so. I think that is Wave E, and I think we might be bringing on more commentators. I don't know if the top. Well, of my I'm head not entirely next. sure. I yeah, would yeah. Lose, but I'm not. Fully, right I'm not fully sure. I don't know what exactly. I don't going remember on. what's going on. Production yeah. will help us. There's <laughs> a lot. Yeah, production will help. I was about to say after this, I'm a. I'm gonna get food.
I I'm going to do something. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I remember you saying you are just going to go back to the room. I might. Like, yeah, I might. Honestly. honestly <laughs> it's been a long day. We were joking before stream. It was like, oh, we're going to get on stream. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Riptide. <laughs> <laughs> I was yawning was before we got on. I'm like, this is not good. You're just like, this is not good. I need to, I need to get I need off. to stay awake. <laughs> this actually woke me up a bit more. So I was I'm about to say, it definitely woke me up, but I need yeah. to rest my voice. I am definitely. shot from today. Yeah. But, yeah, I think overall that is going to uh, most likely do it for us here. But, um, yeah, if you guys want to follow me, my uh, Twitter is in uh, the thing that you can see, Jake and Casts. Um, Andrew, where can they find you? Uh, right where it says right there, at Jamar underscore SPL. Nice. But yeah, that was definitely a very hype set, but um, I think we're just kind of waiting for production at yeah, this point. We're just kind of waiting for them. To they're <laughs> a bit yapping right now. A little bit, little bit yapping. A little bit of yapping. That's just, just the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, I'm very curious how the rest of... I was about to say, we, we got to let Torchic talk a little bit. <laughs> My son. My son. <laughs> My son. I was about to say, for everybody who is actually at Riptide right now, go go check out the vendors. Might be like oh, the vendors, like yeah. Might there was like one like this. Uh, it got someone bought it already. No. I didn't care that much because I already have mine. So yeah. That's fair. You're just like, this is mine now. This is mine. <laughs> I was looking around at like the vendors and everything, and I'm just like... I, I, that I, thing I, really I caught my eye, but it's cool stuff. It is. It is there is a lot of cool stuff. I remember, um, I think it's the I think it's Tori's... Um, Ven I think one of the vendors, Tori, B and G. Um, I, I heard a thing where the line was so long that some of the people like had to wait for like almost yeah. an hour. Like, yeah, what? I, I saw a huge line. I'm like, whoa! I had to too. I was just like, huh? Uh, uh yeah, I ain't waiting. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Tori. You like got that. great stuff, but I'm not waiting that long. Yeah, fair enough. You're just like, oh well, yep. there we go. All right, I think that's it. I think that is it. I'm just trying to give an alert to. Yep. Um, uh, production, but yeah. yeah. With that being said, feel free to follow us, uh, Jake and Katz and uh, Jamar under underscore, underscore SPL. But yeah, that's been it for us. So later, guys. Later.
That's how we're feeling right now. It, it's been a long day here at Splatoon 3 Riptide 2024. My name is Spicy. You can also call me Sleepy, I guess, today. That is... You can also call me Eepy. My name is Nito, by the way. <laughs> yes, it's been the day. It's been a long day. <laughs> As you can see by the thing in the bottom event uh, We'll figure this out eventually. There. Uh, yeah. It's a beautiful... In beautiful Sandusky, Ohio, it's currently 9.44 p.m. So, we thank you for choosing the better stream and not some uh, game show. I think they're playing Wheel of Fortune back there, so... <laughs> Wheel of that's Fortune? Yeah, that's about right there. Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> I think someone just asked for a 50-50 lifeline, whatever, that makes sense. We, but, what we do have right for you right now is an actual Splatoon set. We got Partial Eclipse versus... And, uh, correct me if I get it wrong. I bet someone will correct me, but it's Maka's Run 3. Maka's Run colon three <laughs> yeah we got two pickup teams kicking it off here for wave f now i won't lie to you we've been talking about this at this hour we're not thinking very much no so, i'm not and like i don't know much about these teams here but i'm well i'm i'm in for a surprise i'm all for it getting to see the players on the screen dom white spy for 1001 ataxi on agar silas i remember vividi Cerebellum, Fox, the hyperactive V3 from Partially Eclipse. So, I remember the cracking because I jumped over it at some point. So, I, I Yo, that's an insane sub to have. Like as a substitute player, I can't wait to see them come in for like. Why are you playing? Just throw the Kraken at the other team. What You don't have to play here. If you just throw the Kraken at, see how they're all in a row. If you just throw it at them, you win. I was gonna say, yeah, one charged move of that Kraken, and they're all in a line right there. It's all over for them. <laughs> But I do have some news, or not news, sorry, some info on Partial Eclipse. They do have a couple of D3, D4 players. They are seated 34th, so they could very easily make top 32 at, even if they're in the group right now, they can even go to Redemption, which you'll see more of tomorrow, but it's all going to start on Game 1. Splat Zones on Mahi Mahi Resort. Now, this is a map mode I've seen plenty, time, oh, plenty yeah. of times today, so oh, yeah. certainly not... I don't know. There's certainly a lot to talk about. Maybe a lot you've heard by now. Yeah, if there's going to be one thing that's going to wake us up, it's probably going to be Splatoon's Mahi. Just how chaotic some of those games can be with how small the map is, especially at the start of each game. Especially now, we got, we're got looking at Partial Eclipse. There's a lot of mid-div talent on that team. So that's definitely a lot of, of firepower there. It's going to be really translating there in Game 1. If Game 1 doesn't wake us up, we'll see what happens. Because looking at the rest of this set... Going into Rainmaker Manta, Clam Ram, and we go into TC Haggle or Zone Ship Shape. We're in for some exciting games that if we go all the way. It's funny. We got a mix of Div 4, Div 3, Div 5 talent on Partial Eclipse. Macros run 3. They're seated 91st, so regardless, that, of course, they're, they're on a pick. They're, both of these are pickups, but they're going to be in a pretty. Uh, I don't know, it's it's going to be a little tough for them. Obviously, they've gotten uh, a bit of a mountain to climb here, but uh, it is Riptide. I've seen just about any everything happen and anything happen. Oh, so much has been happening today. You're like upset after upset in like across the rounds. I've been hearing like even Silver Bracket is stacked Look, going into tomorrow, which is going to be really fun. It's only day one. There's still two more days of this. That's crazy to think about. Day one was so good. Riptide's going to be bringing you a day one, two tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we got a day one, three. Absolutely love that. The day one, two. The day one, three. Yeah. The long awaited sequel says I'm hearing for production. One, and then we got day one, Sandusky Drift. It's crazy. It's, it's oh, crazy. Sandusky Drift. Oh, my gosh. Yes. My favorite part was when Paul Walker got the quad on Moonlight. <laughs> Can't forget that. Of course you cannot forget that. <laughs> and then Vin Diesel said family. <laughs> oh, I'm so... No, 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 no. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We have an actual thing to talk about. The, the match is about to start. I did hear the transition the was start. hit. The game is starting there game is one. There is math as one of those tags. Oh, I cannot be thinking like that right now. 
Oh, what is that? Why do you have? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to see quadratic. quadratic I don't want to see quadratics right now. Here, we're also seeing some undercover Rella. <laughs> okay, this is something here between Max Run Three and Partial Eclipse. Quick look at the cops here. That's some interesting stuff, really, on both sides. Partial Eclipse with the much more traditional stuff. Marcus Run Three got some interesting choices right off the bat, though. Yeah, I like the back, the creativity Marcus Run Three is going for. We got a. Oh, <laughs> we've got a white well, Partial a Eclipse. <laughs> And, but we also have uh, Nautilus, a Undercover Umbrella, a Zen Zap, and an Octobrush coming from B minus B plus or minus square root of B square minus 4 AC all over 2A as part of the quadratic formula. So, Agar and uh, four members of Max Run 3 looking to get themselves back in, but Partial Eclipse is going to hold on for now. Yeah, Partial Eclipse looking really strong so far. You just see Aegis trying to just... Uh, apply some extra pressure from long range here. Water level already dropping as you are seeing Marcus run three just trying to fight their way back into mid. Trying to put the zone at least into a neutral state, but now they're in a two down situation and looks like partial eclipse. We now oh, making a three oh, down, oh. just gonna keep pushing on advantage and once again in control of the zone. That was quick. Partial Eclipse is already back in control, and they've already got Macros Run 3 all stacked up together. So there's going to be a lot for Macros Run 3 to cover. And the oh kill they cover oh right. There's already three players down. That ends up going to jump back to possibly save that cooler, but Partial Eclipse so far up, it may not even matter. This may be the game for Partial Eclipse unless Mac is able to find a huge advantage here. Could it be with that free slider? It Ooh, is not. They not clean it up yeah. quickly. And that is game one going to Partial Eclipse. Yeah, you can tell Partial Eclipse sets the tone right away with that wipeout. They know it's about to be 10 o'clock Eastern time zone right now. They just want to go back to their hotel, <laughs> get some rest, because, oh, man, it's been a long day. I can't wait. Like, here we are having to cast at this hour. Imagine having to wait this long just to play your first match. And they, they're not very warmed up. Looking good so far. The good news is that that means it's 9 p.m. Central, and that means it's 8 p.m. Mountain, and that means it's 7 p.m. Pacific. So y'all got time. Y'all got time to prepare some dinner, uh, make some food, uh, prepare some TV shows, and eat while eat your TV shows while preparing your food as well. So you guys are doing great. But um, with all that being said, we're gonna move on to round two, or game two. Sorry, Rainmaker on Manta Maria, partial eclipse, setting the tone. Like you said, it's gonna be a it, it's going to be very convincing for Partial Eclipse. In fact, I don't even need to say the word convincing. It's just very. Very, indeed. Now, my big question here is I'm looking at Marcus Run 3. What are they going to be doing to adjust? You know, we saw some creativity in that comp, and it kind of just got outclassed just by the overall strength that Partial Eclipse had in terms of those weapons. And I'm wondering, what are they going to do here? You love to see a lot of the creativity come out, especially with these pickups. And in a land, what do you got to lose? You're seeing a lot of umbrellas now because umbrellas work when it's land, usually. I do want to see B minus negative B plus or minus a square root of B square minus 4 AC all over 2A try to pull out something else here. Now, the brush actually did work pretty well, and I want to see them work with that brush just because that brush can be very deadly on that zip caster, especially when paired up. Anything paired up in Splatoon is going to work out well, but Macus Run 3 certainly not over for them yet. They've got a few more matches to look forward to. Like I said, Game 2 coming up should be seeing both of these teams get pretty, pretty soon here. That's the bell that tells us that we are ready. Yep, ready to go into Rainmaker Manta Maria for our game two. Let's see what we got in terms of adjustments from either side. Okay, see, no, quite a few adjustments already from the side of Marcus Run 3. Meanwhile, for Partial Clips, also something, some changes here as well. So here's the headache. Here's the spud. Here's the stamper. So they're kind of, uh, Vividi from Partial Clips is going to go for a similar idea to what I believe their, their Marcus Run was trying to go for here, but... Uh, we're gonna see how that pulls, or how that plays out here as we see a guard on that on our left side of the map here trying to get something going for partial clips, but it's gonna be the or Macros run, but it's gonna be partial clips on out the first special. There's the first Zuka of this game so far. Nothing yet, still a neutral battle here, but partial clips take first dibs at the rainmaker. Yeah, you're seeing them pushing around from that right side, trying to get to that checkpoint Ooh. there. Almost getting there, but you see some great rotations from Marcus Run 3 on the defensive end. You do see a lot of partial clips trying to just make their way over there, just to figure out a way to get towards that checkpoint, really give themselves a great advantage. But Marcus Run 3 is having some solid defense of their own here. The Vidi, though, picks oh. up the Rainmaker, is able to try and get towards the check, not able to do so right there, sadly, as Marcus Run 3 still managed to hold on defense, at least for now. 
All right, now we've got ourselves a match here. Marcus runs, making it difficult for partial clips to get themselves fastest, yeah, or get this, get themselves this first pedestal. There's just going to be a fight here at the side. A guard going to Ooh. take the rainmaker, nearly gets the pick there, but isn't going to fall down. Going to reset the rainmaker. That gives Marcus run a bit of breathing room here. Yeah, at least of some breathing room, which is great. You saw how close partial eclipse was to that rainmaker. Look at that. Right, just decided we're going to take it on the left side this time, and perfectly there. As you see, partial eclipse now has a lot, a big lead at the moment. Just needed to have that rainmaker get that checkpoint. So pivotal at this point, especially because Marcus run three doesn't have any points on the board yet. See them popping the screen as a couple specials trying to see what they can do now. As we're almost two minutes into the game. Partial Eclipse is still holding on to control. Now it's Maka's Run going to try to make a, go, trying to have a go at the Rainmaker. Ooh, ooh. Nobody nearby, so that Maka Run is going to go make a run for it. Gets the first pedestal. Ooh. Yes, it does. They go down, though. Both of these teams have cleared the pedestal. Maka's Run sneaking it behind Partial Eclipse. Nobody saw it coming, and it gets themselves past the checkpoint. Yeah, it's basically an even game now, but now with both checkpoints being gone, it's going to make all these pushes incredibly vital. You see the Zipcaster in action from Vividi, and you see Fox now trying to stake around, already moving up past the 40, trying to get all the way over to the 18. What a huge push from the side of Partial Eclipse. And what a big mount, huge number of kills and takes in the process. They're actually going to use this to knock out, and what a game. Partial Eclipse from that second push takes it all the way from check to the zero. And you can see the excited and ecstatic reaction from both of these teams, from both of these players. They are jumping for joy from this win here. Both completely losing their minds. It's 2-0 for Partial Eclipse. But, so, but, that means Partial Eclipse is a match point now. Game 3 on Robo Ramen is going to be enough for them to send, or to get themselves through this set. But Maka's run made it a lot more difficult this time. That's got, that's got to be something Partial Eclipse is keeping in mind. Oh, for sure, yeah. You, the last thing you want to do is give the en other team any momentum. Even if you have a 2-0 lead, you saw Maka's run three. So things were starting to click there. And then the fun thing about like these pickups is that you kind of see this all happen like in the moment. So Maka's run three is really starting to find that chemistry. And it's what better time than now, especially now. with you, If you want to win this set, you got to win three games in a row, but one game at a time. Let's see if they're going to be able to just keep making those adjustments and maybe steal this game three. It's going to be tough because partial club. I mean, of course, Maka's run is going to be playing against a team which is just much more highly skilled. I mean, they've got lots of experience behind them. And I'm going to look into the history real quick. Oh, that's wrong <laughs> team. Uh, some, okay. <laughs> uh, so I should know it right now. Their logo is just a sign. Of, uh, their logo is just a thing that says defeat. And then uh, right below that is something that says someone got top 32 in LTC this year, which, you know what? Okay. I mean, additional info is uh, they crave a midnight snack. Oh, hi, Evans. Plus sign. Let's move on to game three, please. Please just transition. Please just transition. Please. <laughs> You're going in blind and please. enjoying every second of it please, as well. Please. Okay, so. okay, game's ready. Game's ready. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We don't need to. We don't need to cover this. You know what? Partial eclipse. They're they're notable achievements. They got a lot of them, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna go into game three. Let's see the adjustments being made here. Actually, roughly similar stuff, but I do think we see a different umbrella. We also see return of the pencil coming back as well as the vanilla tri -sla. vanilla slosher at this point. Yeah, I can tell it's been a long day here. Let's see what ha changes now, especially from the side of Agar. Rocking Sorella Brella now, uh, having that inkjet as an option. And they've got a dynamo roller. We actually, I've actually seen a lot of dynamo roller, mm -hmm. more than I usually do at, at Riptide. So I'm glad that this weapon's starting to get a bit more attention. They're starting, it's a lot less of a niche pick now. And you're starting to see it more competitive. So I'm, gl I'm glad we're seeing some more creativity on that end. But so far, Partial Eclipse is going to start running things here with the Zuka. One is about, why don't we get another one? Yes, oh, we can. Find another. Oh, find another. Nautilus is down. Too. But can they get the ball? Dude? Oh, yes, oh, they wait. will. There's two picks. That should be enough. Yeah, Aegis just finding pick, pick, pick. And 
really helping their team translate all of that into the score right there. Partially Eclipse now having some extra clams. They're able to, to keep this push going at least for a bit longer, it seems. Basket still open. Two down from Marcus Run 3. Make that three down here. And watch as the clams start to filter on in. You see the pencil having four. The Slosher as well having four. It looks like now with multiple members starting to go down from the side of Marcus Run 3. Partially Eclipse just starting to keep this push going. Really making the most of it. It's only a one up is just the dynamo roller the quadratic formula trying to do something here but it looks like partial eclipse has studied their algebra and they're looking very well right now and there's still more clams to boot and more picks to boot as well partial eclipse Ooh. is just this close to making it a ko 17 points remaining they only have three clams for now but expecting to follow up with more here's eight they only need those three to win the ko and they won wow. the set three to nothing a quick affair for partial eclipse yeah, you saw some some great flashes from Partial Eclipse. The, very reminiscent of what we saw in Game 1, where Sp in Splatoon's body, they just got an early wipe and then really just translate all of that into momentum to go further. And then even after Game 2, where Mox 3 had some great flashes of their own, Partial Eclipse was like, nope, we're just going to score here. We're going to do what we know how to do, and we're just going to win this game straight up. Great showing for Partial Eclipse so far, and Marcus Run 3 had some great moments as well throughout that set. Excited to see what they do. Yeah, there is a lot more to this pool. Oh, well, yeah. We actually have another match coming up for y'all really soon here. I do want to go over one thing, and that's the additional info on Partial Eclipse. I'm sure you see this, like, big wall of text. Oh, yeah, I see it. It's... I... I uh, how oh. cl a question. How close are we to the next set? <laughs> it's important. This is important. I promise. Because there is a block of text right on additional info. And I, just from like skimming through it, I am prepared to read every word of it until that next set comes in. It's 10 p.m. Okay, we've got news that, that basically says I can read all of it. So. Got to read it in like a funny voice, too. Behold the LK Water Fountain, the true pinnacle of hydration technology. This marvel of modern engineering doesn't just quench your thirst. It makes you question how you ever lived without it. It's not just a water fountain. It's an oasis, a shimmering beacon of refreshment. You thought you were hydrated before? Think again. With every press of that sleek, polished button, you're not just getting water. You're experiencing a liquid symphony that's more refreshing than a dip in the fountain of youth. LK Water Fountain. Because you're worth it. I have been enlightened. So is our chat. I've been sleepy. Everyone at home <laughs> sleepy as well. <laughs> no, no, this is, that, I, I, this is what I like about having TOs that just collect all this information. Because yes. at some point, I'm going to flip through and read some like completely some complete nonsense like one team's notable achievements is just a shrug emoji <laughs> okay. have some faith uh i'm well, i don't know i just i skimmed through this one as well i'm filled with light blue slime this is like reading through the worst sears catalog i think ever this is yeah like let's just turn to like a random page not know anything that's happening this is top content by the way Okay, that's actual... Big that's Gay actual. Havoc. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. For a team seated, 59th, Big Gay Havoc. Bubbles isn't actually a bubble, and when he was two years old, he knocked over a can of paint. I hmm. ate a mad good spaghetti with marinara and parm while right. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yo, so the thing is, I haven't eaten dinner yet. So he's just hearing that, I'm like, come on. No, 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 it's, it's fine. Our, the comms is our dinner. I'm so sleepy that at some point I'm going to advise the entire production staff that I'm going to eat this microphone. I don't know about that. They still... <laughs> okay, <laughs> they maybe I won't. Not. Please do not devour the audio equipment. Oh, I mean, I don't know. This looks like black uh, cotton candy. <laughs> it's yeah. We've reached out time of the day. They have lost yeah. faith. The production staff have lost. Have lost. Ten oh three now. That's fine. That's like basically nine oh three in my time. So I'm 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 still um, Eastern time zone. Maybe. This is ten to three for me. It's so like ah. Uh. I don't know. I'm still looking through all of this. This one is oh, what the heck? The color green is epic. I don't. 
No, 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 no. It's good because, like, I, I'm not telling you epic, too yeah. much about these teams. It's just a very nice uh, little info sheet that they've given us. Um, and I, I'm just reading stuff out because I think some of this is genuinely, like... There is literally a story about, like... Um, Mario Baseball Leagues? Yo, CPU Mario Baseball Leagues? For those who don't know, I was, um, I was actually top 25 in the world in Mario Super Soldiers any percent. So... Ooh. Okay. That, I, I have not done that in like a long time, so I'm very washed. You know what? I'm flexing it too, all right? I have a, a world record in Extreme G Racing Association. So if you want to look it up on speedrun.com, go under <laughs> Vostok Peaks time trial. I am plugging my speedrun crap now. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to be... This is how we fill in the break. Yeah, we're just talking about speedruns. We um, have enough time, You I know think. what? Mario Kart's at Riptide also. I was briefly number six in the world on Moonview Highway 150cc. There's an actual world record holder at Riptide, but I'm like... <laughs> I mean, I, I once got 10th against my friends, and one of them was 11th, <laughs> so shoot. I mean, that's... Like, if, uh, if any of my friends are watching this, like Cloud or Jenny or John or whatever, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. You lost to me. Although you beat me like several other times, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> let's just keep going through some of this. One of them is just like, we're looking at notable achievements and additional info. One of them just says graduated college in 2024. Oh, no, wait, that's just additional info. Never mind. <laughs> Congrats on graduating college, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's, that's very good. That's pretty good. Moo Moo 10 fan club as well. Uh, I don't know. There's one that's just beans. You might see them on Sunday, by the way. It's just beams. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you see probably see them on Sunday. Oh, on this page, you know. You, look, you, you can look through the catalog. We know the catalog. We go, 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 oh, Pokemon, go to the pool. <laughs> All right, Pokemon, go to the pool. But we do have our next match up, by the way. That's going to be... We know the maps, at least. We you know at least the maps. know the maps and those. Yeah, no, that's... We've got the map. we got a team ready, so we know that much. And we also thank them for... Sticking through us, sticking with out with us, 10 to 5 p.m. It's uh, that's basically waking hours for me. Uh, Jorian is showing me a phone. Go fish versus the one and only MTSU. Middle Skyfall. Tennessee State, Middle Tennessee State University Sky. That nailed it. So good. I'm so good at what I do. There's your Skyfall, and there's uh, absolutely nothing left of Go Fish. They have uh, acquiesced. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, and I actually don't know what's going on there, but Go Fish and MTSU Skyfall is uh, currently in the lineup. I do, that is one of the, another thing I noticed is that, that you definitely know which one the collegiate teams are because of all the jerseys coming out. And you're, by the oh, way, that's so cool this year. There's oh so yeah. many colleges. It's not even just collegiate teams either. It's like a lot of teams coming out with jerseys too. Oh my gosh, yeah. I love that. Or even if it's not just the jersey, it's like at least matching shirts and all that, which is great. You love to see that here. See, you see that Ink 95 flag hanging off a lot oh, of the Oh, that's the been a big one, yeah. I already have like two of those for some reason. I just need one, but like, you know, I'll take two. Just shit. Fine. Why not? By the way, it, it just the looking at notable achievements on another team, one of them is just send those out ink links. If only I could access that right now. Uh, Oops. <laughs> the guys Mark 2 is one of the best names I've seen here. I wish Riptide happened more. Shoot, you're right. I like it. Great event, though, I will say. Always happy, always happy to have a, the pleasure of going to Riptide. I say that like I've been here more than two years, but it's just uh, been this year and last year for me. I've been here more than zero years, because that is my <laughs> first year here. <laughs> Let's go. So, I mean, I will take that. Uh, Hold on, I have to transcribe that. Okay, what are you pulling at? You got it. Oh my God! What? Is so what we can do now? So football. He's playing tic tac toe on street. We can play tic tac toe on street. Let's see. What does chat want to do here? What's our move? You know what? Let's be nice. Let's I don't even know spot. if we got access to chat like that. Let's see. Let's play tactics. tac toes. You know, we'll be nice, chat. We'll give you the middle spot in case you want it. So what is chat? So, what's, what's chat so let's say this. Chat do it? One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we actually get responses from chat, we'll know very. Yeah. I, I don't know very soon or if at all. We'll see what happens. But 
Make your move now. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I'm going to keep going over the ten of missiles in question. Apparently a team name. Uh, three shooters and a big roller. Upper hand. Players eat a handful of gummy bears. Got to get the food. Got to get the energy somehow. Right. This is a former teammate of mine. It's just chilly. <laughs> I play with inverted camera controls. Right, I forgot about that. I'll be honest. Uh, three, three houses, one basement, and the image is just Fire Emblem House. <laughs> house. House, singular house. One of the players is Yaldav. 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 I don't know, man. It's I don't think I have the street cred to say a name like that. Half of us are trolling. You can figure out which one. I'll figure out when I watch you at some point, maybe. I don't know. I'm sorry, teacher. There's nothing else I can share. Uh, is there anything you have to share with the class? No. Let me tell you. If you're watching this, you know what I have with against this team. All right? Figure fish. No, we're not going to go over that. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have, we have an entire... <laughs> I was going to say we're not... We're not there yet. <laughs> We're not at that point yet with them. We're not at that point yet. And you know what? On Sunday, I might just learn more. Round... Th okay, so I just noticed the change at the bottom. Round three of one group. And then round three of an another group. So that's probably what's going on here. We did ha plan to have... We did have uh, that first team against Middle Tennessee State, but... Yeah, kind of it, was, out. it would have been Go Fish, MTSU. Go, to go Fish. That's my favorite board game. We've actually got... Ooh, RIT, and then Off the Shore. We got Rochester Institute of Technology versus the one and only Off the Shore. I, 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 I'm totally full of things to say. Like, if you, there was an arrow pointing towards my head, it would just say full of things to say. We won tic tac toe, by the way. Obviously, yeah. I declare myself, or no, we declare ourselves the winner. Sorry, no, no, no. True. I can't take all the credit for it. So we got off the shore. The R shore, RIT. What R fun facts do they have? That's a good question. Good time question. to check the catalog one more time. I think I'm going to order a couch. Uh. Oh, this, one, this whole team. This all one, that one team has a whole page dedicated to it. Um, oh, goodness, uh, is it up in alphabetical order? I don't know. Cause I'll find so, out we'll very out. soon. <laughs> Off the shore, uh, it probably is actually. Should I have checked that first? Maybe. Did I? Nah. Uh, nah. Uh, we're getting there. I know RIT is a very, I don't want to say very, it, it's definitely one of the more prominent CCA teams. I know they've been up on, oh the, yeah. on the rise. Oh, yeah, they to come up. So, th th and it does confuse me because there is a t RIT Tiger Sharks and an RIT Tiger Prawns. This one's RIT Tiger Prawns. So, it's their first time playing in a land tournament. So, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Riptide. Uh, we're still looking. Uh, did I mess up? I, off the shore. There we go. They've given us no information. They are, um, yeah, pick up last minute entrance. Their words, not ours. Ah, goodness. I, yeah, I do know that Slim Job. I was going to say, Slim Job is the one player I do know. Slim Job can only, there's the two players I heard about. Dragoon as well. I hear them, I, I see them every once in a while in the competitive <laughs> scene, so. <laughs> we've definitely, I've definitely seen them at some point. They play the game competitively. They have played Splatoon competitively. They are currently within the same vicinity as us. I can walk out of this chair right now and go talk to one of them. So that's all I know about uh, the one and only uh, short of the off. But we're going to start in game one, which is going to be Clam Blitz on Museum, whenever we do get that game for you in round three of one group. Phew. What did RIT have? Like, I know we've talked about them being from CCA and all of that, but what's their fun facts? Because they're actually an established team. So what did they got for us? They made it to playoffs on Ludi Div 9. Hey, that is also a credible result. That's actually a really good result, honestly. For any college team to go far in Ludi, regardless of division, that's impressive. Uh, good any, for you guys. Anytime I see a CCA team make it to playoffs on Ludi, oh that's, yeah. that's always a cheat. That's always a charm. I love seeing that. And then we... I'm looking at their comp, too. I mean, not their comp. Their 
their like yeah, their weapon pool and yeah. stuff like that. Ooh. Ooh. There's a lot Ooh. of fun stuff there. We're gonna see Oh, I'd be happy to see a lot of this. We're gonna see some like There's an arrow spray from there's off a the lot shore. Of, there's a lot of arrow sprays nowadays. You that ever just true. walk outside, you go to your house and you uh, walk out of your house and say, Oh, there's an arrow spray right in front of me. Uh, that's happened to me before. <laughs> like I walk out of my house and it's like Alright, well, they just popped booyah in front of me. I guess I gotta go back to my house. But you can't go back into your house. That house has been booyahed. It's over. Pretty much, yeah. Aerospray's got 99 problems with Pain Ain't One, so. I mean, I don't know. There's already a booyah being popped outside. Probably because of a uh, family feud. I didn't even know you can do that in family feud. I thought that was like... I don't know what the family feud rules and guidelines are, but I'm pretty sure booyah is not in it. I think it's a very loose rule on Booyah Bombs, so some teams will try to like make and try to exploit that at times. Oh. Gotta, you gotta look in the rule book. I think there's like a specific clause there where it's very like, somewhere buried in like section E, rule C, D, section 2. Section B579. It was probably in that quadratic formula that we saw last set. No, no, no. I'm not even. Oh, gosh. I try. I. Uh, it, the only reason I remember any of that is because of my one and only pre-calc slash geometry teacher. Shout out to Mr. Watkins. You're the best. And uh, I really am giving just, just giving out shout outs to math teachers at this point. But it's fine. It's fine. That, 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 it's profit. It's, I don't know if it's profit, but it, it is content. It is content. And that's what exactly we are here for. That's what everyone in chat, I'm assuming, is here for. The Splatoon will come eventually. But the content here, that's what you're here for. Round three of one group. That, that implies to the viewer that it will happen. Oh, yeah. It will happen. And checking my watch. Math teachers deserve the praise. Yeah, we'll write that happen. down, everyone. Make sure you're taking your notes at home. That's what I'm saying. Take math, the notes at home. Math teachers deserve the praise. I've uh, been studying math. Actually, no, I haven't. I haven't studied since high school. I haven't taken a math class since high school. Right? Uh, yeah, I took one math in college. I took that AP stats. And I, that was I took AP stats. I took AP stats, went to college, and they were like, you know what, we'll just take it. You uh, go have your fun doing something else. And now I'm part of student debt gaming. <laughs> you love math. I love math. No, no, no. I, I've been a big fan of math since 2004. So, but I... Where does math go on the school subject tier list? <laughs> we're doing school subject tier list now. Oh, tier list, yeah. uh, if we're going for like the basic ones, like s s math, social studies, physics, or science, art. I don't know. Math is probably like a C, I'm going to be honest. We do love math. We do hate student debt. Yeah, I'm going through that right now. I don't want to think about it here at Riptide. You know what? That's what I've been saying. Finances work. Finances come second. Personal enjoyment comes first. At least for That's one right. weekend. That's for right. one weekend, at least. For I studied weekend. psychology in college. Yeah. Mental health, self-care. That's important. I am a minor in psychology, actually. So I know for sure that uh, Sigmund Freud once said, "Go to Riptide. You don't need the money." Of the many things we don't believe in from Sigmund Freud, that is not one of them. That's true. He is right on occasion. That is true. He also talked about Low Tide City, so I would believe him on that. Now, anything else, you will need to talk to your local psychology professor. Just seeing as I'm not legally a professional, so please don't talk to me about these things. I, I am legally a professional. So. I'm not. I'm illegally a professional. No, 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 no. <laughs> FBI, CIA, that's a joke. I'm fine. I don't do I don't. I mean, I can provide, like, therapy and advice, but it's not, I'm not at that, I'm not, oh, yeah. I haven't reached one million power in Rise of Psychologists. Yeah, I gotta get back into that. It's been a while since I played that game. <laughs> it's, a, it, like, I'm starting to think of psychology as, like, one of those mobile game ads where it's, like, level one noob, level 50 pro, level 100 hacker. And I think Freud's probably at like level 100 hacker. I'm like probably. level two noob. I don't know where you're at on the t on the height. Freud had an advantage because he used the promo code when he downloaded the game. Oh, that's right. 
<laughs> I'm just... Oh, man. I'm thinking about the mobile game ads where you just have, like, random celebrities just saying, Play for free now on the App Store. Um, we're losing it up here. Just Off the play. shore versus RT Tiger Prawns will happen, though. We're going to Clan Blitz Museum for game one. Tried and true, Mad Mode. You see that every day. You see, no matter what level of play, no matter what tournament it is, that and, like, Tower Inc. Flot, some of the most common things you'll see. Yeah, no, this is... It's fun because we do have all the map modes out right now. It's not going to be until, I believe, Sunday when you start to see counterpicks, so... Oh, yeah. Get used to no t our, like, scarce amounts of TC ink blot because, like, today and Saturday, that's all you're getting. Once we get to Sunday, it's, like, Ooh. TC ink blot. Then we go to Hagglefish, probably. And then we go back to TC ink blot because the other team lost. That's what I'm saying. It is true. Game one. Clan Blitz on Museum. We've got Off the Shore versus the Ritz Tiger Prawns. Ritz. Yo, some fun comps off the bat from both sides oh. here. I'm looking at a Zinni, the Zinc Mini Splatling, the Jet Squelcher. We come on the other side, the S Splat 92, the Aero Spray, or G. Oh, this is a, some fun comps here. Got to see how they opt to like build around the clam economy and really just use, try to win neutral with these comps. But I'm so, but I'm just super excited to see what we got going so far. I like the opening so on that one there. There were like two people going straight for the right side. That was incredible stuff from off the shore. But looking to get straight into it. They've already got two picks on the board. They've got two oh, just on the triple. Oh, they're good. The little bit of trouble, but he just barely misses out on that. Off the shore had a power clam, but they're going to miss out on that. Unless Canoli is able to pick that up real soon here. Yeah, you saw Off the Shore had a dynamic opening right there, but it's not, not going to be able to capitalize off it. Holy Cannoli now able to use the Zipcaster, not going to be able to capitalize off of that either, though. RIT now trying to respond, trying to build a clam economy of their own as well. You haven't seen any scores yet in this first opening minute, but a lot of specials starting to be on the board for RIT, starting to win out that neutral fights and see what they're going to be able to do is, and to just set up for a potential chance to score later on. Showtime now, one we're seeing on. It's oh, that's double, double booyah. Hold double on. booyah. Whoa, what's going on here? We're going to see. Maybe not make too much out of it right yet, but regardless, he also has a tower, or a tower, a clam ready for the taking and ready for the making into the basket. If we can get it into the basket, Canola trying to get some openings here for RIT, or off the shore, but RIT, or Black from RIT able to stay alive. It's going to be RIT making the move here. Yeah, RIT is really close to the basket. Kirby House popping Ooh. the bubble. Not going to be able to score right away. But you see the back coming out from Glass. Showtime coming in with the Booyah Bomb. Once again, Neutral got to get taken down as well. And it looks like a failed scoring attempt, sadly, from the side of RIT. who came so close, ever so close to popping that basket. But now two minutes into this game, we haven't seen any scores yet. But we have seen a lot of Booyah Bombs in play. And we're probably going to see a lot more just because of that golden arrow spray on the side of off the shore. That is a Booyah machine. There's already a Booyah coming out from him. There's the other Booyah. They're starting to daily change these Booyah bombs. But oh. is he going to work for off the shore? In fact, it's going to be the, the Zipcast for now that finds a pick off of that. Can he get another pick? Kivriyas very close to getting picked off there, but off the shore still has the advantage here in terms of positioning. Now the numbers advantage as well. They can get a few more picks, but RIT responds. Yeah, you see Slim Java having to jump back with that power clan, now being the only one up alive. RIT starting to paint the map green here and really winning out neutral. Look at all the clams they have built up. A couple passes, and then we're looking into a scoring opportunity. The back was in play as well. Slim Java sharking, trying to find the opening onto Glack. Now gets the pick as well. I have a couple members down, and the RG from off the shore has the has the power clam. A booyah bomb coming out once again. Here we go. Maybe a potential chance. To have to find this score opportunity. Showtime trying to come up, trying to get around, not going to be able to do so. Getting shut down in the process, though. And now three minutes into this game, Ooh. it's a two-down situation off the shore. Still trying to find the first opening score of the game. And that is a that that is a, by the way a zip cast to cancel for off the or for Ray Ooh. rather. Who gets the first score of the game? Kipri House going to be credited with that. Only one next to that, so they don't have a. Mariti does not have a follow up here. That means Off the Shore is going to get a power counter. They can easily equalize with if they can follow it up. That will also be the lead for them. But Off the Shore currently getting a few picks up there. Dragoon making some moves there, but 
It's not going to be enough as both teams still at a equal advantage here. Or equal numbers here. Yeah, and now approaching the last minute of this game, you see quite a few clams from the side of off the shore. And now there's a potential to pass it up. You see a couple specials being heard right now. Cannoli with the Zipcaster once again, trying to find an opening and or create the opening themselves. Right within a pick here, not going to be able to do so once again, but they have the numbers advantage here. Approaching the last 45 seconds of this game, another Booyah Bomb coming out from off the shore. They're pushing up, trying to find their way towards the basket. They go two down in the process though. Oh my goodness, they're all going down. Just off the shore, have enough for the response. They fight because there's a few clams right next to that basket, but they oh, can't oh. follow up on it. But they do have a power clam on, uh, courtesy of Showtime. 30 seconds on the clock. They're going to need to make the move, and they're going to need to make it soon. Yeah, you see that they had a power clam ready. Showtime now with the Aerospray RG. Once again, having the Booyah Bomb online. It's going to be fine. It's coming for a jump. Going off top. Trying to find a chance to score. Oh. It's just barely short. It's 15 seconds to go. They have to figure out a way to get towards that ball. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. It's a three down situation. Can only actually try to do one more heroic play, but it's not going to be enough. As RIT looks like they'll be able to hold on and just win this game. Oh, boy, goodness. Rochester Institute of Technology coming with their, coming into the set with their finest. That is a first game going to RIT. We're going to head over to, yeah, to Tower Control on Undertow Spillway for game two. But even with this, even with the score being 180. Oh, that was close. That was, that was fairly intense from both teams. It doesn't seem like it from the score alone, but my goodness, that was a lot of action to talk about there. There was so much to talk about. You saw how many openings were so close to being made into a scoring up, scoring chance. And, like, it was so close. Had a couple things gone right for off the shore, they could have easily not just won that game, but probably done so in, like, a very high scoring count as well. Similar for RIT. They had a few very close calls, especially towards, like, the middle of that game, but they just had a couple hiccups in terms of execution and also some great counterplay from off the shore. It's been very close and I'm wondering to see how these teams approach now this game too because it really could go either way. So. Just give a sec. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, it's still a yawn fest for me but <laughs> because I am like I, 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 not because I'm, of the gameplay. No, of course not. But because I am going through it, but with Tower Control Undertow Spillway, they're going to definitely keep the Booyahs just because of how that map is shaped. It's It reminds me of a like Humpback Phone Track, oh, so I'm going to yeah. see what they bring out for both for both of these teams. There's still the Booyah, at least from uh, off the shore. Oh. Okay, oh. Paintbrush oh. making a sh are showing up here in Riptide for RIT. Oh, these are some interesting... Options, Kibri House, yeah, rocking that pain brush there with the Tenta missiles. You saw Slim Java move on to a custom blaster as well. And look, three down actually from the Woo! side of off the shore. RIT responding quickly, getting onto that tower. Gonna get to that first checkpoint, take the lead in the process. And they're gonna try and keep on going, already moving past that first checkpoint, having the back on, on that tower. Woo! And look at this, EEE, -E -E, some W's on the board for them, just being able to get to that second checkpoint. Three down once again oh for off the goodness. shore. Look at this. They're keeping them staggered. RIT has been cruising by with triples just about every 20, 30 seconds. They might be coming out with one in the next few seconds too. Oh, but it's actually going to be off the shore that comes out with a double. Can they get a triple? They're still Kibri House neutral. It'll be for them to pick off. But RIT with a big showing here at the beginning with only a minute into the game. That is a huge push for RIT. Yeah, RIT had a phenomenal push. Let's see how off the shore ops to respond here. They're already making their way back into mid, trying to see if they can push this tower any further here. You see Cannoli and that Zipcaster really being a great distraction here. But they go two down in the process, though. The Booyah Bomb, I think, is going to be coming out soon, at least from the side of off the shore. But they do go two down still once again. RIT is having such a good job Ooh. of just finding these numbers advantages and another multiple down situation. RIT is once again in the driver's seat. Good night off the shore. Oh. Still a few more picks. RIT pulling down. They can, if they can find Dragoon in time, that will be extra helpful. We know how I know how dangerous 
Tetris can be on a match like this and on a map like this. So they need to keep an eye on that. They do. The Drew goes down. A few more players go down. It's the Stamper and the Dark Blaster keeping track of the tower. But they have enough for a KO. RIT going up to match point just like that. Yeah, the consistent theme that entire game for RIT, just maintain a numbers advantage. Whether it be a two down, a three down, they are just figuring out a way to constantly put off the shore in a staggered situation. I mean, it's really hard for them to recover, especially after how you saw off the shore had a lot of great moments in game one. RIT's like, no, we're just going to use our chemistry here. We're going to just win this game outright and just make it difficult for off the shore to do much of anything. Just a very strong defining win for RIT there yeah now this is and, and it's funny because we were talking earlier about how that close that first match oh was yeah. against uh, off the shore on clam blitz museum so for that from us to go to that from that to a uh, game two in which RIT is cruising by game three with splat zones on the horizon and how well RIT was able to keep off the shore staggered with those constant disadvantages I think we're in for something similar here. I think so too. I'm actually interested to see how it, maybe if we're gonna see some adjustments on either side, because at least from the side of RIT, that worked out very well for them. Wanna see if they maybe change anything up as, uh, now off the shore. It's actually going back to the comp they used in game one, it looked like. So, and ooh, a couple changes here, the Dread Ringer making its mark here. As, oh yeah, it's actually a couple interesting options from the side of RIT here in game three. <laughs> okay, so it's, that's I believe the recycled umbrella. I think so, that, so yeah, that is a that's something we don't usually see in competitive. So and, uh, and speaking of things we don't usually see in competitive, here's a dread ringer for you as well. Off the shore, getting the first pick of the game here. But RIT holds onto the zone, maybe not for long. There's already two players going down. We might see a few more players go down from RIT. Neutral in the fight, we can only Ooh. get me off the shore. Actually, wins that fight. But did they get control of the zone? Not yet. But now they do. Off oh. the shore gets it with that one booyah. <laughs> oh, and then following up with another booyah bomb after just to make it difficult for RIT to get back in. Using it as a great displacement option off the shore. Watch that backdoor option from Kibri House, actually. But maybe you got to see a potential flank coming in. You see the strikes coming in as well. And now this zone is turned purple slash pink and you're looking at RIT now in control of the zone but never mind off the shore they're fighting back I could take control of the zone having that booyah bomb as extra support and now the reef slider coming in once again and now there's a look at specials flying all over the place and this neutral exchange has been absolutely insanity but off the shore still has control still only on control oh, never mind. Might change very quickly. RIT is going to pressure that very hard here. They've already got one pick. Can he get another one? It's going to be up to Kibri House. You know, it oh. goes down. Kibri House takes control of this. Oh, yes, they do. RIT back in control. Dragger in a little bit of trouble. Reese Slider after Reese Slider. None of them get a pick, but it's RIT that comes out winning that fight. RIT is now clear of the penalty points, and they're going to look to see how many, get, how many points they can get off of this. It might not last too long, though. RIT is going to get some heavy pressure from off the shore, especially with these booyahs coming out. Yeah, these booyah bombs have been relentless so far, and off the shore, they will establish a penalty onto RIT. And now let's see if off the shore is going to be able to work their way out of their penalty. You see how the cooler is online now and in play from the Tiger Bronze, and we're going to see if they're going to be able to make anything off of it. Showtime now, very close to another booyah bomb. They've been putting up so much pressure with those this entire set so far. There's a few specials coming out now from the side of RIT. Two down from off the shore. Gibri House fighting that extra pick in the process. And neutral OP pushing it up. Let's see how RIT just makes the most out of this. All right, RIT. Now look at how deep they are in enemy in, in the opposing team's territory. Off the shore is going to have a lot to deal with on their hands, especially with Kibri House being able to follow up for a neutral. Pops the trips, their triple splash down. Is it enough for them to get the lead? It sure is. Canoli does help out Slim Dollar, but that's going to be a trade. Still three players down is off the shore. Nothing for them yet. If they can get something with the Zipcaster, perhaps it'll help a little bit. But Canoli is in a lot of trouble finding three players around him. But RIT still holding on, still holding on to the zone, still getting Ooh. the points. They've got three players down, so it might not last too long. E is the only one left to control. Oh. Can they get enough time for it to, for the zone to flip over in the favor of RIT? That is the KO for RIT 3-0 against Off the Shore. Yeah, and that was a very 
tight game at one point. Off the shore, I thought it was actually going to be able to take that, but RIT back to the wall for a bit there, but was able to just find the answers that they needed and then take that set 3 0. Woo! All right. That's what I like to see. And this is me being a CCA player and a CCA fan. Love seeing CCA Love teams seeing CCA come, duo, uh, come yes. out and show, up, show out, especially on games like this, because uh, I, I do, I did want to mention this at some point, but we will have the collegiate bracket next, oh, next yep. or tomorrow, tomorrow at about yeah. the same time, actually earlier, so about eight, six, start. Yeah, we have one more set right now. Uh, we do have one more set coming out after this one, so we're going to have th that coming out for you all pretty soon. I do want to talk about collegiate brackets, and that's going to be coming out tomorrow. So if you want to see more stuff like RIT, I played against... It's funny, because there's a lot of teams, or collegiate teams showing out here. Oh, there UTK, are. There's so many. University of Tennessee at Knoxville up was in my group, and I saw them, and then we played them, me part of Student Depth Gaming. And so there's a lot... There's a lot to look out for, especially in this tomorrow and especially Sunday. Like that's when the, that's basically the main event. Oh yeah, and like there's so many good colleges now, and like really across all levels of CCA, there's some great talent there. I was watching them, Kutztown's team. I think it was Golden Barracudas, who I think that's what they're labeled now, and they were they pulled off almost came really close to pulling off a huge upset in their. 10 a.m. pool, and I'm like, oh, that would have been insane. So happy to see them progress. Cause they're basically one, they're one of my local colleges. Not my college I went to. I didn't play CCA with them, but hey, happy to see them repping and just really all the CCA representation here. I go to the University of College, and I can tell you that the University of College needs to sign up. But as this bottom thing, there we go. The bottom thing says, we got one more set for y'all for day one. Um, but of course, that's not going to be it from the, for us. We have uh, yep. tomorrow. We're going to have lots of silver pools. We're going to see a lot of action coming out from there. We're going to see lots of redemption bracket, oh, especially. Yeah. That's going to be one of the bigger events. Like I said, collegiate uh, collegiate bracket is also tomorrow. But with Riptide, there's a lot of stuff going on. You mentioned Mario Kart. We met. Oh, man, there's melee. Amazing. There's ultimate. Submit there's rivals. rivals. There's a lot of stuff going on, so I do like pointing that out because, of course, Riptide's not just dust. There's a lot of things to look out for. I love showing them some support as well. Oh, yeah, so much really there. So it does look like we are going to be able to take a quick break, maybe take a quick nap for us in the process, just so that we have some energy for the last stuff. But don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back here on Splatoon 30. Okay, maybe we got to go a little bit quicker than this. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned, and hopefully we will be awake. Honk shoe. Honk me, 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 me.
I'm dying. I'm about to be killed. Welcome back to Riptide. Who's watching? There's no evidence of anything here. The best commentator? Just kidding. Biggest hater. <laughs> now, yes, biggest trigger pitch zone Zeta, which you'll hear more about later in the weekend. But <laughs> like the thing above me says right here and the thing below me, we got one set. One more set. We're going to wrap up day one. We promise yeah, we're going to wrap up home. day one. And who are we bringing home with? We got Rise and Shy. And this time for real, Middle Tennessee State University Skyfall. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Skyfall. Now, these are two teams that I have a lot. I've talked about a lot in my life. And Middle Tennessee State being one of them because I work a lot with CCA. So I hear a lot about Skyfall. They're already a Div 1 team in terms of in oh, the yeah. CCA League. So lots of experience behind them. Similarly with Rising Shine. Rising Shiner, I've known them for the longest time. This thing, I don't know, this page says like formed 2020. I feel like I've known them for longer. Wouldn't it surprise me? I've no, I've heard that name for a long time now, even before I got into the scene. And that was one of the things I remember hearing about. So. 2020 could definitely have gone a bit longer at least they're pretty established teams here also so it's gonna be in for some exciting games here to wrap up this final set at least here on Splatoon Tourney for tonight no absolutely there's gonna be more content both on Splatoon Tourney and on IPL so don't miss out on that We're all the action starting at 10 a.m. Eastern so of course be sure to keep a track keep an eye out for that but as for now, Rise and Shine and Skyfall here to wrap things up for the for Friday with the with the, another group stage or another group stage set. This one also starting off on Maki Zones, as you're going to see in the top left corner of your screen, possibly per chance, maybe, maybe could happen, may happen. Shh. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna. No way, it's not Mahi Zones. No way. I, I'm confused actually. I'm sleepy. It's gonna start on a uh, uh, salt free rig. Oh man, could you imagine that? I can't wait for Sunday when we get teams really counterpicking. Like, I want to counterpick the salt spray Rainmaker with all the issues that.